Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend. Let us head fanfics. Back with amazing fanfiction. This is the series of What if Deku became an anarchist? Now before starting, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. There was a once a quirkless green hair boy named Izuku Midoriya who lived in a world of quirks. But he was one of the few who didn't have a quirk. He bullied and looked down upon by others. He had no friends because of his quirklessness, and his father left him and his mom at age 4 because of it. One day, his main tormentor Bakugo was going to give him his usual abuse which Izuku snapped and fought back against Bakugo. Izuku was at a disadvantage because Bakugo had two other henchmen with them and he was quirkless. After a cruel beating they left Izuku. Izuku got up in pain. He though himself, Kakin is abusive as ever. If those two weren't there I could have won. I need to learn how to fight. Then a few days later, he found an underground fighting ring and decided to learn to fight from people who actually knew how to fight. A few weeks later he met an old man who used to be a famous boxer and learned from him how to box, and Izuku loved to box. He would come home tired and hungry, but he was happy because he was getting stronger. When Bakugo and his goons were going to attack Izuku like they normally do, Izuku broke their bones and Bakugo was left with broken hands. The police put Izuku in jail for a week, which after Izuku got out he went back to the fighting ring for a good time. A year later, he was known as the quirkless wonder in the ring because of his skill and he has won matches and lost some but had more wins than losses. He was chaotic in and out of the ring. With his winnings he bought weapons for protection and beat some petty criminals up. He was known as the anarchist. One day he met a man with a bird mask which Izuku said, Hello there, mister. The man said, Overhaul, I like the way you fight. Tell me what is your quirk. Izuku said, I don't care if you believe me but I'm quirkless. Overhaul's eyes widen, you're quirkless? Well I didn't expect that. Anyways how about you work for me? Izuku raised an eyebrow. What kind of work? Quirk analysis. Muscle. Weapons. Izuku handed Overhaul a notebook full of the quirks of pro heroes, villains, vigilantes, and the other fighters in the ring. Overhaul was in awe and said, I would like all of your skills. Izuku smiled. I'll work for you, but I have some conditions. Overhaul looked at him. What are these conditions? Izuku said, I have free control over what I do. I'm not forced to kill but you can use the notes to kill. And lastly I would like an apartment nearby so transport could be easier. Overhaul responded, Deal. Overhaul thought to himself, I like his skills in fighting and quirk analysis, he is going to lead me to success. But what Overhaul didn't know was Izuku was going to make him and a few other underground bosses very successful. Present day, Izuku walked into the ring to face his next opponent which Izuku looked at the blonde hair and Tin Tin looking face dude into his eyes. Izuku went to attack but his attacks went through him then he saw him go through the ground and come back up, which Izuku recognized him and yelled, get out of here everyone. It's Lemillion and he most likely has police outside about to break in. Everyone looked at Lemillion and realized Izuku was right. Izuku yelled, Kai, get me the F out of here. Kai went up to the cage to make spikes to keep Lemillion busy and get Izuku out of the cage. Then everyone got out of the building. The police and a few heroes were outside waiting for them, which Izuku got his wooden baseball bat, taser baton, stun grenades, and smoke grenades to help get the two out of there. When they were in the clear they walked over to the base, which Izuku said, that was a close one. Kai said, tell me about it, if you didn't recognize Lemillion, I don't think we would be here. Izuku said, that is what you pay me for Kai, that, figuring out enemy quirks, and taking care of Iri. Kai laughed, if it wasn't for you, Iri wouldn't be able to control her quirk and we wouldn't have made our quirk erasing bullets faster than predicted. Izuku chuckled, I really think we should give the League of Villains a chance, I already met their leader and guy behind them, all for one. Kai stopped in his traces, wait, you met the immortal villain. Izuku said, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we play chess and do quirk analysis together. I also discuss politics with him, very interesting guy. Kai asked, you think we should ally with them? Izuku said, yeah, but between you and me. Tamura the leader of the league give him a chance to explain. He may be childish, but he is intelligent and learns quickly. Kai nodded and Izuku looked at his watch. Well speaking of the devil, I about to get warped to all for one in about 10 seconds. A purple mist appears and a purple mist man in a bartender suit appeared. Which Izuku said, Hello Kirajiri, how has it been? Kirajiri replied, Not much, Sensei wanted to see you. Izuku smiled and said, Well Kai, I better get going. Tell Iri I said hi. Izuku jumped in the portal to appear in All for One's lair. Which Izuku said, Hello All for One, how have you been feeling? All for One chuckled in his chair. I'm still stuck on this chair and can only move for about 3 hours a day. But seeing you and your bag of tricks, I graceful you are here. Izuku pulled out one of his notebooks and said, So I found a few quirks you might be interested in, with names and locations of the owners. Then Izuku sat in his chair and all for one said, You always pull through Izuku, I am more impressed each time I open your notebooks. Izuku said, Thanks dad. 
The room was quite which Izuku was scaried. AFO asked, did you call me dad? Izuku got up to bow. I'm sorry sensei that I have offended you. Please don't turn me into a Namo. AFO confused. I'm not going to turn you into a Namo. But you really see me as a father figure. Izuku said, you see, my dad left me and my mom when I was four, when I learned I was quirkless. So, I didn't have a father figure in my life, but the way you support me and help me. I do see you as a father figure. AFO chuckled. I guess between you and me, you can call me dad in this room. Izuku looked up and said, okay dad. AFO chuckled. So son, is the wound that All Might has still there the last time you checked? Izuku said, yep, it's still there. One year ago. Izuku was walking around collecting information on quirks for his boss Kai and a few other people. A slime man attacked him and thought he was a good meat suit until he blew off of him. Izuku woke up to find All Might has saved him. Izuku quickly got up to check his notebook had All Might's signature. Izuku was about to ask All Might his lifelong question. But All Might was about to jump until Izuku grabbed his leg and the flew into the sky. All Might landed and Izuku saw All Might's weakened form. Izuku saw it and All Might explain his injury. Izuku asked him, All Might, can a quirkless nobody like me be a hero? All Might looked at Izuku and said, No, hero work is too dangerous for quirkless people. You can be a policeman. Izuku walked off as All Might said those words. Izuku ran home and slammed the door. Izuku went to pick up the books that fell off the shelf and found Eyes D and D book open to the chaotic neutral alignment. After reading what a chaotic neutral person would be, he said, I know what I should be, a life of freedom, and I can continue what I love to do. But I should probably live in that apartment overhaul gave me. That is when he ran away. And he fully left himself live a life of crime, fun, and freedom. Present, Izuku has been watching All Might in his civilian form and saw who his potential successors were and gave AFO the information on them but Izuku wants something in return. AFO smiled. You still want a Namu or something else? Izuku said, I would love information on my father's whereabouts. AFO pulled out a file. What are you going to do when you find him? Izuku smiled. I going to beat his ass until he learns his mistake. Then they played chess and discussed the politics of today's world then Izuku said, well I guess I should go do my other things. Well don't push yourself too hard. AFO laughed and Izuku was warped to his apartment. His apartment was brick walls, wooden floors, a living room, two bedroom, kitchen, one restroom, and room where he stores his weapons. Izuku said, Okay, I'm going to take an hour long break then I'm heading out to bash some skulls and talk to the smugglers and slavers. Later that night, he went to Hasu to meet his favorite nighttime customers, the slavers and smugglers. They rely on people like Izuku to price people by the quirks and their usefulness, which Izuku is known in the underworld as the best person to go to for quirk analysis. Izuku went to a meat market to go to the counter to say, Hi, I'm looking for a New York ribeye, extra thick. The clerk took him to the back to a secret elevator which sent him down to the secret storage and auction of the slave. A fat man looked and said, Anarchist, it's great to see you. Izuku smiled, Mr. Gates, you don't have to call me that. You give me money to give you a value for these slaves, just call me Izuku. Mr. Gates chuckled, Okay Izuku, so I brought a new batch tonight, but I don't know about this child right here. Mr. Gates pointed at a child in one of the cages, which Izuku asked, What is his problem? Mr. Gates said, He wouldn't reveal his quirk, so I was hoping you would help us. Izuku went over to the kid and said, well kid if I were you, I would reveal you quirk now before I force you to reveal it. The kid looked at him, how can you force people to reveal a quirk? Izuku said, easy. Izuku grabbed and squeezed a certain part of the kid's neck to make him shoot out some black tentacles which stabbed into a guard and forced his quirk to activate. Izuku said, his quirk is force quirk activation and I want to buy him. Mr. Gates surprised, I thought you don't buy slaves or support it. Izuku said, you right, but I like this kid and his quirk. I will price him around 1 million yen. I buy him from you for 1,500,000. Mr. Gates smiled, done. After the paperwork and other stuff, Izuku now owned the boy, which Izuku asked him, what is your name? The boy said, gone. Izuku said, gone, I'm about to feed you until you hunger is satisfied, and you will be a student of mine. Izuku took gone to his apartment to feed him and put him in his other bedroom. Izuku then said, I'm going to be gone for a little bit, but I will be back in a little bit. Gon fell asleep and Izuku went out to beat up some thugs because it was his entertainment. Izuku found some thugs surrounding a teen girl and what looks like her father which Izuku pulled out his baseball bat and taser baton to get them from behind. Izuku went behind the leader to tap his shoulder. The leader turns around for his face to meet a baseball bat to the face. The rest of the thugs turned around and one of them said, Guys, it the anarchist. The thugs looked at him and saw that he was the guy, which Izuku said, Okay here you little cum stains, you can turn around or all hell will break loose. The thugs ran off leaving Izuku, the teen, and her father, which the father said, Thank you mister. Izuku said, Oh sorry, I'm the anarchist, nice to meet you. 
Izuku shook the father's hand, which the teen asked, Why did you help us? Izuku said, Because I beat up thugs for my entertainment. The father and teenager looked at him like Izuku was crazy. Izuku asked, Are you too lost? I can give you direction Mr. and Miss. The father said, Oh, how rude of me I'm David Shield and this is my daughter Melissa. We are lost. Do you know directions to a person known here as Yagi T? Then a blonde muscled man landed next to them and said, Dave, I am here. Izuku in sarcasm said, Oh look, He-Man showed up late to save these people and I, a quirkless nobody who you say can't be a hero, saved them like a hero. Well I'm off to a baseball game. David surprise, what? All Might said, young Midoriya, let me explain. Izuku turned around and walked away backwards with both his middle fingers in the air and said, Hey I an idea. Why don't you just take that symbol of peace bullshit and shove it really far up your ass then clench your ass cheek. Melissa asked, Uncle Might, do you know him? Izuku said, yeah, he knows me. He destroyed my dream, but those dreams needed to be destroyed anyways. All Might said, young Midoriya, I need to talk to you. Izuku texted Kirajiri to open a warp gate from his location to his apartment, which when Kirajiri opened it, Izuku looked at All Might to say, oh, all for one said, hi. Izuku jumped in the portal leaving All Might falling to his knees yelling and oh oh oh. Izuku was back at his apartment and said, I had enough fun for one day, I guess I'm going to sleep. Tomorrow I have tea with Gentle, video games with Tamura, take Eri to the playground, and help Jiren selling weapons to villains and vigilantes. Izuku got in his PJS and fell fast asleep ready for tomorrow. Izuku got up and said, It's Sari, thank God. Izuku made him and Gon breakfast which Gon asked, What are we going to do? Izuku interrupted Gon, Don't call me master, call me Izuku or Nyai-san. Gon asked again, What are we doing today Izuku? Izuku said, Well today you are going to learn what I do and you are going to get into the business. Gon asked, Business? Izuku said, Of being a bad guy but not evil, like good villain or bad vigilante or something like that. Gon asked, Am I going to kill people? Izuku looked at him, No, I don't kill people. On purpose. Gon scared which Izuku said, But you're not killing people, we are going to get you an outfit and some clothes. Then I'm going to have a meeting with an extremely nice gentleman, then hang out with a buddy, and you will have a play day with my goddaughter. Gon was happy about that which after they ate, they head out to their busy day. They went to a tailor shop that Izuku is a common customer to get Gon's size and clothes. Gon's outfit was the like Izuku's outfit which was a black leather trench coat with a green dress shirt with a red tie and black jean. The difference was Gon had a white dress shirt and a black tie to match his hair which Izuku paid 11,141,450 yen for it. They left to head to a coffee and tea shop which Izuku saw his guy and said, Hey Danjuro, lovely day we are having. Danjuro smiled. Nice to see you Izuku, I see you brought someone with you. Izuku chuckled. This is Gon, he is my student and will get into my business to help me out. Izuku looked at the girl next to him. Lovely to see you too, Manami. Manami was happy to see Izuku which she said, It's very nice to see you. You are the very few nice people that are villains like us. Izuku laughed. Ah, you're funny as usual. How is the internet treating you too? Danjuro said, It's okay. Izuku said, Hey if you two still want. We can rob a bank together the offer is still on the table. A good bank robbery is a good way to really catch attention and I heard there is going to be special jewelry there. The two looked at him, which Denjiro spoke, we'll think about it, how are you doing with your many jobs? Izuku said, amazing, I have some quirk erasing drugs if you two want some and the new league of villains is about to move to do their first appearance. They talked for a while until Gon said, Izuku, your meeting with Tamura is coming up soon. Izuku got up to say, well I better get going. I wish you two luck in becoming famous. Also that offer is still on the table. Remember it doesn't involve hurting people or killing, just a simple grab and go. Danjuro said, that is very appealing, we might consider the offer. Kirajiri opened a portal for Gon and Izuku to walk into, which Izuku asked, Kirajiri, can you watch Gon for me? Kirajiri nodded and Izuku went to Tamura's room to play video games with. The only people who actually have gone into Tamura's room without pissing him off are Izuku, AFO, and Kirajiri. When Izuku got in he said, Tamura, you're looking like you're having fun. Tamura said, Izuku hurry help me, I'm about to enter the boss room. Izuku got on his laptop to game with Tamura. Izuku played as a sorcerer and Tamura was a normal swordsman. Izuku would use his spells to attack, heal, and boost Tamura while Tamura did the attacking and defending Izuku. After they defeated the boss, Izuku said, Tamura, your plan of attacking Yue is genius. Even if you don't kill All Might, you still win. Tamura stopped what he was doing to ask, What do you mean? Izuku said, think about it and bear with me here. You bring a group of villains to one of the most secure locations on the planet without triggering the alarms. That will ruin UAS reputation. If I don't know, All Might wasn't there. And you injure the teachers and students who are there. That ruins not only UA but also All Might's reputation because he was supposed to be there to protect his students from injury. 
And if your Namu doesn't kill All Might and you and Kirajiri escape, then All Might failed to capture the villains who broke into the UA and injure his students which leads people to lose their trust in All Might, UA, the teachers, and the students who are there. Tamura's eyes were wide open, I never saw it like that. Thank you Izuku. You really opened my eyes on this one. I should start looking at situations like you. Izuku said, we're friends, we help each other and support each other. Just like our team work in the boss fight you have higher attack. But I can boost you and heal you to help us win the fight. I also grow with you as well from the battle. The two continued which no one knows that FO has a camera in Tamura's room which he grew a smile that Tamura's growth has accelerated since him and Izuku have interacted with each other. Izuku has said that Tamura is smart and is a quick learner which this interaction is proof. After a while Izuku had to leave for Eri's play day which he gave Tamura the quirks and weakness of the teachers and students. Okay Tamura, here is everything you need to know about the people you're going to meet. Remember if you fail to kill All Might, you still won at the end of the day. Tamura smiled, I will. Thank you Izuku. Kirajiri heard dropped a GLS cup when he heard Tamura say those words. That is what Kirajiri loved about Izuku. Izuku is helping Tamura act like an adult and it really helps Kirajiri a lot, which Kirajiri and AFO will do anything to help Izuku if he was in danger. Izuku was warped to Kai's place and he saw Iri with Hari which Izuku said, Hey Hari. Hari said, Hey Izuku, you look busy. The two laughed and Izuku said, I don't want to be bored and I love being busy. Iri jumped to Izuku and cheerfully said, Uncle Izuku. Izuku hugged her, Hello Iri, how you are doing? Iri said, Guess what? Izuku asked, What? Iri said, Yesterday. They found another way to make quirk erasing stuff yesterday. Izuku surprised, Really? Hari said, Yeah, we found out last night and we were going to tell you later. Izuku said, That's great and I assume it's faster. Hari nodded and Izuku said, Well I better be off to take her to the park. The park. Gon was meeting Iri's friends and Izuku was watching them. He brought plenty of snacks for the two and himself. Izuku was relaxing and enjoying the weather until he heard, You. He looked up to see Lemillion coming to him in his civilian outfit, which Izuku sighed. Mirio, I just watching my little brother and goddaughter. Why are you here off duty? Mirio said, You can't just call me by my name, anarchist. Izuku said, Then call me by real name which is Izuku and come on your off duty sit down. Mirio sat down next to Izuku and asked, Izuku, why are you working for overhaul? Izuku raised an eyebrow, Kai. Well he's good friend, boss, and is the first person in my life didn't discriminate me for being quirkless. Mirio's eyes were wide, you're quirkless? Izuku chuckled, yeep and that is the face that everyone makes when I tell them that, but I am proud to be quirkless. Mirio laid back into his seat which Izuku asked, is the reason you are relaxed now because you think a quirkless nobody like me can't hurt you? Mirio jolted, no, I just don't think you're the guy to beat up an off-duty hero who hasn't attacked you in front of the kids. Izuku smirked, smart, I like that. I want to see that in All Might's successor. Mirio wasn't feeling relaxed around Izuku at all. What do you mean? Izuku said, I know about one for all. The only people besides Sir Dhead and Musliman are the creator of the quirk all for one, little Olmi, all for one's prodigy, and my good friend Kai. Mirio asked, why are you saying this out loud for people to hear? Izuku said, because I don't give a f. A lady nearby said, Sir Language there are kids here. Izuku said, sorry madam. Izuku looked at his watch and said, Well time to take them home, nice to finally talk to you Mirio. I hope you are a better person than All Might. Mirio said, I know what he said to you. Izuku stopped which Mirio said, Let him say his apology. Izuku said, If he was really sorry, he would let me break one of his legs. Mirio in shock, Why? Izuku said, It will make me feel better and it's symbolic. Think about he broke my heart, soul, and dream, I break at least one leg or both then he will feel my pain then, until recovery girl repairs it. Izuku took Uri back home and got back to the apartment to feed Gon. He said, Okay my night jobs are dangerous, so you are staying here. Gon nodded Izuku wrote down a phone number to call him from the landline and tucked him to sleep. Some back alley. Izuku was walking until he saw his business partner. The man said, Izuku, I'm glad you came. Izuku hummed, Jurin, my business partner, of course I will come to help you. We make money together so what are we doing tonight? Jiren said, well we are going to see the Naruhata vigilantes and a few others. Izuku said, awesome, let's get this bread. Jiren shrugged, I still don't know what you kids are saying these days. They walked around to find the small group of vigilantes which Nuckladuster said, Jiren in. Anarchist. Jiren shrugged, what he is my business partner you have a problem with that? Izuku asked, you have something with quirkless people? Nuckladuster said, I'm quirkless, of course I have no problem with quirkless people. The other two vigilantes were surprised that Izuku was quirkless just like their leader, which Izuku said, respect, and you two must be the crawler and pop. Step. The crawler went up to Izuku with shining eyes. He got it right, thank you. Izuku said, okay, back up please, personal space my dude. The crawler said, sorry. 
They did their trade and Jiren said, Since you're here Izuku, you want to sell you quirk analysis with them? Popstep asked, Quirk analysis? Jiren said, He is the best person in the underworld at it. He can look at your quirk and break it down, then find ways to improve it and find weaknesses. He sells his notes about them too. Knuckleduster said, Can we see? Izuku chuckled and pulled out Popstep and the crawler's pages, which the three were in shock by how accurate it was, which crawler asked, Do you have more? Izuku and Jiren laughed their says off, which Jiren mocked Crawler, do you have more? Which after a few seconds, Jiren said, he has an entire library of quirks of heroes, villains, vigilantes, and other people of interest. Izuku said, I had to buy an entire warehouse of it. The vigilante's jaws dropped to the ground from the statement, which Izuku recomposed himself, sorry about that, but which people are you looking for? Knuckleduster said, Kiwin Hachisuka. Izuku said, oh, I have that one on me. Izuku flipped a few pages to find her and pulled her out then said, That will be 10,000 yen. They gave him the money to Izuku and Knuckleduster said, Nice doing business with you anarchist. Izuku said, Let me know if you know a good underground ring to go to. I love a good fight. Crawler asked, You watch those? Jiren said, No kid, he actually fights in them and he is pretty good fighter. Knuckleduster asked, If you have free time, I would like you to help me train this one. Izuku said, Hell yeah sure. Izuku and Jiren walked off in the darkness which Jiren said, I think we are going to get more money from them in the future. Izuku said, Good, I love the underworld these days. Jiren said, I feel like one day, Tamura will become a great villain like Sensei keeps saying. Izuku said, Tamura came from a tragic past which can make a powerful villain. I believe so too. Jiren said, You are a powerful person yourself, what is your secret for that? Izuku chuckled, like all quirkless people, we are weaker at birth. I became strong because I came from the weakest any human today can ever come from, and I decide to become strong. Then went off into the darkness, All Might's apartment. David and Melissa were still upset with Yagi after he told them the story of Izuku Midoriya. Yagi said, Day. David said, Yagi, I know you were trying to protect him, but you destroyed his dream as well as you know me and Melissa are quirkless. I mean I made your suits and helped you become the hero you became today. Then the door opened and Mirio yelled. All Might. Yagi asked, What is it young Mirio? Are you okay? Mirio said, No, the anarchist knows about one for all and he said many other people know about it. Yagi asked, What do you mean many other people? Mirio told his story of his conversion with Izuku at the park, which All Might's jaw dropped which David knew All Might was in trouble. David asked, That is you quirk? All Might decided to tell the story of one for all to David and Mirio which Mirio and David were in shock about its dark history. Then David asked, Wait a minute, you were formally quirkless yourself. Yagi said, I'm sorry Dave, it was for you and Melissa's safety for you not to know. Melissa was in another room listening to the conversion. She got angrier from the fact her uncle not only believing quirkless people couldn't be heroes, but he was formally quirkless. She went out through the window to go down the stairs and ladder for a walk to clear her head. She walked around until a large thug grabbed her and said, what does a beauty do? He got knocked out by Izuku's bat which he said, you're welcome ma. They looked at each other which Izuku said, we need to stop meeting like this. Melissa asked, did you know Uncle Might was formerly quirkless? Izuku said, Sensei told me after a week I met him, which is also two weeks before All Might Detroit smashed my dreams. Melissa asked, who is Sensei? Izuku asked, do you want to know? Melissa nodded and Izuku said, all for one. Melissa gasped, you mean the man who created the quirk? Izuku nodded, then asked, you want me to walk you home? Melissa said, no, I want to clear my head for a little bit. Izuku said, I will walk around with you because you are just a trouble magnet and I love it. The two walked around the block which Melissa would ask a couple of questions to Izuku about every few minutes. Then Izuku took her back to the apartment which Melissa said, thank you for walking me around. Izuku said, no problem. Melissa asked, so you're quirkless? Izuku said, since birth. Melissa said, you're not that bad of a guy, you know. Izuku chuckled, you're funny. Then Melissa kissed him on the cheek. Then the door opened to where Yagi, David, and Mirio stood there to find the two. Izuku said, this is my cue to haul ass. Izuku started running while Mirio was chasing him. Izuku pulled out a stun grenade to buy some time, which Izuku then pulled out a grappling hook to climb up the building and said, sorry Lemillion, not today. Izuku continued to run off into the night. David asked Melissa, are you okay? Melissa said, he saved me again and he gave me some helpful answers to my questions. Yagi looked at Izuku running into the night as Izuku was a reminder of his greatest failure. Melissa liked Izuku because he was brave and he didn't care he was quirkless. He helped however he can kind of like a hero. She smiled as he ran into the darkness, which Lemillion said, Sorry All Might, I couldn't catch him. Yagi said, It's alright young Mirio, we will get him when we get him. Izuku checked his Sunday schedule which consisted of two things that Izuku wanted to do. Izuku looked at Gon. Today, I'm going to send you to play with Iri. But remember Kai is a germaphobe so try to be clean as you can and if he said you're dirty just clean yourself again. 
But Kai is actually nice when you get to know him and also try to never get re near the room. Gon nodded and asked, what are you doing? Izuku said, just a personal thing I have been meaning to take care of and a really good friend and I are going to wreck some stuff. After Izuku dropped Gon off, he got his weapons for this little project he was about to go to. He then texted Kirajiri to warp him to the location and he stepped through to find a nice house in a small town in North Japan. Izuku walked up to the door and saw the sign on the door that reads, Midoriya Residence, Make Yourself at Home. Izuku chuckled, I guess I will. He knocked on the door, which he heard a man said, I'll get it. The door opened to reveal a tall man with green eyes and hair looked at Izuku to ask, Hello, how can I help you? Izuku asked, Are you Hisashi Midoriya? Hisashi said, Yeah. Izuku chuckled, I guess I finally get to meet you. Dad. Hisashi's eyes were wide open, which Hisashi's wife asked, Who is it Hisashi? Hisashi couldn't say a word, which Izuku said, Oh, just his first son that he abandoned because he was quirkless. Hisashi said, Give me a moment dear. Hisashi stepped outside and closed the door, which Izuku smirked, What? You're still ashamed of my existences. Also did you have kids because I would love to meet my half-siblings? Hisashi asked, Why are you here? Izuku said, To do something I always wanted to do. Hisashi asked, What is that? Izuku said, To have a talk with you. Father to son conversion. Hisashi said, Okay, let me just tell my wife that I'll be out for a while. Izuku nodded. Hisashi opened the door to tell his wife and went back outside to say, Okay, let's talk. Izuku knocked him out with his bat, then texted Kurajiri to get him and dad to his warehouse, which Izuku said, this is just too easy. Two hours later at the warehouse, Hisashi woke up to find himself strapped to a chair, which Izuku on a chair across from him said, you're finally awake. Good, Hisashi asked, what is the meaning of this? Izuku laughed, like I'm going to talk to a deadbeat like you, I'm just going to do something I always wanted to do. Hisashi said, look Izuku, I'm sorry that I left you and Ninko. Izuku said, you realize that a simple sorry can't fix this and coming back will piss off mom more than anything. I left mom to protect and lift her from my burden. While you, Izuku grabbed a hammer, you left for the most stupid reason I have heard in my life. Izuku hammered Hisashi's wrist until it fractured. Hisashi cried in pain, which Izuku said, beach please, take it like a man. Izuku then got out a generator and jumper cables which Izuku asked, do you know the voltage that can kill a human? Hisashi in pain, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Izuku got the jumper cables and jabbed them in Hisashi's gut. After a few seconds Izuku pulled them away to say, What did I just say about forgiveness? Hisashi was crying in pain while Izuku increased the voltage on the generator, which Izuku chuckled. Now answer the question, how many volts does it take to kill the average human? Hisashi said, 150. Izuku jabbed the jumper cables on him, wrong. Izuku increased the voltage and Hisashi said, 100. Izuku jabbed the cables again to say, first you were high now you're low. Izuku increased the voltage and Hisashi said, 120. Izuku dropped the cables and said, correct. Izuku then pulled out a strange device which Hisashi asked, what is that? Izuku said, I forgot what it's really called, but I call it the nutbuster. Hisashi shocked, what? Izuku said, okay you have a choice, I can chop one of your fingers off or use the nutbuster on you. Hisashi said, finger. Izuku laughed, of course you would but I have a better idea. Izuku pulled out a syringe full of quirk erasing drug which he injected into Hisashi and said, Congrats, you are now quirkless like me. Hisashi was his absolute shock which Izuku untied him to say, Come fight me, come kill the nut you busted that busted you. Hisashi got up and said, I'm not fighting you, Izuku. Izuku smiled, too bad. Izuku punched him in the face, then got on top of him to punch him in the face repeatedly. After a while Izuku got up to wash his hands that went to Hisashi to say, Well this is part one. He got his phone out and called Sensei. Yeah, can you turn him into a Namu for me? Sensei on the other end laughed and agreed to do it, which Hisashi was warped to Sensei to become Izuku's Namu. Izuku looked at his phone to said, Okay, it's time to hang with Dabai. The Alice of Kamino. Izuku walked around to find Dabai then smelled the smell of burning flesh, which Izuku knew he was nearby. Izuku found Dabai to say, Hey Dabai, you lovable flaming psychopath. Dabai looked at him and smiled. Hey Izuku, you ready to cause a mess? Izuku asked, let's grab lunch first, I'm starving. Dabai laughed, then the two headed to a cafe that just opened. Izuku and Dabai went in. Izuku asked the waitress, hello ma'am, but what is this place? The waitress said, this cafe serves food and coffee like your normal cafe except we seat you with strangers to help people meet new people and make new friends. Dabai shrugged and Izuku said, I like the idea, I'm hungry and I can't wait to see who we meet. The two were seated with two people with menus covering their faces across them, which as they seated Izuku said, hello there. The two people put the menus down to reveal two people who that Izuku didn't want to see. 
The first one was Sir Nidai and the other one was Mirio, which the three looked at each other while Dabai was laughing his s off by the events. Izuku deadpan expression, oh, it's you too. Mirio saw Sir Nidai who was in anger because the last conversion between him and Izuku was bad, like Izuku almost killed Sir Nidai. Sir calmly said, well if it isn't the trash that should have been taken out last week. Izuku calmly said, right back at you, Sir F face. The cafe could feel the intense aura in the air from these two being near each other. Dabai and Mirio ordered for the two. While Izuku and Sir were staring each other down, Mirio and Dabai made a truce to prevent these two from killing each other. Sir glared, how is it going being overhauls and all for one's lap dog? Izuku smirked, not regrettable like your All Might tattoo on your ass. Dabai and Mirio both choked on their drinks from Izuku's comment, which Sir said, you should be thrown in Tartarus. Izuku said, you should be less of a D and actually try being nice for once, it's works wonders for me. Their food was served which the two were quiet which Dabai and Mirio were glad that the two stopped talking for food. Then the waitress brought the check which Izuku and Sir both put their hands on the check at the same time. Izuku said, Sir Nidai, let go of the check. Sir glared at Izuku to say, I think for both of our sakes, I will pay the check. Izuku smirked, like you give a shit about my sake and All Might's successor over there has no idea who he is up against. So, for both of our sake I will pay the check. Sir said, you are nothing more than a tenure throwing a fit because All Might said the truth. Izuku said, All Might was formerly quirkless himself. He abandoned his quirkless roots to play hero. Now that is the biggest ten-year-old thing in this world. The two got up to attack each other, which Dabai quickly grabbed Izuku and Mirio grabbed Sir. Izuku said, Dabai, let me kick his ass. Sir said, Mirio, let me go. I need to teach this kid some manners. Dabai and Mirio said it the same. We will pay the check. So Dabai and Mirio paid the check and for damage Izuku and Sir caused. Which as Dabai and Izuku left Sir yelled, I can't wait for you to go to jail. Izuku yelled back, I can't wait to see you in hell. Dabai got Izuku a block away from the cafe and gave Izuku some ice cream to calm him down. Dabai asked, better? Izuku said, better. Dabai said, okay, we still doing the thing. Izuku said, hell yeah, I need something to forget about that bastard who is always on his goddamn high horse. Dabai and Izuku were now walking the street to find Endeavor walking which Izuku said, Dabai what am I on because that flaming trash can is walking. Dabai fell to the ground in laughter by Izuku's comment, I'm weak. Izuku asked, you okay, Dabai? Dabai said, I'm hurting because it's funny, this why you're my best friend. Izuku said, Dabai, I thought we were best friends because we are honest with each other and trust each other. Also, it wasn't a joke, it's the truth. Dabai laughed harder, stop you're going to kill me. Then Dabai calmed down and they headed to their favorite spot to spray paint art and wield shit. Izuku said, Dabai, I need your fire for the gold I stole. Dabai asked, what are you going to do with it? Izuku said, I'm making a giant dildo to censor F face so he can shove it up his ass with his ego and all might ass tattoo. Dabai asked, wait, is the tattoo thing real? Izuku got out his phone and showed the picture to Dabai, which Dabai laughed his ass off to shout, no, I thought you were just insulting him. This has to be a dream. Izuku said, sadly for him, it isn't. Dabai got up to say, send that to me, I need to show Toga and a few others this. Izuku sent the pic to Dabai which after the two made the golden dildo and Izuku also put a note inside of the box. Then Izuku dropped the box off at his building. Then they found Toga which Dabai showed the pic to Toga. Toga fell back laughing by it, which spinner came along which he scared by the pic but found an amazing. Izuku then left Dabai and the other to head to Tamura to tell him that he was going to the USJ raid to support him. When Izuku finished with that he went to Kai's place to pick up Gon and check out the new process of the drug and refill his drug storage. Izuku hugged Iri then headed off to apartment until he bumped into a man which Izuku said, I'm so. The person he bumped into was All Might, who was with David, which Izuku said, Gon get on my back. We are going to take an alternate route home. All Might went to his buff form to said, young Midoriya, come with me. Izuku smirked, sorry, did you say run away from you? Sure thing. Izuku started running from All Might which All Might appeared in front of him which he said, Give up young Midori. You can't escape from me. Izuku said, Without hurting you that is. Izuku jabbed All Might in his weak spot with a taser then tased All Might. Izuku then hauled S from him and went down the alley to drop a smoke grenade to then climb the building to jump rooftop to rooftop to the apartment. Izuku and Gon got in which Izuku asked, What is with my luck today? Izuku and Gon went to the room to then call it a day Gon asked why do you hate All Might? Izuku said, It's a sad story if you want to know before I tell you. Izuku told Gon his story and All Might telling him he couldn't become a hero, which Gon said, that is sad. Izuku said, yeah, but how was your day before that mess? Gon said, it was amazing, Kai was nice just like you said. 
Izuku said, good, I'm going to take you to a man who has a quirk just like yours and he will train you on how to use it. Gon asked, just like mine? Izuku smiled, just like yours, he had it for years and he will help you with it and how to use it to its fullest. For most people Monday was a complete beach because they are hungover from the weekend but if you are a police officer from Hasu, Kamino, and surrounding areas, you know it's Monday when Izuku gets arrested. Izuku gets arrested every Monday then by a bullshit miracle he escapes and destroys most of the police station. Cementos works overtime on Monday because of this which All Might and Eraserhead are forced by a new law called Izuku Midoriya Law specifically to watch Izuku and others like him while he is in the interrogation room and when sending him to his jail cell. Izuku laughed that the Japanese government made the law just for him because he made this a Monday thing. Izuku turns himself in on purpose just to escape to absolutely destroy the reputation of the law, the police, and heroes. Izuku was now sitting in the interrogation room completely chained up like Hannibal Lecter which two men walked in. Izuku said, Hello sir asshat and lie detector. Namas aside because he is tired of Izuku's shit, hello again, Izuku Midoriya. Izuku asked, What is he doing here? Sir Knight I said, I'm here to apologize for what I said yesterday and the times before that. I saw that could be a hero if you're on the right path which me and All Might were wrong about it because you were quirkless. Izuku in shock, bring me my phone, I want to record this. Namasa said, sorry, I'm not doing that. Izuku pouted, I guess I'm not saying a word and I will escape like I normally do. Sir Knight I got Izuku's phone out and Izuku told him the peace sword which Sir apologized with the recorder on, which Izuku decided to bury the hatchet. For now, Namasa felt the tension die down a little bit which they began the interrogation which Izuku's mom, All Might, and Eraserhead were behind the GLS. Miss Midoriya was shocked to see her son because she hasn't seen him since he ran away. And she was tearing up. Naamasa asked, Okay first question, where is all for one? Izuku said, Sorry can't answer that one. Sir asked, Why? Izuku said, I get warped to his location, I never actually walked or was told where it's at. Naamasa heard, Truth. He continued, What is overhaul planning? Izuku said, erase quirks and control the quirk market like he said three weeks ago. Nothing more, nothing less. Naamasa heard, truth. Naamasa asked, you were the last person to see Hisashi Midoriya, your father. Where is he at? Izuku chuckled, he is coming. The two looked at him, sir asked, what do you mean? Izuku asked, is mom on the other side of the GLS? Naamasa nodded. Then a warp portal opened revealing a big dark green Namu coming out which Izuku said, speak of the devil, dad get me out of these restraints. The Namu got Izuku out of his restraints which Naamasa and Sir were shocked that Izuku would do this to his own father. All Might and Eraserhead were in disguise by this and tried to get to the other side. Izuku said, Okay, Dad kill everyone here except me and the short green-haired woman on the other of the mirror. All Might came in which the Namu attacked him and started wreaking havoc, which Izuku went up to his mom to say, Come on mom, I will answer your questions when we get to my place. Miss Midoriya took Izuku's hand and they were warped by all for one to Izuku's place, which Izuku said, Gone, I'm back. Thon appeared and asked, Who is that? Izuku said, This is my mom and since you are my little brother, you can call her mom if you want or just Miss Midoriya if you want. Thon nodded and Izuku got his mom seated with tea next to them. Then Izuku asked, Are you comfortable? Miss Midoriya asked, What have you been doing? Izuku leaned back to say, You want the long answer or the short answer? Izuku looked at his mom and said, The short answer is that I'm a member of the Yazuka, a member of the League of Villains, the legal arms dealer, slave valuer, info broker, and I guess a part-time vigilante. Miss Midoriya looked at her son in shock. What is a slave valuer? Izuku said, I look at slaves and their quirks to determine how much money they are worth. Miss Midoriya slapped her son. I did not raise you to be involved in the slave trade. Gon said, but if he wasn't, he wouldn't have saved me. Miss Midoriya looked at Gon then to Izuku, is that true? Izuku said, yeah, I have saved many slaves and returned them to their families but Gon here has no family, so I took him in. Miss Midoriya said, I'm sorry Izuku. Izuku got an ice pack, no, I deserve that one. Miss Midoriya asked, so you work for overhaul and who is this all for one? Izuku said, all might's arch enemy. Who is like a father to me. He is a really nice guy when you actually get to know him. We play chess, do quirk analysis, and talk politics every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Khan said, speaking of which, you have a meeting with him in 10 minutes. Miss Midoriya said, I want to meet him. Izuku in shock, what? Miss Midoriya said, I want to see if he really is a nice guy like you say he is. Izuku shrugged because he knew he wasn't going to win this agreement. She asked, you called that monster dad is that really? Izuku said, Yeep, after I beat up dad, I got all for one to turn him into a Namu. Miss Midoriya in shock, what? Izuku said, you should have seen him, he remarried and had two kids. What's worse the boy is named Izuku, which means there are two Izuku Midoriyas in Japan from the same dad. He actually replaced me, mom. Miss Midoriya was in shock and rage which Izuku said, 
But I didn't hurt them, I just want father to suffer for what he did to us. I'm sorry I have turned into a monster I am today. Miss Midoriya hugged her son. I still love you. I heard from All Might about saving people which I was happy about it but I'm still angry he told you that you couldn't be a hero. Izuku said, wait, All Might came to talk to you. That bastard. I'm going to break both of his legs and maybe an arm as well. Izuku cried a little bit with his mom and after a while Kirajiri's warp gate opened which he, his mom, and Gon went in. Izuku said, I love Mondays, Sensei. Sensei chuckled. You never run out of ideas do you, Izuku? Keep it up because Tamura is learning from you and is improving and finding ways to improve strategies. Miss Midoriya was afraid but seeing all for one and Izuku talking to each other, it calmed her down. Sensei asked, are you Izuku's mom? Miss Midoriya said, yes sir. Sensei said, you have truly raised a wonderful son. He made what people think is a weakness into an advantage which you should be proud that your son is well respected by many even me. Izuku chuckled, Sensei, you're so kind. Miss Midoriya saw Izuku's smile and saw it pure happiness which she haven't seen in a long time. I'm glad he is happy, I haven't seen him this happy in a long time. I'm glad you helped make it. Sensei turned to Gon to ask, are you gone? Gon said, yes sir. Sensei showed his force activation quirk which Gon was in awe and Sensei said, I heard you have this quirk as well, I will train you on how to use it. Gon showed what he could do with it. Which Izuku continued to answer his mom's questions, which after a while Izuku said, I think it's time we head out to check my goddaughter. Miss Midoriya was shocked about the statement. Sensei said, Well it was nice to meet you Miss Midoriya. Izuku have a nice day and you are still going with Tamura on his debut. Izuku said, I can't wait for it, dad. Miss Midoriya was even more shocked that her son called this man his dad, which Izuku, his mom, and Gon were warped to Kai's place, Kai's hideout. Izuku helped his mom stand straight. Yeah, it takes a while to get used to warping. Hari saw them and asked, Hey Izuku what you up to today? Izuku smiled. This is the first time I met my mother in about a year, so I'm catching up with her. Hari came out to hug Izuku. Uncle Izuku. Izuku picked her up. Wow, you are getting bigger each day. You are going to be taller than me soon. Hari giggled then she saw Izuku's mom which Izuku said, This is my mom. Miss Midoriya looked at the child to see that she was incredibly cute and Hari said, Grandma. Miss Midoriya fell over, which Izuku said, Don't die on me, mom. Miss Midoriya got up to say, Sorry, I wasn't expecting to be called that until much later in my life. Kai came out to say, Izuku, we need your help with something. Izuku said, Coming. Izuku left his mom, gone. And Hari with Hari because Izuku trust Hari to do that. Miss Midoriya asked, What are they doing? Hari said, Most likely Kai wants Izuku to analysis some quirks on some heroes we will attack soon or quirks for our attack on one our rival Yazuka. Miss Midoriya was seeing Izuku was important and everyone actually respects him despite being quirkless like all for one set. After a few minutes, Izuku came out to say, Okay so we are heading off to my apartment. I can't wait to for the fight in a few days with the league. Kari said, Have fun, if it goes well Kai will work with the league. Izuku said, It will go well, I promise but if we fail to kill All Might. We damaged UAS reputation and take care now Hari. Before they left, Hari said, Overhaul found another fight ring you two can go to. Izuku said, I can't wait, I have been itching for a fight. Miss Midoriya looked at her son and saw that he was definitely different from she remember. Izuku's apartment. Izuku, gone, and Miss Midoriya were warped in his apartment which Miss Midoriya actually looked around and it was much nice than she had. Izuku said, we will move you here tomorrow, because I need my one hour break. Miss Midoriya said, well I didn't expect you work for people who are nice to be honest. Izuku said, most don't think so either, but sometimes kindness and brains gets you really far. The door knocked and Izuku went to get it. He opened it to reveal Melissa. Izuku said, how did you find me? Melissa said, I put a tracking device on you the last time we met. Izuku nodded, smart. Are you going to turn me in? Melissa said, no, I just want to get to know you. Izuku said, okay, but can we do this later like maybe a date? Melissa blushed. As yes, sure. Izuku said, okay, tomorrow around 8. Melissa nodded, I will see you then. She left and Izuku closed the door. He turned around to see his mom. Miss Midoriya said, My son is going on a date with such a beautiful girl. Izuku turned red, Mom, please. Izuku got up from his bed to begin the day by moving stuff from his mom's place to his apartment. Izuku gave his mom his king-size bed in his old room in the apartment and put a queen-size bed in his weapon room to make the room his new bedroom. Izuku finished moving his mom in and quickly put all his weapons in his warehouses. He gave Gon some homework to do while he was gone. His mother looked at Gon's homework to help him but looked at it in shock. Miss Midoriya asked, Izuku, what is this? Izuku said, I'm teaching him Latin, accounting, economics, politics, philosophy, and English. Miss Midoriya looked at her son. Does that look like something a six-year-old should learn? Izuku kissed his mom on the forehead. He can do it, I believe in him. 
She looked at Gon who already wrote a paragraph to answer a question that asks the answer to be written in Latin and finished a few accounting questions. She was in amazement by Gon's knowledge in the fields and did try to help out the subjects she did know, which Izuku got warped to the league's hideout. Izuku asked, Tamura, you ready? Tamura was in his outfit which he wore his t-shirt, pants, and a trench coat with hands on his face, shoulders, and arms, which he smiled, yes I am, I'm glad you came. Izuku nodded which Tamura got up on a table to give his speech to the grunts they hired. Today our main goal is to kill All Might with this. Tamura gestured to the Namu. This Namu was built to kill All Might, but I would like to assure you all that even if by some miracle it fails, we still won at the end of the day. The grunts looked at Tamura in confusion which he continued. We are going to get in UA undetected without triggering the alarms and if you all injury any students then All Might and UA failed to protect and keep their brats safe. We will be written in the history books as the ones who tore down this stupid and failure of a system hero society. We will bring rise to a new system that will benefit us. As soon as we enter the USJ, we have already won. The grunts saw the picture and cheered. Izuku saw how inspiring Tamura was and he felt inspired by the speech. AFO heard Tamura's speech and felt nothing but pride for him. He knew he was going to walk the earth as one of the greatest villains to exist. Tamura got down from the table to ask, How did I do? Kirajiri said, That was amazing Tamura. Izuku nodded putting on sunglasses and a bandana covering his mouth. You have talent for public speaking, you should use it more. Kirajiri opened a portal and the three went in first to greet the students first. USJ. The three came out of the portal to see the students. 13. An eraser head, which Tamura said, I don't see All Might, well I guess we will have to draw him out. Izuku said, I'm glad you are taking this so well, remember the Namu is for All Might. Kirajiri will handle 13 over there and I will handle eraser head. Izuku revealed his new razor wire covered baseball bat which he learned that it could cut a racer head scarf up if it touches his bat. Hirajiri started warping students except a few of them. A racer head saw grunts coming out of the portal and started running into them but Izuku jumped in front of him. Izuku asked, Now, now a racer head. Where do you think you are going to? A racer head activated his quirk which Izuku pissed off. I'm deeply offended that you assume I have a quirk, better yet that I need one to kick your ass. A racer head looked at him in confusion, what? Izuku took off his sunglasses and bandana to say, You know I'm quirkless, like lack of quirk. I respected you because we both fight quirkless, but now you are pissing me off. The racer head groaned, Izuku Midoriya, why are you here? Izuku said, Because Aizawa, I am here to support the new League of Villains and take care of you. Aizawa smirked, What makes you think you can beat me? Izuku chuckled, I haven't shown you all my tricks. Then Aizawa asked, What trick haven't you sh? Izuku shot Aizawa in the D with a rubber bullet which he said, don't worry they are just rubber bullets. Izuku continued to shoot Aizawa in the D and other parts of his body until he ran out of bullets in the clip, then went up to Aizawa to knock him out with his nightstick he also carried around with him. Izuku turned to Tamura to say, a racer head is knocked out. Tamura smiled, there are some problems at the mountain zone, can you check on that? Izuku walked to the portal, sure thing, it wouldn't hurt to check it out. Mountain zone, Momo, Kayoka. And Denki were just about to relax from defeating all the villains until a big villain with an electric quirk grabbed Denki's neck to say, I would surrender if I was you too. The two had no choice but to drop their weapons with the grunt was about to do something dirty to the girls until a whack to the back of his head. He fell down and Denki who was still in his stupid stage was free. The girls saw that Izuku was the one who knocked out the grunt. Izuku said, Herku, you bastard I thought you learned to stop harsing women. Jesus Christ, I going to reteach you a lesson about how to treat ladies. Kayoka backed up and fell off the cliff, Momo yelled, Kayoka. Izuku ran off the cliff and dived to catch her and used his grappling hook to help them land safely, which he put her down to say, sorry about that miss, but you don't have to thank me. Izuku walked off which Kayoka asked, what is your name? Izuku looked at her, Izuku Midoriya also known as the Anarchist. I hope you are one of the few students here who don't get injured because I will beat the shit out of the guy who hurt a beautiful girl like you. She blushed which then a portal opened up and Izuku said, I got to go, Tamura is waiting on me. Izuku left, leaving her to red and embarrassed but she was falling in love with Izuku and she didn't know it yet. Central Plaza Izuku appeared next to Tamura. The brats survived but one of them is injury, but we are doing GR. Suddenly a loud D.E.K.U. was heard. Izuku groaned as he saw Bakugo flying at him which he said, Give me a moment that one is mine. Izuku ran at Bakugo and Bakugo flew at him. When they were a foot away from each other Izuku pulled out a flashlight to blind Bakugo. Izuku quickly moved out of the way for Bakugo to crash land, which Izuku used his taser baton to hit his back as he got up. Izuku said, Kaken, it's been forever. Izuku smashed one of Bakugo's hands then said, how are you? Izuku went to the other hand and did the same to officially break both his hands which he continued, hands, oh, they are still broken. 
I thought you would get that fixed. I guess you are too stubborn to get help from a doctor. Bakugo in pain. I'm going to kill you Deku. Izuku jabbed Bakugo in the ribs to tase him. A hero doesn't threaten a villain with death, you know that. But I'm just going to kick your ass in this time. You won't be able to become a hero afterwards. Bakugo felt the venom on the hero part, which Izuku continued to beat the shit out of Bakugo and started breaking a few bones, then out of instinct jumped backwards. A wall of ice appeared separating him from Bakugo which Todoroki came to save Bakugo. Izuku said, well if it isn't daddy issues. Todoroki tiled his head. What? Izuku said, oh, I know about Endeavor's abuse, trust me. I learned it from your big brother Toya. Now I'm going to beat up my former lifelong bully. Todoroki summoned another wall of ice to catch him but Izuku threw a grenade at it and ran for cover. Todoroki asked, Toy is alive. Izuku smirked and is doing well. Now I'll give you a deal. I tell you where you could possibility find him in exchange I get a few more hits on Bakugo here. Todoroki said, no deal. Izuku said, too bad. The Namu came out of nowhere to punch Todoroki in the gut sending him flying to the doors of the USJ. Which Izuku said, thanks Tamura. Tamura responded, no problem Izuku. Izuku saw Bakugo starting to move, where was I? Oh, yeah. Izuku started tasing and whacking Bakugo until All Might broke down the doors to say, have no fear, because I am here. Izuku said, oh, Johnny Bravo has arrived. Well time to finish Kakin here. Izuku shot Bakugo in the back which All Might quickly grabbed Bakugo and Eraser had to put them to the side, which he was too late to get Bakugo from the bullet. Izuku said, don't worry he will live, but unable to walk or use his quirk. All Might looked at Izuku in rage. What do you mean? Izuku smirked. I erased my lifelong bully's quirk that he would torture me with. Now tell me can a monster like him who is now quirkless still be a hero? Can a quirkless nobody like me become a hero? All Might in shame, you no longer have hope of being a hero because I have failed you. But I will not fail young Bakugo. Izuku laughed his ass off, which All Might went to grab Izuku but the Namu tackled All Might and the two began their fight. Izuku walked to Tamura's right side while Kirajiri was on Tamura's left side, which he said, let's support the Namu in every way we possibly can. Tamura said, that was I was thinking the same thing. The three watched as the Namu and All Might which he was going to suplex the Namu until Kirajiri opened a portal to make the Namu grab All Might by his sides which Izuku said, hold him still. So All Might and the Nama were locked in a stalemate and couldn't move until Izuku pulled out the razor wire bat which Tamura asked. What did you do with you bat? Izu said, this is a different bat. I have been saving this one for a while. The two went up to All Might which Izuku started hit All Might's right leg with the bat to break his leg. The wire cut up All Might's leg to reveal the bone as it broke which All Might screamed in pain then Izuku pulled out a bottle of vodka for him and Tamura to drink then Izuku poured the entire bottle on All Might's leg which the students were in shock by the events which Tamura grabbed All Might's weak spot to say, my turn, as All Might was in greater pain. All of a sudden Tamura got shot in the shoulder which Izuku looked to see the UA teachers which Tamura ordered the Namu to let go of All Might. The three got the Namu in and looked at the heroes which Tamura said, this isn't the last you see of us again. Izuku yelled, that's right because we will always be watching you. Then the three got in the portal to get back to the bar which AFO asked, how did it go? Tamura said, we didn't kill him, but we heavily injured All Might and the others. The Namu is returned safely back into the lab so we can use it again. Izuku said, he will be extremely weak when he gets out of the hospital. An hour later the news appeared which showed the USJ which showed the pictures of the villains responsible for it. The pictures of Izuku, Tamura, and Kirajiri which Izuku got a phone call. Izuku picked up, hello gone, what's happening? His mom was on the other side, which he kind of forgot she is starting to live with him. She questioned what he did over at the USJ. He explained that he made Bakugo unable to walk and made him quirkless and broke All Might's leg which she was angry but let it go after a while. But he told her that he was fine and unharmed which he was at the league's base at the moment. Then he put the phone away to check the time and said, I guess I got to get ready for my date tonight. Tamura and Kirajiri looked at him in shock which he said, What? You two know I have a life besides the league and the Yakuza. Which Kirajiri asked, Who is the lucky lady? Izuku said, Just someone I met a few days ago. Well, have fun recruiting more people and I will get Dabai and his friends to join you. Kirajiri warped Izuku to his apartment so he can get changed and check Gon's homework quickly. His mom was still shocked that Izuku was teaching Gon such high-level knowledge which Izuku's response was, Trust me, these subjects really help me in this line of work. Izuku wore a black tuxedo with a green dress shirt and a white tie. He walked out of his apartment to find Melissa in her dress. Izuku said, You look stunning. Melissa blushed, You think so? Izuku said, no, I know you are. Izuku then got a limo to pick them up which Melissa said, this is nice. Izuku said, if this is nice, wait until you see where we are going to. 
They arrived at a place called Tapa's Molecular Bar, which Melissa was impressed by the place. They got their food and she enjoyed it and had some fun. But Melissa saw the bill which Izuku chuckled and paid it and left a tip of 11,086 yen. Izuku said, let's have some fun and I have money to burn. They rode around to little shops and tech shops as well which Izuku did have a really good fake driver's license and bought a brand new Tesla, which he was driving around with her in it which he said, so this is what it feels like to drive in style. The two were having a blast which then he drove to her place which she said, I had a great time. Izuku said, hey, I sorry about the whole breaking your uncle Might's leg thing, but I like you so I guess he will probably get an apology card from me. Melissa in shock, really? Izuku said, unless you don't me too. Melissa said, I like you too, but I think you should get on my dad's good side a little and send Uncle Might an apology card. Izuku smirked, okay, it will be done my lady. Melissa laughed and he opened the door for her and walked her to apartment which David opened the door to find the two. Izuku said, don't worry, I brought her back safely and unharmed, she had fun and I going to leave now. David was about to say something but Mirio ran out of nowhere and Izuku got in his new car and Tokyo drift his way from Mirio. Mirio got on the windshield which Izuku yelled, don't dirty up the windshield. I just bought this thing like an hour ago. Mirio was about to phase through the windshield until Izuku stepped on the brake to send Mirio flying off the car and Izuku put the car in reverse. Izuku drove off and called Kirajiri to warp him and his new car to his warehouses, which a portal appeared in front of him and he put his new car in one of them and covered it because it's a new Telsa and he doesn't want to get it dirty. Izuku came home and told his mom how the date went and everything, which Gon said, I got your bills and bank account information letters. Izuku grabbed them and started doing them. His mom wanted to help but was amazed by her son is able to do his bills with ease. After a few minutes, Izuku muttered, so let's see after tonight's date, bills paid for, and a few other expenses I should have 44,661,600,000 yen. His mom dropped her teacup which she asked, how much do you have? Izuku told her the amount he had which she said, you realize what you can do with the money. Izuku said, buy a house, retirement plan, and other stuff, but I'm not ready for that yet. Miss Midoriya looked at him which he said, I guess I can get a bigger apartment but not a house. They settled on the idea which she asked, where did you get the money? Izuku said, my villain activities beside overhaul in the league are robbing banks, arms dealing, sell illegal stuff, quirk analysis, and other stuff, which no one besides me, you, and Gon know how much money I have, so tell no one. She nodded and he went to bed to prepare for week of craziness he was going to do and he was going to have a blast. Izuku just left the bank with Denjiro and Manami with a ton of cash and gold, enjoying an easy break-in and escape. Kirajiri helped them with the transport. Denjiro being the star of the show, Manami being the camera girl and actress, and Izuku being a special guest to the show just stealing a lot of money with ease. Their internet show exploded when Izuku came in the help by giving them jobs that will help boost popularity and his appearance helped them get a lot of quirkless fans. Ever since the USJ and the sports festival, the new updated villain list has Izuku as an SCLS villain which makes him the first quirkless villain to get such a rank. Izuku was the first quirkless villain to get a CLS rank and this was now another trophy he can add to his wall. Izuku was now counting money and separating the pay because Izuku is a man of his word and believes in fair pay. He gave everyone a fair share of splitting the pay which Denjiro and Manami got their half while Izuku and Kirijiri got their half. Everyone knew that Izuku is a man of his word unless his life was in serious danger, and that he always pursued pleasure above all else. But sometimes it not his pleasure he pursues. Sometimes he likes to see people find their pleasure and would help them. Izuku was not a selfish person, he likes to share and help out others. Izuku shook Denjiro's hand. Pleasure doing business with you, I hope we continue to work with each other. Denjiro smiled, I hope so too. Izuku left to walk around in the alleys of Hasu to find Spinner which he's out looking for stain. Killing thugs, or stalking and killing fake heroes. Izuku at first didn't like or hate Spinner because he reminded Izuku of Stain which Izuku didn't like or hate Stain. To Izuku, Stain had a good ideology, but he was weird and creepy which Spinner was a little less creepy. To Stain, Izuku was a villain that had information to help him and Izuku was too nice to be a villain which confused him the most. Stain never felt comfortable around Izuku because he was nice but could beat the shit out of a person with ease if he was angry. The two never really sat down and had a talk because their talks would be just trade talks where Izuku gave Stain information on fake heroes that Izuku believed needed to be out of the picture because they agreed that the system was full of fake heroes that needed to be taken care of. But the true differences were that Izuku hated governments of all kinds because they would discriminate him and his kind no matter what and believed All Might was one of the fake heroes. Izuku found Spinner who just killed a fake hero which Izuku said, looks like someone is having fun. Spinner smirked, you do have your ways of finding people. 
Izuku chuckled. Well let head out to take care of some business. The two headed off to go do their personal business. The one thing they had in common was that the quirkless and mutant quirked people were looked down by everyone else. There is a hierarchy in this world people don't talk about, but everyone knows about, the quirk hierarchy as it's commonly called. The top of the hierarchy is the emitters because they are still human but with a quirk and under them was the transformation quirks which made the users a mutant for a short time. The third is mutation quirks like spinner where they are mutated because of the quirk which they no longer look human but they are somewhat treated like human. Then there was the quirkless on the bottom which they are the most heavily discriminated and seen as the inferior humans actually not even human because of the lack of a quirk. The two hated the hierarchy of this society and agree on teaching few people a lesson on how stupid it was. The two understood what it's like to be discriminated and loved inflict pain on others who tries to fight them and other things. Izuku and Spinner were now outside a restaurant that had signs reading No Mutants or Quirkless which Izuku asked. You ready? Spinner smirked. When you are. Izuku opened the door to throw a flashbang and closed it fast. They heard the bang and opened it up to begin the beat down. Izuku gave Spinner one of his bats because it was more fun to break bones and make the enemy suffer than killing them. They have been watching the place closely to figure out when the owner comes in and today was day. They beat up the workers, some of the customers, and the owner. But the owner was also tied up and stripped naked which Izuku and Spinner put him on the roof of the place. Which the two ran off before the heroes and cops showed up which Izuku asked. You think the owner got the message? Spinner said, I'm sure. The two definitely respected each other because of skill, ideals, and hatred for society. Which the two headed to the league's base. Izuku is going to have a meeting with Kai, Sensei, and Tamura, which makes four SCLS ranked villains in one room to discuss their future plans. Izuku has been their bridge and working for both of them. He oversees Kai's second factory and Sensei's second Namu factory, making him a powerful person. Izuku got warped into the Sensei's room, which everyone was there. Izuku said, Sensei, Kai, Tamura, it's always great to see you three. The three welcomed him, which Sensei said, So here we are. The most powerful and influenced villains of today are now here to talk about the future of Japan. I would like to discuss our first objective, All Might and his successor. The three nodded then Sensei continued. I'm not strong as I used to be. I can only leave this place for three hours a day. Kai interrupted. If you don't mind, I would like to use my quirk to heal you back to full health. Sensei nodded which used his quirk to heal Sensei back to full health which Tamura with wide eyes said, Sensei. Izuku looked at Sensei to say, Damn you must have been stealing girls' hearts back in the day. Sensei chuckled at Izuku's response then said, Thank you Izuku and thank you Overhaul for your healing. Then everyone got settled which Sensei said, I expect All Might and his allies to find us and destroy us. I want to keep a low profile for a while but to continue what we are doing. So Izuku we need you to tone it down on your activities for a little bit. Like maybe put your full attention on the factories, money flow, and recruitment. Izuku sighed, Yes Sensei, I understand. Kai said, Don't worry Izuku, it's only for a short time but we also need you to increase production on both factories and recruitment. We know you get bored and start getting in trouble so we send you challenges on how much production you should do. Izuku asked, Challenges? Tamura said, I came up with the idea, if you were wondering. Izuku smiled, Tamura, you are getting smarter by the minute, it's almost scary. The three continued talks until they covered everything, which they are going to get a few more people to ally with them to make the league even more powerful. Izuku got warped to his warehouses to check the Namu lab labeled TDM in the Kai's second factory, then went to his personal warehouse to check his computer for the challenges that he is given. The first challenge is to recruit at least 300 recruits quirked or quirkless, make about 5 shipping containers of the quirk erasing bullets and drugs, and 20 gnomas by the end of the week. Izuku chuckled, this is the first challenge. This is child's play to me. Three days later, Izuku sent the emails to the three saying the first challenge is done, which the three responded. Sensei wrote, that was faster than expected. Well I need 50 gnomas in one week. Kai wrote, excellent, I need triple that in one week. Tamura wrote, how? Well here's a challenge, 1000 rikuits in one week. Izuku laughed, now that's a challenge. Izuku went to his grunts that work for him. Izuku hires the people who usually never get jobs in this world which would be the quirkless and the mutant quirks people. He went check on them and told them the new goal but told them they can have the rest of the day off. Izuku's grunts like Izuku because he doesn't discriminate and he is providing jobs for them. Also he was a nice boss who knows how to increase production without overworking them. Selling illegal arms is his business not Kai's or the League's, just as on the side business which he loves the money flow he was getting. The League gets money from what Izuku, Jiren, and Sensei gives, and Kai gets money from the quirk erasing drugs, which Izuku pays his grunts well because he wants to keep them working to keep his operation going. The grunts left and went to tell the other grunts that they also had the rest of the day off which Izuku sat in his office calculating the sales and everything then finished to head home. 
Izuku came home to find Melissa, Kayoka, and his mom at the dinner table. He looked at them to say, I have so many questions, I don't know where to begin. The three got up to hug him and asked where he has been, which he explained the situation. His mom asked, so, you're not going to go around cause trouble. Izuku said, I'll still be doing illegal stuff, but I wouldn't appear on the news for a while or be out on the streets either. Melissa asked, so where do you work at, so we can visit? Izuku said, I'll let Kirajiri allow you all to be warped there if you need something or visit. Kayoka asked, are you going to be gone for another few days? Izuku said, oh yeah, I'll be gone for another few days, but I will let you three know that I'm alright and whatnot. But Kayoka, I would like to know how you got here and why you and Melissa are so familiar with my mom. Second day without Izuku. Miss Midoriya was worried about her son because he hasn't showed up for two days. It reminded her of the time he ran away. She was about to go out to see where he went. The door knocked she opened it up to see a blonde blue-eyed girl at the door which she asked, Can I help you? The girl asked, Is Izuku here? Miss Midoriya looked at her, No, but I'm his mother, can I help you? The girl said, Hello Miss Midoriya, I'm Melissa. Miss Midoriya realized who she was and teared up, my little Izuku's girlfriend. Melissa came inside which the two talked about Izuku when he was little and Miss Midoriya showed baby pictures. Then they hear knocking on the door. Miss Midoriya opened the door to see a black-haired girl with earphone jack earlobes which she asked, Is Izuku here? Miss Midoriya cried out, My Izuku got two girlfriends. The girl got red said, No, it's not like that. I'm Kayoka, he saved me a couple times and I was coming to thank him. Which then she came inside which they continued to discuss him, which the three calmed down after meeting each other and talking about Izuku. Which the three agreed that starting tomorrow they will start looking for him. The girls stayed for the night because Izuku is right about the rapists at night are more active. The next day they looked at his last known locations and looked up phone numbers in Izuku's phone book. But Gon explained which numbers they must never call under any situation. It was evening which they were discussing what they found and whatnot until they saw a portal open and Izuku came out. Present. Izuku signed. I'm sorry for worrying you three but sometimes I have a lot of work. They are keeping me occupied so I keep a low profile for a while. Which his mom made his favorite dish which he was happy to see it. He then headed to the TV to see the news which had Bakugo being the first quirkless hero in training which Izuku grunted. Bastard. Kayoka asked. What's your problem with Bakugo? Izuku told her, Melissa, and his mom about everything that Bakugo did to him when he was little, which left the three in shock because Miss Midoriya didn't believe what the teachers told her when Bakugo confessed what he did but with Izuku revealing it to be true, she was in full rage at Bakugo. Melissa and Kayoka were angry that someone like Bakugo who is getting praise and becoming a hero did that to someone which ended up making Izuku what he is today. The newsman then said, now for our latest poll, who would will win in a fight Bakugo, the quirkless hero or Izuku Midoriya also known as the anarchist? The poll is showing a split even tie. Izuku laughed his ass off. What a bunch of idiots I tell you. I wish I recorded Kaken getting his ass handed to by me when he had his quirk. And he is getting trained by Aizawa which I shot him in the D with rubber bullets to win that fight with ease. How can he win in a fight with me? The three were calming him down which he did. And he said, I'm sorry about that. I guess I will go get some sleep. He got in the shower to get him cleaned off. Then headed to his bedroom to find Kayoka and Melissa naked on his bed. He pulled his do not disturb sign on top of one of his shelves and said, good thing this room is soundproof. He put the sign on the doorknob and locked the door to have himself a good night. Izuku woke up to find his girlfriends in his bed which he smirked and thought to himself, it's a good thing I got condoms under the pillow for things like this, but right now I'm not getting up. He got a phone call which he grabbed it to whisper, hello. Kirajiri on the other line said, your warp portal is ready. Izuku said, give me about five minutes. Kirajiri said, Dabai wants to warp to your location to show you something. Izuku said, give me five minutes to get ready. Izuku heard Dabai say on the other end, I'll help him up and it will be quick. Before could say anything Kirajiri opened a portal to his room and Dabai came through to see Izuku with the girls in his bed. Dabai with wide eyes and his jaw on the floor in shock and Izuku whispered, leave. Dabai struggled to move which then Kirajiri on the phone asked, is everything alright? Which the Kirajiri went through and gasped at the sight which Izuku whispered, Get the F out. Which the two were about to until Tamura accidentally walked in and saw it. He was about to scream but Dabai tackled him back to the other side of the portal. Kirajiri whispered, We are very sorry. They left which Izuku managed to get out of the bed and got dressed to get warped to the base to see what Dabai want to show him. Izuku left an apology letter for the girls that he has to go back to work. Izuku walked into the portal which he said, Next time I say, give me five minutes, give me five minutes. I haven't had breakfast yet. Izuku got a bowl of cereal and he ate while Dabai showed Izuku that the heroes are on the streets and were panicked that Izuku hasn't shown himself in four days now. Izuku missed his usual Monday arrest which the police were on edge that Izuku hasn't caused havoc in three days. Izuku chuckled, if this is four days, imagine four weeks without me. 
The Police Station The top 10 pro heroes with a almost fully healed all might were with the police chiefs of the cities Izuku terrorizes, other officers, and the mayors of said cities. The chief of Hasu said, so we all know why we are here. All the heroes nodded, which Nezu appeared to turn on the TV screen to begin the presentation. Nezu said, Izuku Midori, also known by most as the Anarchist, is an SCLS villain who doesn't like governments of any kind and fights for quirkless and mutant rights movements. He is loved by the quirkless and has fans all across the world because he shows the world that the quirkless can beat quirked heroes and villains with hard work. He is known for causing havoc, but he hasn't killed a single person in his entire villain career. He has injured many heroes and others. He is wanted for his many crimes, questioning of other supervillains, and to help the government with how to regain the minds of the quirkless. He has caused the quirkless population from committing suicide to causing crimes like him, which the government want him to help convince the quirkless population to stop both suicides and crimes. Endeavor huffed at the last apart because he didn't care about the quirkless, which Nezu continued. He has been missing for four days now which means he or the people he works for or with plan something big. The heroes were on edge by the statement because Izuku has done a lot of things that were big but when they realize it, they were an everyday thing to him, now he is going even bigger. One of the mayors said. That is why we need to find him to stop what he is planning before he reappears with what he reveals. The heroes nodded and they began their investigation in the disappearance on Izuku Midoriya, which they were going to catch him this time. Or so they thought. Izuku's warehouse. Izuku got back from checking the progress of the latest challenge which Izuku was going to get it done one day earlier if his grunts continue the good work. He was getting bored from accounting and overseeing the progress, which he looked at his outfits. He had a villain outfit for everything. And every hero has seen most of them except one outfit. His first outfit he never wore. It was when he started working for Kai. It was a Black Plague Doctor outfit complete with the hat, red lens googles, and cane. He didn't wear it because it was a little too much and summertime was beach if he wore it. He looked at it and thought to himself, what if I modified it? Izuku took the outfit to the table and started designing a brand new version of it to be bulletproof, element proof, and can handle All Might's Detroit smash. Then a portal opened, which Melissa came out which Izuku said, Hey there. Melissa came up to kiss him which he said, Love you too. She said, I brought your lunch. She handed him his lunch and looked at his new suit design to asked, What is this for? Izuku said, I had an old suit that I wanted to modify when I want to use it again, but it's outdated. Melissa made her design which amazed Izuku. She said, That is how I would modify it. Izuku asked, You do know you stuff. I almost forgot about your dad used to make support items and suits for all mine. Then Izuku looked at it. I guess I will take it to the shop to get my guys to make it. You wanna come? Melissa nodded which Izuku and her went to Sibis. Izuku said, the word means food, but really it's a workshop for items and torture chambers for getting information out of people. Melissa asked, why did you call it food? Izuku said, well I can't call it workshop or torture chambers because I want to confuse people. Also, everyone here who works for me is either quirkless or has a mutant quirk just letting you know in advance. After showing her the workshop and the people who work for him, he watched her and a few others work on his new outfit which after an hour the suit was now ready. It was a black futurist plague doctor suit with a steel gray mask with red lens. Izuku put it on which the suit increased his strength and speed. The cane that came with acted like his taser baton. The suit was bulletproof and elemental proof, but most importantly it can take All Might's most powerful punch three times. Izuku put it on to try it out. He felt the speed he gained and the strength which Izuku was enjoying it. He was now thinking about going out on the street to beat up some heroes and some thugs, which he decided that no one will recognize him. So he brought Melissa back to his apartment and head out to kick some s as the lone black kicks. Izuku was still working on the name but he wanted to kick some s with this new suit which as he jumped from building to building thinking about how this reminds him of his first appearance. He saw some thugs robbing some couple which he thought, how cliché. He jumped due to knock out the leader then tase the others which he tipped his hat to the couple and ran off without a word. He then saw Mount Lady which he thought, Swiggity swooty I'm coming for the booty. He jumped down to hit her on the head then tased her to keep her down then drag her to the door of the nearby cat cafe then put her in the cat corner and cover her in cats. He took a picture then hauled S to continue his mayhem. He forgot to mention he wanted a voice changer for the suit but thought he might not say a thing to make himself a silent prankster. Izuku then had an idea for his name the silent trickster. He went to the police station to spray paint his new villain name on it. The heroes and police were shocked by how bold this new villain was which Izuku ran off throwing smoke bombs and flashbangs behind him. Izuku escaped and got back to his warehouse to check the progress reports of the production and hid the suit somewhere so Kai or Sensei doesn't find it. Izuku then thought about getting Melissa to upgrade all of his suits when she has time because the new suit was amazing to him. He turned on his TV to see the news which they were talking about the silent trickster which Izuku got a call from Sensei. Izuku picked it up. Hello, this is Izuku. 
Sensei said, well you have found a loophole. Izuku said, I was testing out a new suit, don't worry it wouldn't happen again. Sensei said, we're not mad, actually we will let you run around as the silent trickster but you must keep up production and not get caught. Izuku said, I can do that. Sensei ended the call which Izuku chuckled, well I'm going to abuse this loophole. The next day Izuku got Melissa to upgrade his current anarchist suit while he went out to do some trouble which Izuku had a genius idea when he reveals the silent trickster as the anarchist which started going to Tartarus to find weak spots and shifts while he was out causing problems. Izuku was jumping building to building until felt a punch but it did nothing to him which he turned to find Mirio which Izuku jabbed Mirio with the cane. But the cane went through. The two jumped back which Mirio said, Trickster, your appearance may have been yesterday and you are already been CL sci-fied as a B-ranked villain. Izuku thought, hold up, I'm a now a B rank in one day, now that escalated quicker than I thought. Mirio continued, what do you have to say for yourself? Izuku just shrugged then got into a fighting stance. Mirio asked, you have nothing to say. Izuku nodded at him, which Mirio charged which Izuku started dodging attacks because Izuku was waiting for him to catch his breath. Mirio started using OFA at 40% which hit Izuku but did nothing to Izuku. Izuku took the chance to tase him. Izuku started running until Mirio came back to use OFA at 50% which Izuku turned around to take it which the punch wasn't going to harm him so Izuku tased and peppered sprayed him which Izuku hauled at. Izuku was extremely happy about this suit's ability to take some damage and he could hardly feel it. Then Mirio yelled, Bubble Girl get him. Izuku thought, yes. Mirio brought big blue titties to the battle. Bubble Girl got in front of him which she started to release some bubbles at him. But he shrugged and dropped kicked her and though, I'm wearing a gas mask, why didn't you just use hand-to-hand -hand combat? Izuku tipped his hat and continued to run which he heard, get him Mirko. Izuku thought, hold up, why are they bringing the number 6 pro hero to catch a B-ranked villain? Mirko landed in front of him which he knew he was screwed so he dropped a flashbang between them. Mirko cover her ears and closed her eyes which Izuku had the outfit protect him from flashbangs and all might so this was the easy win. Izuku then tased her in the gut, peppered sprayed her and drop kicked her then continued to run. Izuku finally escaped to head to the sewage system to get back to the warehouses, which he was glad that his mask filtered out the smell. Izuku finally got back to the warehouse to do some work which the news revealed the silent trickster was now in a CLS villain which Izuku said, in two days, I went from doing this work to becoming other villain that is now in a CLS villain. This is true grinding. Izuku finished up his reports to check on night shift staff and then continue to do more paperwork on how much supplies they were going to need. To the world the anarchist is planning something big, but the silent trickster is distracting the world from what the anarchist was really doing. Izuku then went to the workshop make weapons of certain weapons of certain villains who are certainly in Tartarus, which Izuku chuckled. Now we will have party and the recruitment will be more exciting than I usually bring in. Izuku woke up in his warehouse after completing another challenge. He checked his phone which instantly reads Dabai's birth. Izuku with wide eyes said, What am I going to do? Izuku looked at the TV to see the top 10 pro heroes on the news which Izuku chuckled, I have an idea. Todoroki residence. Endeavor was at the gym part of the house trying to hopefully get stronger to serps all might or live long enough to serps him. His daughter, Faimi said, Dad, there is a reporter out here who want to speak with you. Endeavor's real name is Inji which he went to the door to see what the reporter wanted. The reporter had blue hair and grey eyes but was short. The reporter asked, Mr. Todoroki or can I call you Endeavor? Inji grunted, what is it? The reporter said, I'm here to get your option about you becoming the number one hero. Inji shocked, what did you say? The reporter smiled, you are the number one hero by popular vote and I want your opinion on the matter, can we head to my office? Inji smiled, yes, let me get ready. The reporter came in while Inji got changed which the reporter talked with Fayumi for a little bit until Inji came back fully dressed. Inji got in the reporter's black Tesla which the reporter gave Inji a drink after one minute Inji blacked out. Izuku smiled, this is just too easy. Warehouse Sibis. Izuku was walking with Dabai who was blindfolded. Then Izuku said, okay Dabai, you can take that silly thing off. Dabai took it off and the two stood in front of a door which Izuku thought to himself, time to pull an Ellen DeGeneres here. Izuku looked at Dabai. I heard you like Endeavor. Dabai looked at him. Izuku, you didn't. Izuku opened the door to reveal Inji but s naked, strapped to a chair with a birthday cake on his lap and multiple torture tools and other items surrounding him. Dabai jumped in the air in happiness like a seven-year-old which he hugged Izuku. Izuku said, I love you too man, but you're killing me here. Dabai let go which Izuku took Dabai to a book next to Endeavor which Izuku said, All the tools are labeled, and this book shows how each tool works and different ways you can torture people. Izuku picked up the nutbuster, which he said, this is the nutbuster, which this is my favorite tool and I know it will be yours as well. Izuku left Dabai to also say, don't kill him, because this is part one and I need him alive to complete part two. 
Dabai smiled, no problem. Izuku closed the door to let Dabai have his fun, which he had to check on the latest Namu that is about to done. Izuku check at Warehouse TDM to see High End and Izuku was amazed by this Namu because it could think for itself and still followed orders. High End looked at Izuku, are you my father? Izuku in shock, I'm sorry but I'm not your father. That would be Sensei. High End asked, then what do I call you? Izuku smiled, you can call me Uncle Izuku. High End asked, what am I, Uncle Izuku? Izuku then explained some stuff to High End but not all of it, because Izuku doesn't know how High End would react to everything that it takes to create him. Izuku started to teach him to read, write, and accounting to see how he reacts which Izuku saw how fast High End was learning. Izuku then thought of a crazy idea and got on his the silent trickster outfit and got on High End's back to fly around the city. Izuku told High End to not call him Uncle Izuku while wearing this outfit but to call him Trickster when he got in the outfit. Kamino Police HQ The police were now in a mess. First Endeavor goes to some non-existent interview. Izuku is missing, and this new villain who goes by the silent trickster is causing havoc in Izuku's place. They needed a break in the case, which now they were forced to call Interpol for help. Two Interpol agents came in which the first was a British black hair and blue eyes man then the second one was a blonde American woman with red eyes. The British said, Hello, I'm George Holmes. The American said, I'm Sarah Smith. All the police officers there was glad that they were getting help until the doors fly open to reveal Trickster and High End coming in. Trickster had quirk erasing bullets to shoot nearby officers while High End attacked officers, beat up heroes that came in, and destroying the building. Izuku saw the two Interpol agents and shot them both which made them quirkless but didn't kill them. Izuku then jumped on High End and they flew off back to the warehouses which Izuku taught High End about his ideology and other stuff. High End was confused on why people would discriminate on others which Izuku said, I don't have an answer for that, people are complicated and sometimes stupid, but they can be redeemable at times. Izuku wrote down some notes on High End's behavior and intelligences then Izuku would send it to Sensei to look over. Izuku learned he had perfect memory so Izuku took High End to Warehouse Bibliotheca which was a warehouse full of his quirk analysis of every hero, villain, vigilante, and people of interest, which if High End could memorize it then anyone who crosses him are screwed. Izuku then took High End to the Namu factory after he read a few books on quirks of some heroes which Izuku thought. I can't believe he learned to read and write in just one hour. As for accounting he just learned the basics which is fine. My curious is satisfied for now with High End. I'm going to try more things. But Izuku gave High End a huge collection of quirk analysis which he will get High End to continue to read them to help him the future. Then Izuku sat in his chair with the reports thinking. Izuku then mumbled. I feel like I forgot something. Izuku looked around to find the map of Tartarus to say, that's right, my plan to break some villains out of Tartarus. Izuku looked at the blueprints to mark of villains he will let out and which to leave there, because he did send some villains to Tartarus for being shoals. Izuku put out some lists in his warehouse for his grunts to see, which tells them who is going to go with him to transport the villains and help get them out. Izuku stopped after putting up the lists to say, okay, what am I forgetting now? He stood there for a minute then realized, Dabai, yeah, Dabai should be done by now. He went to the torture room Dabai was at which he opened it to find Dabai still torturing Endeavor which Izuku shrugged and thought, or maybe not. Izuku got Dabai some food and said, take a break, torturing can make a man hungry and tired. Dabai looked at Izuku to realize he was right. Then he took a short break for the food. Dabai asked, what is the second part? Izuku chuckled, you know what I got sensei to do with my dad. Dabai smirked, I already love the idea. The two enjoyed their dinner which Dabai asked, hey Izuku. Why did you bang not only a girl you had about I don't know three dates with, give or take, and another girl you saved twice and don't know a thing about? Izuku smirked. What are you talking about I read Kayoka's file and also I let things happen in my life. Dabai grunted the comment then laughed a little bit. Izuku said, come on you should go out with Toga. Dabai looked at him. You know she is about your age and I'm like in my mid-twenties. Izuku said, age is nothing but a number. The two laughed a little bit which Dabai said, I'm already destined for prison for multiple murders but I'm not to prison for that. Izuku said, don't look at me, I'm not sticking my D in crazy. The two left Endeavor for a little bit to take a break from smell of blood to sit on some lawn chairs. Izuku said, in two days, I'm going to break a few villains out of Tartarus as I reveal that the newly infamous villain Trickster is actually me. I'm going to be like. Izuku stood up to say, you thought Trickster was going to be some teen. Izuku used his thumb to point at himself, dot 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 but it was me, Izuku Midoriya. Damn I ask, are you sure you are allowed to do that? Izuku said, I have the rules on an hourly basis, I'm going to do it even if I'm not allowed to do it. Izuku sat down, I need your help as well because of security and whatnot. Dabai smiled, I'm down for that. Dabai asked why hasn't my old man used his fire yet? 
Izuku said. I knocked him with a new formula of the quirk erasing drug that erases quirks and puts people to sleep. Dabai chuckled a bit. Then Izuku said, Okay, I will let you go back your thing. Let me know when you are done, so Sensei can make a Namu out of him. Dabai went back to Endeavor's room, which Izuku went to his personal warehouse for a quick nap. Camino Hospital The hospital was flooded with patients from the Msacker on the police station that Trickster attacked earlier today, which the doctors were seeing a lot of police officers and even some pro heroes were now quirkless. Nazu and the top 10 pro heroes, except Endeavor, looked over the security footage of the station to see what happened. They saw Trickster and High End, who actually destroyed the place and his quirks terrified the pros, which they were wondering who this Trickster was. As they discussed it, Nezu looked at the footages of all the trickster appearances until Nezu saw it. Nezu said, I have reason to believe that this trickster is a fan of the anarchist. The pros looked at him, which the two now quirkless Interpol agents came in which George said, can you explain? Nezu showed his footage of him fighting Mirio, Bubble Girl, and Mirko to say, he or she fights quirkless, carries around a cane that acts similar to the anarchist's taser baton, and doesn't hesitate to fight a woman. Mirko, still pissed from Trickster beating her ass, said, You're right, the anarchist wouldn't hesitate to do it and he has many fans across the country and world. Since he is missing for five days now, this person must be thinking that they must cause havoc in his place. George looked at the evidence. You are right, but look how he or she is taking punches. He or she must have a quirk to take those powerful punches that Lemillion is pulling. Sarah said, Trickster might have been thought to be quirkless for a long time and everyone treated him or her like a quirkless person. Then when people realized that he or she indeed have a quirk, but it was too late for an apology. Hawks said, Trickster was most likely inspirited by the anarchist which he or she share a similar pain which with the anarchist gone. There is no one to cause destruction. Everyone thought about it. George asked, I have another theory. They looked at him which he said, my theory is that the trickster might also be the anarchist. They looked at him in shock. Nezu asked, why? George showed the footage of the anarchist and the trickster side by side, then said, look at the fighting styles, they are too similar. Then Mirko, Bubble Girl, and Mirio reported no quirk besides some sort of shock absorption or shock nullification quirk, but look at the anarchist. There was a clip of Izuku getting a punch from Mirio with 30% of OFA and Izuku took it like a boss, then he said, he may be quirkless but he is strong. He might have a suit to help him take more damage and this trickster is just nothing more than to shift our focus from his real plan. The heroes looked at this and realized he might be right but the only way to know is to catch Trickster. The heroes and Nezu let the Interpol agents go back to rest. They then got out of the hospital to plan to find this Trickster and bring him to justice as well as find Izuku to do the same. All Might was thinking about Izuku and how he created him to be this monster and how he inspires many quirkless people. All Might was seeing Bakugo train with Shinzo under Aizawa to fight quirkless but All Might knows that he wasn't ready to fight Izuku. Izuku can beat Bakugo in every way because Izuku has been quirkless his entire life. He had trained a lot longer than Bakugo. He defeated Bakugo who had a powerful quirk. Izuku also without armor can take Mirio's 30% OFA punch and still fight. Bakugo was still learning to live his life as a quirkless person. When the news revealed that he could still walk because Izuku missed the spot, they were receiving threats from Izuku. Izuku doesn't do death threats. He wrote how he was going to make Bakugo ask for death instead. All Might was concerned for Bakugo, and with the news revealing him to be the first quirkless hero, it pissed Izuku off to no end. All Might could feel Izuku's rage. All Might thought, something inside young Midoriya must have thought that he was supposed to be the first quirkless hero but now his former childhood bully is getting the chance instead. I must find him and try to convince him to surrender himself. All Might was confused when it came to Izuku. It was his fault he ended up like this, but he has done a lot of wrong to where some people won't forgive him. Izuku hasn't killed a single person but injured them and, or made them quirkless. He still had hope for Izuku but he needed to prove it to the world, which he, Mirio, and Nezu had the talk. Nezu agrees if Izuku was caught then he will be given a chance to make up for what he has done by becoming a hero, but he still has to do some stuff. Izuku's Location Izuku sneezed. Someone was thinking about making me a hero, probably Johnny Bravo. Izuku got up to stretch then looked at the reports then said, We will finish the challenge early tomorrow morning. Well I'm going to beat up little D now to see how good this quirkless hero really is. Izuku looked at the trickster outfit to look at the new modification he hasn't used yet, the sword that came of the cane. Izuku took the sword to a scarf that was exactly like a racer head scarf to slice it clean, which Izuku chuckled, just testing. Now time to test it on Bakugo or should I call him Bakugo? Izuku got the outfit on and headed to Yue to give Bakugo a good beat down. Yue, everyone was fast asleep. And the lights were off in every building, while one person wasn't sleeping yet. That person was Bakugo which he has been training harder to beat the shit out of Izuku when he sees him again. Izuku looked out from a few yards to see him training which he thought to himself, sloppy, just sloppy fighting in general. 
Izuku pulled out a new device he had his grunts working on. The EMP grenade. The grenade was supposed to make an EMP to take out power from a one mile radius for three hours. Which Izuku pulled the pin then threw it over the walls of UA which it activated in midair. Which Izuku jumped the wall to land on feet. Izuku looked around to see Bakugo who was now looking at him. Bakugo then used his scarf on Izuku which Izuku grabbed the scarf to then pull Bakugo toward him. Bakugo ran to him to throw a punch at him but Izuku grabbed his hand to punch him in the face. Bakugo asked, What do you want you bastard? Izuku was the slint trickster right now so he just pointed at him with his finger. Which Bakugo shouted, I'm not giving up without a fight. Izuku tased him with the cane then beat him up with said cane. Until he looked over to see Shoto Todoroki. Izuku dropped a smoke grenade to then climb over the wall to run away. Which Izuku thought, he is causing a problem. But I believe he could be a great villain when Tamura and Dabai talked to him. Which after a few blocks he got hungry. Which he just walked into a dinner to order some food and drinks. He took off the bottom part of his mask to eat and drink. Which people around him looked at him, that he just walked in like he was a normal person. Izuku wasn't going to say a word about it because he didn't give a single F, then a person sat in front of him. Izuku looked up to see Midnight which she said, well look who we have. Izuku raised his index finger as a sign of let him eat before he will deal with your shit. Midnight said, indeed a rude little show to hear. Izuku shrugged, which Midnight asked, can you speak? Izuku nodded in a sign of yes, Midnight glared at him, but you don't want to. Izuku put his thumbs up to let her know she was right. She sighed, you remind me of the anarchist, but if he didn't talk, are you a fan of his or something? Izuku shrugged which didn't help Midnight in the slightest, which he was just trolling her at this point. Izuku quickly got his mask on to prepare for a fight, which Midnight looked at him. Trick question, do you hate the quirked or the government? Izuku nodded in a yes motion which still didn't help her answer which she got up but Izuku dropped a flashbang and ran off. Izuku didn't feel like fighting Midnight today as much fun it sounds. He liked to fight her as the anarchist so they can talk so dirty that the TV reports would just be bleeps on the entire conversion. It was a competition to see who was freakier or dirtier than the other really, which Izuku found the conversion between the two, funny as hell. But he had to be careful sometimes because one time he mentioned how would he love to be a part of her dungeon and a shit ton of fanfics of him and her were made by the people who were watching in their fight on the streets. One of those fanfics was made by Toga which he found disturbing yet so interesting to not look away from. Izuku came back to the warehouses to finally look at the final steps of completing the latest things of the challenge, which he looked at it then said, Okay guys after this one, we are done with these challenges and we can go back to our normal production. They cheered a little bit then he went to check on Dabai who was still torturing Endeavor which Izuku though to himself, I think my gift to Dabai was too good, but Endeavor will still be used in part 2. Izuku went to his office bed to sleep and call it a day, which he was exciting to pull his stunt. Izuku shouted, let's go people, we got only one shot at this. Izuku was finally off the hiding period so he will do his plan of breaking out a few villains. He already had a list of who to let out. Izuku grabbed the list and he got both his silent trickster and his new anarchist outfits to prepare for the show. The grunts loaded up the cameras and EMP equipment to cause a blackout on Tartarus. Izuku smiled at Dabai as he brought with him the newest big red Namu. Izuku asked, what's his name? Dabai smirked, too. Izuku loved it because the only thing Endeavor had ever known in his life is how to be number two which Izuku looked at a truck coming in. Izuku looked in the truck to find his green Namu, his father, which Izuku called him, deadbeat. Izuku looked at Dabai. Okay we got 250 men, two nomas, high end, me, and you, what are we missing? Dabai looked over to say, Toga and Spinner are coming as well. Izuku said, okay I can't the four of us in the roadster, guess we will take the firebird. Dabai asked, Firebird? Izuku went to his personal warehouse to reveal a black 1977 Pontiac Firebird Trans AM with a Firebird logo on the hood. Dabai couldn't stop looking at it. Izuku said, I hope to God, this better not get destroyed or scratched by this stunt. Toga and Spinner arrived which they looked at the car for a while until Izuku said, Okay, now get in. The four got in the car which Izuku led the many trucks to Tartarus to cause the biggest stunt Izuku has probably done in his career. Tartarus. Izuku looked at the prison and said, Okay everyone, turn off the vehicles and start up the EMPs. The grunts turned off the vehicles which then a few trucks had a device which they turned it on to cause an EMP to turn off the power anywhere in a 10 mile radius. Izuku smiled and said, Load up and let go release some bad guys. They drove up to the prison which Izuku stopped at the checkpoint outside the prison, which the guard said, What are you here for? Izuku pulled out his gun to shoot he guard in the head with a few rubber bullets. He got out of the car to push a button to let him and his entire army in. Izuku drifted in which Dabai came out to roast the guards. Spinner and Toga went wild. 
Deadbeat was ordered to take out the guards, Damai ordered two to roast up some guards with him, and the grunts shot up the place. Izuku got to the control room of the prison which when the grunts fixed up the power so Izuku could start the show, Izuku looked at the cameras to say, start rolling. The top pro heroes, Interpol agents, Nezu, Sir Naitai, and Mirio. Everyone was now wondering where the hell Endeavor is at, where Izuku was at, and who is this silent trickster was, then the TV changed channels to show the trickster himself. Everyone looked at the screen which the trickster held a big card which reads, Hello everyone, today I'm going to do a face reveal to you all today. Trust me, you never see it coming. Trickster then took his mask to reveal Izuku Midoriya which he said, You thought Trickster was going to be someone else. Izuku pointed at himself with his thumb to continue. Dot 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 but it was me, Izuku Midoriya. The Anarchist. Now that I revealed myself, I would like the heroes to know that I'm at Tartarus breaking people out. Stop me if you can. He <laughs> he. Everyone dropped everything which the heroes ran out of the building to go to Tartarus to stop Izuku from freeing some of the worst villains locked up in that place. Tartarus. Izuku took the microphone on the desk to say, Hello my fellow villains, I'm the Anarchist. Hopefully you all have heard of me. If you don't you are about to watch me in action. I'm here to break some of you out to help the League of Villains and the Shy H Sekai. For those who aren't getting out, you know why. Izuku started letting villains out and checking people off his list which then he got to the last villain, Toxic Chains. Izuku's grunts guided the newly released villains to their new weapons that Izuku's grunts have made. Then they got in the trucks to head back to base. They were off the bridge, but the military and pro heroes have arrived to ambush them. Izuku drove his car to hide behind one of the big trucks. Izuku yelled in his radio, Scatter! The villains in the truck started using their quirks to fight off the heroes in military, which the grunts were shooting quirk-erasing bullets and normal bullets to fight them. Izuku and his gang drove off because f that shit, Izuku already won in the end, he got the villains out of Tartarus and he broke in which he gave the everyone the locations of where to meet if this situation happened and they escaped. Izuku saw some military cars chasing them which Dabai started shooting his blue flames at them to melt the cars. Izuku then drifted his way back to the warehouses which the four got out which Izuku said, that could have gone better. Dabai said, maybe next time, don't mention your location. Izuku said, I wanted some entertainment but that was a little much. But now I wait for who didn't get caught and warp them here. Izuku then did some paperwork while the grunts who didn't go to the prison worked on stuff which Izuku was glad to bring only a quarter of his workforce to the event. Izuku looked at his watch to see the time. He got up to go to the front of his personal warehouse which multiple grunts and villains he freed appeared. Izuku then counted the grunts and villains which came out to 190 grunts and 50 out of the 100 villains he freed. Izuku smiled, this is better than I expected from that ambush, well sensei and Kai would be proud. The pro heroes, Interpol, and police, they looked what happened to the prison, the EMP, the army that came in, the villains that escaped, and the three Nomas. High end, Izuku's dad, and this newest one that followed Dabai. On closer look it looked like Endeavor which they stopped and were horrified that they turned Endeavor into a Namu. They were now going to capture Izuku because everyone knows that he gets bored then goes out to cause trouble. Izuku never stays out of the public's eye for long. He loves to cause trouble. And he loves to test the system in almost an act of revenge against the government who caused the quirk hierarchy. George's theory of trickster being Izuku was correct which means Izuku was wearing out the heroes and authorities just to do his biggest stunt, which led to 50 supervillains escaping successfully. Everyone was now wondering what he can possibly do next. He was a chaotic teen who did have a code to live by which he didn't kill but he can injure. Mirio looked at Izuku's picture and thought about every fight they had. How he smiled at every single one of their fights and certain other heroes smiled at but most heroes he didn't smile at. Mirio then thought. What if he has certain people he likes to fight and people he doesn't want to fight? Could he want to attack the heroes he likes for his entertainment and beat up the ones he hates more brutally? Mirio looked at all recorded fights of Izuku with pro heroes to find that there was fights he smiled and he and some looked annoyed, which the interactions were also different as well. For the ones he smiled, he planned to fight them, was prepared for them, and talked a lot. As for the annoyed, he was less prepared, but he still had a plan for them, like he was annoyed by their existences, and didn't talk much. Mirio quickly made a list of the heroes which he concluded that this were the heroes Izuku loved to fight or respected. The list included himself, Eraserhead, Midnight, some Hummus joke, every single member of the Wild, Wild Pussycats, Present Mike, Ingenium, and for some reason All Might. Mirio concluded that Izuku must still respect All Might in a sense or he just love reminding All Might of his greatest mistake. Mirio looked at the list and thought to himself, I know this is a long shot, but these are the people he will attack when he shows himself again. Izuku's a few days after prison break. It's been a few days since the prison break which he showed the villains the alliance of the league and overhaul which AFO looked at Izuku like a proud father looked at his son. But Izuku hasn't reappeared because he had his dates with his two ladies and maybe some R&R &R with them. 
but they haven't come back saying he was going to be the father, so he felt lucky. Right now, he was helping his mom keep calm that he wasn't going to be arrested or getting taken away from her, as well as teaching gone about money flow in the underworld and why you should bank accounts in Jamaica and other places instead of some bank nearby in Japan. Then Izuku went to the warehouses to give high-end more quirk analysis notes for him to read, then looked at his equipment to say, F it, time for my reappearance. I guess Mirio will be my target or will it be Aizawa? Izuku got his new and improved anarchist suit and equipment to go cause a riot, which he got warped to somewhere near Mirio's location to fight him. The truth was that Izuku liked Mirio because they are similar to each other. Mirio was born with a flawed quirk that could kill him and he was inspired by All Might to become a hero. Izuku was born without a quirk and was inspired by All Might as a child before his dreams were crushed. What the two had in common, besides All Might, was they worked hard to make their flaws into a strength and improve themselves to become powerful people. Izuku likes Mirio because he is the only one who knows what's it like to start off the world as a laughing stock and is now well respected because of hard work. Mirio did see Izuku as a rival which Izuku was honored that someone took him seriously right from the start which they have fought each other before the underworld ring bus. Izuku still remembered the first interaction like it was yesterday, which is a story that he will never forget. Two years ago, Izuku was a CCLS villain who works for Kai, but this was a time when he called him boss. Izuku used his breaks to sell information, beat up thugs, and cause trouble. Right now he was setting the police chief's car on fire. Izuku in one of his early outfits which was a green trench coat with a black lens gas mask and black dress shirt and pants. He wore his red timbers because he needs shoes to run with and his dress shoes are not going to cut it. As he watched the fire grow he heard, Stop right there, villain. He turned to find Mirio as an intern with some hero accompanying him, which Izuku asked, Who are you, young hero? Mirio said, I'm a million. I'm going to be a hero who will save one million lives by the time I retire. Izuku looked at Mirio to shoot a rubber bullet at him but it went through him and hit the pro hero's D which Izuku chuckled. Careful now a million, a true hero would take that rubber bullet. Mirio who was caring for the hero looked at Izuku to ask, rubber bullet. Izuku said, I'm not a killer just letting you know. Also I'm the anarchist, nice to meet you. I hope we meet each other again. Lemillion I also hope one day you reach that goal of yours. It sounds honorable. Which I like it because it is indeed very heroic unlike most heroes these days. Izuku dropped a smoke grenade then disappeared from the scene leaving Mirio to take care of the hero went was in turning f who got shot in the D by a rubber bullet. Present. Izuku smiled at the happy memory the look down the street to find Mirio patrolling the area which Izuku smirked. He looks bored, I guess it's time to give him entertainment for his hard work as a hero. Izuku smiled as he walked out the alley to yell, L-E-M-I-L-L-I-O-N. Mirio turned around to see Izuku to yell back, Anarchist. Izuku pulled out his plain baseball bat and taser baton which Mirio got in his fighting stance which the two stared down each other. Then someone who was watched dropped their pen which the two charged at each other to begin their fight. Dabai and Izuku were walking to around the streets to find some trouble and get involved with. Izuku noticed a flower store that wasn't there before. Izuku said, I'm going to get some flowers for my mom and girlfriends. Dabai chuckled, I will get some for my mom as well, because I might see her soon. The two walked into the shop to find a man in a suit assaulting a silver-haired woman about two years older than Izuku, which Izuku quickly came up behind the man to knock him out. Another agent came out to shoot Izuku but Dabai roasted him with his flames which the woman said, Thank you, strangers. Izuku smiled, no problem. Dabai smiled, we saw you were in trouble, so we came to help out. Now I'm going to cremate these guys. The woman shock, no, wouldn't you go to prison for doing that? Izuku and Dabai laughed which Izuku said, We are villains, we are destined for prison as soon as we are found. The woman said, I thought villains just go around killing, taking things, and causing havoc. Dabai said, Those are monsters which heroes and villains can be monsters like that. But me and Izuku have standards. I don't kill innocents and I like to go after fake heroes or the heroes that are monsters. Izuku said, I cause havoc, but I don't kill in general and I want to prove to the world that a quirkless nobody like me can beat the quirk, that my kind are not a useless waste of space and time. The woman was in awe which she said, I'm Maria, I'm new to this place. Izuku said, I'm Izuku Midoriya also known as the Anarchist. Dabai said, I'm Dabai, just Dabai. Dabai took the two guys out back to cremate the two suited men, which Izuku asked, why were those two attacking you and your shop? Maria said, I don't know if I could tell you that. Izuku said, I'm a man of my word, I won't tell a soul about this. Then an older woman with white hair about Dabai's age came in the view which she said, we can trust them, Maria, we will tell you, but we want to wait for your friend to come back in and ask for your help fixing something. Izuku nodded which Dabai came back in to see the older woman with white hair which he said, Hello there, miss. The older woman replied, Alina. 
Then the two were taken to the back to a room which Maria closed the door behind them which the lights turned on to reveal a broken ship. Izuku asked, Dabai are you seeing a spaceship of some sort? Dabai said, yeah. Izuku asked, what did we take before we headed out today? Dabai said, we had coffee and stolen donuts, you stole from the police. Alina said, you do not have any drugs in your system. You are seeing our ship that we have crashed here with. The two looked at them which they revealed their real forms which the two were scary but equally interested in. They turned back into their human forms which Maria smiled. I bet you two have some questions. Izuku asked, can you start from the beginning? The two told their story that they came to Earth to learn about the quirk evolution because they were developing it as well. They wanted to know if having quirks were okay to live with, which so far, their results are showing that quirks are bad for society, but they were shot down by the Japanese government to be captured. Dabai asked, what are you going to do with your quirked people when you come back with these results? Alina said, we will sadly sterilize our quirk society which will hopefully stop the quirks. Izuku said, what did you two see to prove if quirks are bad for society? Maria said, we looked for crime increases, destruction increase, and civil rights which we saw a lot of crime and property increases but the civil right were okay we guess. Alina said, you're the anarchist which you are one of this country's most wanted villains because you are against the government and you are popular with the quirkless because you are quirkless. Izuku smirked, you see we have had quirks for so long the world looked at my kind as a waste of life in general, which when I was younger, I was bullied a lot and the quirkless population committing suicide was high. The two aliens looked at Izuku in sadness. Izuku continued, I wanted a quirk when I was younger but then one day I fought back against my bullies. I lost that fight but it sparked something within me. I started going to underground fight rings to improve myself, which I got strong and learned different fighting styles. When my hero told me I couldn't be a hero, I didn't commit suicide instead I looked at the government to find they were the ones who caused the oppression against my kind. The aliens were taken back by this, Izuku continued, when quirks came to the world, governments oppress the quirks which when it became a norm, the quirks oppress what's left of the quirkless as revenge, but I have no proof of this. I believe governments of any kind are wrong because they oppress people no matter what. Alina asked, you believe in no government, what would happen if there is no government? Izuku smirked, people will live by their own moral code, they will choose what is right and wrong. They will eventually live in peace by their own shared moral codes. Maria asked, what about you Dabai? What do you think of quirks? Dabai told his story which he answered the question. I believe that there will always be people who will strive for power which they will do anything for. But I believe that what the person who has a quirk can decide how they will help society with it, even if they are labeled as a villain. Alina looked at Maria to say, I think we might allow quirks, but it will take time to fully accept them like your society has. We will work to make a government to treat those with quirks and quirkless can treat each other as equal. Izuku and Dabai nodded which Izuku asked, I will bring my grunts to come to get it fixed. Izuku picked up the phone to call Kirajiri to warp a few of Izuku's grunt to fix the spaceship. Izuku told his grunts, Okay guys, we need this thing fixed. No questions, just look at the blueprints for each part, and get working. The grunts shrugged as they got to work which Dabai and Izuku took the two aliens around the city to show them the beauty of Japan because the aliens never actually took the time to look at Japan. Izuku took Maria around the beach while Dabai took Alina around Tokyo. Izuku and Maria ran around beach enjoying the sun which Izuku took a surfboard to show her his tricks. Izuku was absolutely showing off his surfing trick which Maria was amazed with. Then she showed her a cat cafe with all the cats and whatnot. The two then came across a racer head which he said, Anarchists stay away from the girl. Izuku shouted, I'm not raping her. You know I beat up rapists at night. Are you jealous I get more women than you? The racer head charged at Izuku which he ran up to throw some sand in his eyes, which Izuku said, pocket sand. Then as a racer head rubbed his eyes, Izuku tased him and took Maria's hand to then run away. When they got a safe distance Izuku said, I'm sorry about that. Maria giggled, it's okay, you're a villain and that is an occupation hazard. Izuku looked at her, I know right. Then Izuku got a phone call from Dabai which Dabai said, I need your help Izuku, we are on our way to you. The suits are coming. Izuku hung up to say, I'm going to bring a few gnomas. Maria was confused because she didn't know what a nama was, which Kirajiri warped about five gnomas which Izuku watched for Dabai and Alina. When Izuku saw the two in a car, Izuku told the gnomas to attack anyone chasing Dabai and Alina. The gnomas attacked the cars and vehicles behind Dabai and Alina which Dabai stopped the car to let Izuku and Maria in. They drove back to the shop which the ship was fully fixed which Izuku wrote down the names of the grunts to say, None of you say a word about this and you all get a raise, deal. The grunts swore on the lives that they wouldn't tell anyone about this and got warped back to the warehouses. Dabai and Alina were talking to each other for a little bit which Alina kissed Dabai then headed to the ship which Izuku was in shock which Maria said, Thank you Izuku for showing me the beach and cat cafe. Izuku chuckled then gave her a book. 
This book is for a game some people play on this world. It's a game that involves imagination and strategy. I hope your people will love it. Maria looked at the book which reads Dungeons and Dragons which he said, in the alignments page, I was inspired by the chaotic neutral alignment. I hope it will entertain your friends back on your planet. Maria giggled, I'm real sure it will. I hope we will meet each other again. They hugged then Maria got in the ship which Alina said. We would like to say thank you for helping us to full understand quirks and get us home. We will go back to our planet to convince people to let quirks exist with our people to help advance ourselves. We left you two some of our technology for you to use and whatever you want. Izuku and Dabai waved at them which they hear people coming in which Izuku yelled, We've got this, you two escape from here. Izuku and Dabai saw the tech they were talking about which Izuku got in a suit of armor marked Power Armor X1 which Izuku said, That looks fun. Izuku got in the power armor to then pick up a laser gatling gun then looked at Dabai who had some light alien armor with two alien blasters which they walked to shoot up the men in suits in the military. Izuku said, You know I don't like to kill people, but today I'm going to have to break that rule to fulfill my pleasure of our alien friends to escape. Izuku and Dabai started to flame and shoot up the enemies which they saw the ship leave, but an anti-air unit started to lock on the ship. Izuku looked at one of the grenades given to him labeled Holy Hand Grenade Izuku shrugged as he threw it at the unit. The grenade destroyed the unit and buildings surrounded, which Izuku got in front of Dabai to protect him. After the aftermath the two looked at the ship to wave at it which then the ship zoomed off into space. Izuku said, Dabai. Dabai asked, yeah. Izuku said, we are not reporting this to anybody. Dabai said, I'm not telling anybody, not even on my deathbed. Izuku said, let's getting this to my best engineers to make more for us and improve our current tech with this. Dabai nodded in agreement, which they walked away with the tech and Izuku asked, did you smash? Dabai smirked, perhaps. Izuku yelled, and you shame me for smashing girls I just met with. The two walked in Kirajiri warp portal laughing as they went into Izuku's personal warehouse. The two charged at each other which Izuku swung his baton at Mirio which went through him. Mirio used OFA at 45% to punch Izuku in the gut which Izuku whacked Mirio on the head which Mirio stumbled back. Mirio was bleeding from his head which Izuku was on the assault to swing both bat and baton at Mirio. Mirio was getting hit by both but he used his quirk to finally get his footing to attack Izuku. Mirio used 55% of OFA to punch Izuku in the face which Izuku used his arm to protect his face. Mirio's punch didn't injure Izuku at all which Izuku smirked as he flipped a switch on his wrist. Izuku's suit electrified Mirio. Mirio jumped back to observe the new suit Izuku was wearing, which he asks, So your new suit protects you from my powerful punches and makes you a human taser. Izuku smirked, You are right, but the suit doesn't protect my face which forces you to aim for my face. I did it on purpose to help me see your attacks and strategies. Mirio chuckled, If things were different, we would have made great friends. Izuku smiled, Indeed we could have, tell me, have you heard what the internet has been calling me lately? Mirio looked at him, the champion of the quirkless. Izuku scratched his head. I think I should make like a trophy or like a WWE belt with that written on it. Then the two charged at each other again. Mirio was looking for other weaknesses besides the head, while Izuku was swinging and blocking punches. Then Mirio punched the bat out of Izuku's hand which Izuku dropped the baton to get in a boxer fighting style. Mirio started punching but Izuku dodged every punch to then punch Mirio with speed. Mirio was seen as a skilled fighter by his peers but Izuku was much more skilled because Izuku has been fighting longer than Mirio has. Mirio kind of expected Izuku to be more skilled. But this was skill that can rival an actual heavyweight boxer. Mirio finally got a good hit on Izuku but he forgot Izuku's suit made him a steel electric punching bag. Izuku then found his opening which he repeatedly punched Mirio in the gut and face so fast the bystanders couldn't keep up with the speed. Izuku then uppercut Mirio which Mirio was still standing which he did 65% of OFA to punch Izuku which Izuku blocked the punch with his arms crossed. Mirio was getting pissed off by the suit that Izuku was wearing. Mirio flew back from one of Izuku's punches which Mirio was getting tired which all might appeared to save Mirio. Izuku said, there is my intended target. I have been planning this for a long time and now I am fully prepared for this. All Might asked, even this. Twenty pro heroes appeared to surround Izuku, which he chuckled, even this. Then all of a sudden, a bunch of Izuku's grunts armed with quirk erasing bullets appear behind the heroes which Izuku said, okay, here is the deal. Me and Blondie are going to fight. If you extras interfere with our fight, then you get shot up by my boys. Got that. All Might looked at the heroes to stand down, which a warp gate appeared behind Izuku. The gate revealed a big green armor with two men rolling it to Izuku, which Izuku said, Thank you, Gary. I know you do a good job with this, so I wouldn't let you or the rest of us quirkless down. Gary in shock, you know our names. Izuku grinned, of course, how else do you get your checks? Izuku got in the armor which he said, Let's see how power armor X2 does against you, All Might. Izuku got in another fighting style to fight All Might. 
which then the two charged at each other. All Might did a Detroit Smash which Izuku took it which then Izuku punched All Might with more force than All Might's Detroit Smash. All Might flew back by a lot which Izuku ran super fast to continue to beat up All Might. When All Might got up Izuku grabbed him to punch him in the face. All Might then kicked Izuku which Izuku flew back a little bit but Izuku jumped in the air to slam on All Might. All Might was trying to figure out how to beat Izuku in this armor, which thought about that Namu from the USJ which he wanted to test if the suit might have a limit on how much punishment it could take. All Might pushed Izuku off of him to punch Izuku repeatedly which Izuku started to do the same thing to make All Might reach his limit. The two were causing the earth to shake which Izuku was looking at his punches and the dials in the suit that told him how much more his suit could take. All Might was feeling weaker by the second which Izuku changed his fighting style to swipe All Might's legs to make him fall back. Izuku took advantage of All Might being in midair. Izuku then said, punching speed, IP man. Izuku then jump up to punch All Might repeatedly in the chest at extreme speed which everyone watched was shocked by the speed of the punches. All Might was in the air coughing up blood from each punch which Izuku then grabbed him to slam to the ground. As the smoke cleared, Izuku was standing over All Might in his true form which Izuku looked at the cameraman to say, Hello world, I'm Izuku Midoriya also known as the Anarchist. This is All Might's real form believe it or not. I would like to answer the world's question on what his quirk is. All Might groaned, please, don't, Izuku said. The name of his quirk is known as One for All, a quirk that the stockpiles energy and power that the user could pass to another person. Each generation it gets stronger then when the user gets it to its limit then they give it to some else which then they make it stronger. Now here is what is funny. All Might was quirkless before he was given this power. The world was in shock by what Izuku was saying. Meanwhile at the league's base in Kai's hideout, they were enjoying Izuku destroying the reputation of the number one hero. Izuku said, when I asked him if a quirkless nobody like me could be a hero could be a hero. He said no. Now All Might is here laying in defeat by a quirkless nobody. To my quirkless brothers and sisters who have been thrown aside, abused, and left for dead, this is for you. This is to show the world that we are not useless, we are not less than human, and we are not a waste of life. Izuku grabbed All Might by the suit to say, All Might, you are nothing but a traitor to the quirkless by abandoning your quirkless roots. You forgot about what it was like to be powerless like us. You will be seen as the traitor of the quirkless and the biggest liar in the world. Izuku threw him to the side like he was a trash bag, which Izuku said, Also for my fellow quirkless, if your heroes, teacher, mentors, and parents tell you that you can't be a hero, villain, or anything in life, I'm here to tell you that you can be whatever you want as long as you work hard and never give up. Izuku then walked to the portal which Mirio got up to say, I will not give up so easily, Izuku. Izuku got out of his armor to take off his suit which he was in nothing but a t-shirt and shorts. Izuku said, I will defeat you with nothing but my raw strength. I have broken my bones, ripped my muscles, and been beaten until I lost consciousness. I became strong because I started out in this world weak and I had to become strong. Mirio said, I share a similar story. We started off in this world as laughing stocks, but we worked hard to get where we are at. Izuku got in a fighting stance to then think about the words from a wise man he trained with one time. To gain true strength, you must let go of your hatred. Izuku thought to himself, then took a deep breath then he looked at Mirio, whose fist was almost an inch from his face. Izuku ducked under the fist to punch Mirio in the gut five times. Mirio flew over to feel pain. Izuku turned to him which Mirio covering his gut, what was that? Izuku smiled, this is what happens when I let go of my hatred, now I will beat you without a quirk. Mirio looked at Izuku to not see hatred or his nonsense in his eyes, but they were perfectly clear and empty which terrified Mirio. Mirio charged at Izuku, which Izuku dodged his punches and waited for Mirio to catch his breath. Izuku dodged each punch until he saw his chance which he need Mirio in the face which Izuku started punching Mirio repeatedly as he was falling backwards to the ground. When Mirio landed on the ground, Izuku stopped which Mirio started spazzing out of his control for a little bit. Izuku in concern checked his pulse and everything to say, You're fine, I didn't injure you bad enough to force you to retire. You will just be in a lot of pain as soon as you wake up. The heroes, who still had guns pointed at them, and Izuku's grunts were in shock which Izuku said, Time to head back for a party, guys. You are all getting a raise. The grunts cheered which Izuku, his power armor, and his grunts were warped back to his warehouses to party hard. The heroes ran to All Might and Mirio to get them to a hospital because they were seriously injured. The warehouses, Izuku and everyone was repartying which Izuku got on the stage to say, Today we have won, thanks for efforts we won't be here. So, everyone is getting is getting a pay raise. Several shipping containers behind Izuku opened up which Izuku grabbed a few fat stacks to throw them while saying, You're getting pay raise. You're getting a pay raise. You're getting a pay raise. Everyone here is getting a motherfing pay raise. Izuku heard Kai say, Izuku language, Iri is here. Izuku turned around to say, I'm sorry, Kai. I'm sorry, Iri. 
Izuku saw Sensei with the League, the rest of Kai's best men. His mom, Gon, and his girlfriends which Izuku said, I was wondering if you all were coming. Sensei chuckled, looks like someone is happy today. Izuku said, I believe happy is an understatement but thank you, Sensei. Tamura asked, where did you get that power armor because Dabai said you two just found it in the middle of nowhere. Izuku said, we did find it in the middle of nowhere. There was an abandoned gas station and there it was which I said, looks neat, I'm taking this. Izuku and Dabai were never tell the truth of how they got it, which no one would believe them anyways. Yuri and Gon gone up to him to say how cool his fighting styles were and asked many questions about it. Izuku just laughed to say, when you two get older I will teach you about boxing. Wing Chun, and other martial arts fighting styles. Sounds good. The two nodded which he said, Okay, you two on got to get ice for my hands. Dabai brought a bag of ice and a bowl to put them which Izuku took off his gloves to reveal his bloody and almost broken knuckles. Everyone looked at his knuckles and thought how he was keeping a smile on his face, which Izuku laughed, If I haven't trained myself so hard, I would be in pain and not be throwing this party. Then Izuku's men came up with a something covered in a blanket which Gary said. We heard your idea of making a WWE-like belt with the words the champion of the quirkless which this is a gift from all of us. For giving us jobs, to help us find purpose, and to show us we are something in this world. Izuku said, you guys, thank you for the belt. Izuku got the belt on the say, I will wear this around proudly. Izuku got back to his chair to continue to ice his hands which he thought, I wonder how Mirio is doing. The hospital. Mirio woke up in extreme pain which he looked to Sir Nighteye which he said, Oh thank God, you're still alive. Mirio looked, How is all might? Sir said, He is going through extreme surgery to fix his broken ribs and internal bleeding. But you had some broken ribs, head trauma, heartbeats skipping for a while which are now gone and had some internal bleeding as well. You two were lucky that he wasn't a murderer because he could have killed you both. Mirio asked, When do I get out? Sir said, You will be here for a week, but not on hero duty for three weeks after you get out. Mirio sighed, that is a while until I get back out there. I thought he was quirkless, but he moved so fast and his punches were so powerful. Aizawa said, he is quirkless. The two looked at him which sir said, what did he do to Mirio? It is something I have never seen before. Aizawa said, he used an ancient Chinese martial arts style called Wing Chun, which no one has practiced since the rise of quirks. Sir asked, he is a master in ancient quirkless fighting styles, how do you know about this? Aizawa pull out an old DVD from before Quirks came to the world which revealed a movie titled IP Man which after they watched it, they saw Izuku use the same moves as the main character, IP Man. Mirio asked, he had to learn this from someone, where did he learn the technique? Aizawa said, there was a rumor for a long time that there is a man in the underworld knows about the fight style, but I never believe in them. But seeing Mr. Midoriya, I'm going to find the person who taught him. Sir asked, how are you going to find him? Aizawa said, well there is the long way of looking in underground fighting ring or the short way. Mirio asked. What is the short way? Aizawa sighed. We find Mr. Midoriya and we get him to talk about it. The two looked at him and already hated the short way which they weren't going to find Izuku because he was on a high from beating the sit out of All Might and exposing his secret on TV. Izuku did the one thing that they worked so hard to prevent and just told everyone like it was no big secret. Which they decided to take the long way but if Izuku spills the beans then they will take the short way. Izuku's party. Everyone was having a great time which Sensei said. I haven't seen Wing Chun as about two centuries and seeing you do it amazes me. Tell me, where did you learn it from? Tamura said, yeah, let us I want to know. Kai said, I agree as well. Everyone wanted to know which Izuku said. It was on one of my adventures with Dabai before I worked for you, Kai and Sensei. Back when I was living my sixth month in the underworld, which I was still learning the ups and downs fully. Izuku was practicing on a punching bag with his boxing coach that he has met a month ago. Izuku calls him coach which coach has been teaching him boxing to help Izuku in the rings. Izuku was a quick learner with the fighting style which he was getting stronger and faster which coach asks, why do you come to this place? Izuku asked, what do you mean? Coach was a Chinese man in his early 50 seconds with a white hair and old blue eyes. He was still well built despite his age. Coach asks, why do you, a 13 year old teen, come to these underground fighting rings? Izuku smiles, I want to become stronger. Coach asks, you can go to a gym or take lessons from a dojo, but why here? Izuku said, there are things you can only learn for places like this. I want to become stronger to prove the world wrong. Coach asks, what is the world wrong about? Izuku's face was a satin, that my kind is weak, useless, and a waste. I want to prove that we aren't weak, or not a waste. And we have every right to have a happy life like everyone else. Dabai came in to say, Hey Izuku. Izuku said, Hey Dabai. Coach smiled, You know Izuku, I have a cousin who is looking for someone like you. 
Izuku asks, what would he want with a person like me? Coach chuckled. He wants a student to teach his fighting style to before he dies. Will you accept? Izuku grinned. Of course, coach. Coach said, he lives at Mount Fuji which I hope your mom doesn't mind you leaving for two weeks. Izuku said, I have an idea on how to get the okay. Next day, Izuku came with a few bags which his mom has always been a little overprotective and overprepared him on trips. Izuku said, okay let's get going. Izuku, coach, and Dabai were now on a trip to the mountain which Dabai came because he had nothing better to do and he wanted to check the mountain out. Izuku met with the cousin which Izuku would refer to him as Sensei Chang. Sensei Chang in just one hour gave Izuku the name Gurren Monkey meaning Green Monkey which Izuku did act like a monkey with his jokes. Sensei Chang believed his cousin did rub off on Izuku but Izuku was relaxed and focused to his liking. Wing Chun required a certain level of a relaxed body and focus, which Sensei Chang did like Izuku because of his willingness to learn, his reasons for learning to get stronger, and Izuku was a good kid. Dabai was taking pictures of the mountain to one day show his mom and watch as Izuku was getting better. After the first week, Izuku went from a wooden training dummy to a rock one which Izuku could feel himself getting stronger. Izuku learned not only the fighting style from Sensei Chang but also about nature, philosophy, and inner peace. Izuku was very interested in the inner peace subject which Sensei Chang said. The only way for you to fully reach true strength and inner peace is to let go of your anger. I sense a lot of anger from you against people, which when you do, you will find inner peace. Izuku said, I will find a way to let my anger go one day Sensei Chang, but right now, I will keep it for a little bit. Sensei Chang bonked Izuku's head with his cane to say, You must let it go to find inner peace, Gurren Monkey. Izuku said, I will but I don't feel ready to find inner peace yet. I got things I want to do before then. Sensei Chang signed, You're right. You are still young and full of life, but I must ask you something, Gurren Monkey. Izuku looked at him, Yes, Sensei Chang. Sensei Chang asked, Will you use this to kill? Izuku quickly to say, No way. I don't want to kill anyone. Sensei Chang asked, Even if they deserved it, even if they are pure evil. Izuku said, I will never use this to kill anyone. I believe that killing isn't the last opinion for anyone. Sensei Chang smiled. I truly have someone here who I can teach my final lesson to. Izuku leaned closer for Sensei Chang to reveal the last lesson to him, which Sensei Chang said, The secret to everything is not harmony, inner peace, or emptiness. It is becoming one with your mind, soul, body, and universe. Izuku leaned back to say, Well that is definitely something that I have to think about for a long time. Sensei Chang and Izuku laughed for a while until Sensei Chang vanished into thin air leaving his clothes which Izuku in shock. Coach and Dabai went up to check on the two which Coach asked, where is Chang? Izuku said, I don't know how he did it, but he got taken away by Thano's snap. Coach said, oh, he does that with people because of his warping quirk. Izuku looked at Coach, what? Sensei Chang appeared behind Coach and Dabai to say, got a beach. Everyone laughed their asses off from this which concluded the two week long training. Present. Dabai said, oh look, Coach is here. Coach say, hey Gurren Monkey. Izuku said, hey now, Sensei Chang is the only person who can call me that. Coach said, well you did put on a good show out there today. Everyone looked at Coach, which Miss Midoriya asked, wait, that field trip to Mount Fuji wasn't a school trip. Izuku with wide eyes, oops, I forgot about that part. Everyone had a good laugh which Sensei asked, since you beat All Might, what are you going to do now? Izuku chuckled, same thing as I've always been doing, going around and causing trouble wherever I go. They continued to party and Izuku was with his girls, which he still refused to let Kai, Sensei, or Ari to heal him because he believes that this injury wasn't enough for them to waste their energy on. Which Izuku will think about his pranks on Yue that will screw with the teachers, students, and most importantly Nezu. Two days later at Yue, Izuku stood outside the gates of Yue and thought to himself, first stop Aizawa's office. Izuku walked through the gates with a device that jammed any electronic device 20 feet near him. The alarms didn't activate which Izuku laughed his ass off. Izuku went to Aizawa in his office sleeping in his sleeping bag, which Izuku pulled out a permeant maker to draw whiskers on his face and made his nose completely black. Izuku then drew a penis on his forehead for go measure because he wanted to see how long before someone will tell him about his face. Izuku then looked at Midnight looking a little bored in her art class which she was about to start class which Izuku made the biggest grin in his life. Midnight started her class which this class was filled with girls and no boys which she was bored by. She got up to say, today class we are going to. Izuku came through the door wearing nothing but towel covering his nine inches of tricks to say, have no fear. Why? Because your nude model is here. The students were in shock which Midnight smiled very big and said, you heard the man, this is our nude model and we are going to draw him. One of the students asked, isn't this illegal? Izuku said, here is every reason why this is legal. The age of consent is 13, I'm giving consent, and this is art. Midnight asked, can you get on the stand and pose for us? Izuku got on the stand then posed, which Izuku said, after this midnight, 
we should pose together like slave and master which I will be okay with a dog collar. As soon as Izuku said that Vlad King was at the door to give Midnight something, but he was too traumatized to go in the room and he walked away and said, this is a bad dream. Nezu was walking down the hall when he saw Vlad walking away from Midnight's classroom which Nezu went to check what Midnight was doing. Nezu walked in to see Izuku posing wearing nothing but a towel while Midnight and her students started drawing him. Nezu in shock, Mr. Midoriya, how did you get in? Izuku smirked, through the front door, how else? Nezu looked at Midnight, why are you not capturing him? Midnight said, come on, he isn't doing anything illegal and he came in to help my class with our assignment. Nezu looked at Izuku's tattoos which on his right arm had the words power and havoc with a joker card. The left arm had heart on it, a stack of $100 bills, and the words order. On his chest it had the words civis citidiasis et turbulentus which Nezu knew meant anarchist in Latin, and on his back had a green monkey with red flaming eyes. Izuku chuckled, like my tattoos, Nezu? Nezu looked at him, you indeed have interesting taste, Mr. Midoriya. Izuku said, please stop with Mr. Midoriya. That was my deadbeat dad, call me Izuku. Nezu asked, okay Izuku, why are you here? Izuku smiled, I'm here to cause some havoc, but not enough to destroy anything but enough to F with people. Nezu said, I'm giving you five minutes to run. Midnight took some pictures for her class to finish the assignment with and Izuku said, Okay, let me just give Aizawa's class some notes to help them improve because I am the best quirk analyst in the underworld. Nezu knew Izuku was pushing him to letting him stay a little bit longer which side? Fine. Ten minutes then we are calling the police and our teachers will arrest you. Izuku jumped up in the air in joy which when Nezu left his towel came off which everyone in the room had nosebleeds which Izuku said, Well time for my next prank. Izuku left the classroom naked which the students in the hallway was either scarred for life or the girls had nosebleeds from Izuku's nine inches of tricks. Izuku just smiled as he passed by everyone to grab his suit and got it back on. Then he went to classroom 1A. He opened the door to see Aizawa still had what Izuku drew on him in his face. Aizawa was pissed off beyond belief to see him which Izuku dropped off his quirk analysis off which he looked at Bakugo to say, Hello Bakugo. Bakugo charge at him which Aizawa stopped him because Izuku can kill Bakugo if he wanted to, which as Izuku left he heard Aizawa asked, where did you learn Wing Chun? Izuku looked at him, I don't know Mr. Whiskers, I just happened to wake up and I know how to do it. Izuku looked at Power Loader's class and smiled. He came in the class to say, okay class who wanted to look at my suit that makes me take All Might's strongest punch up to five times. Everyone stopped what they were doing to look at Izuku's suit, but he wasn't going to take it off. Power Loader couldn't tell if this was a dream or was this a prank Nezu was pulling. Izuku then said, Okay, I have two minutes left before the police arrive to arrest me. I got one thing I know I'm going to do. Two minutes passed which the teachers were looking for Izuku which they looked around to hear a car start. They looked outside to find Izuku driving away in Aizawa's car while the rest of their cars had their tires taken off and slashed. Izuku drove off to yelled, Have a nice motherfing day. Aizawa thought to himself, I can't believe he just stole my car. The teachers were pissed that he just made them buy four new tires for their cars, which later that night Aizawa came home and right when he closed his door to his apartment, his car came out of a warp portal to land on his couch and coffee table. Aizawa looked at his car to read the note on it reading. That was for thinking I had a quirk at the USJ and it's out of gas just letting you know. Izuku was on the dinner table doing his bills and accounting until the news came on, which talked about how he walked in with ease and what he did. And Ko asked, Izuku, why did you do that to those teachers' cars? Izuku said, because I thought it would be funny. Melissa and Kayoka came in to look at Izuku which Izuku felt like he was in danger. He looked up to ask, how was your day? Melissa said, I don't know, how was your day? Izuku shivered, it was fun, how about you Kayoka? Kayoka looked at Izuku, I don't know. Is it a little hot here for your clothes? Izuku now knew that they were pissed about him being a nude model for Midnight's art class, which he quickly texted Kirajiri, Help me. Help me. Help me. Please. Izuku said, I can explain. Izuku looked behind him to smile. Well speaking of bad timing, I got business to take care of. Gon, can you finish my bills for me? Gon came over to do the bills which Izuku quickly jumped portal which he said, Thank you Kirajiri, I own you one. Kirajiri nodded which Izuku got on the bar stool to say, I would like a screwdriver and a godfather to clear my mind. Kirajiri said, You are 15, you shouldn't be drinking. Izuku said, I'm a villain that beat up All Might and his successor, I should have the right to a drink. I'll pay you double if it makes you happy. Kirajiri asked, What will your mother think? Izuku said, If I don't get caught, then there is no problem. Tamura came in to say, Come on Kirajiri, let him have a drink. Hiroari signed to start making Izuku's drinks which Izuku said, Thank you Tamura. Izuku looked at Tamura who was wearing a business suit like Sensei except he still has the hands on his face and shoulders, which Izuku asked, Man Tamura, you have started to get great taste in clothing. 
Tamura said. Yeah, I saw how Sensei wore suits all the time in his fights which I thought maybe I should start dressing up like him to gain more respect. Izuku said. Well it's working because Kirajiri wasn't going to get me a drink until you came. Tamura chuckled which Izuku got both of his drinks which Tamura got his drinks which the two were getting a little tipsy after a few more drinks. Izuku may be a little drunk but he can still detect that Toga was going to jump him. Izuku grabbed her arm from stabbing him. He turned around to throw her a few feet away which he asked, Toga burp why do you keep trying? Toga giggled. I want your blood. I saw your blood at the party which is the first time I saw you bleed. I want to see more of your blood. Toga got up to charge at him again which Izuku grabbed her knife from her hand and broke the blade from the handle. Izuku threw the knife to the side which Toga pulled out another knife which Izuku still hasn't moved from his seat. Toga got jumped on him which Izuku kicked her off to jump on her to disarm her to say, Sorry, better luck next time. Izuku walked out the door to walk around the city at night which he was a little drunk. But he was going to have some fun. He walked until he found Dabai, twice, compress, and spinner in spinner's van which Izuku said, Hey guys. The four looked at him which spinner was hiding something which Dabai said, Don't scare us like that. Izuku chuckled, sorry guys, what you guys up to? Dabai, compress, and spinner said, nothing. Twice said, we are getting high as f. The three looked at twice which Izuku said, pass the weed. Which they shrugged which the group of five were in spinner's van getting high as f. Which spinner giggled, guys, who knew what time it was when the first clock was made? Dabai chuckled, is the s or c silent in scent? Compress grinned, do you think sand is called sand because it's between land and sea? Twice asked, if money is the root of all evil, then why do churches ask for it? Izuku chuckled, why do our noses run and our feet smell? The guys looked at each other which Izuku said, we are too woke for this world. Dabai said, yeah man, what if this was a fanfic about an anime? Which the author of this world just made this so other people can enjoy this world like he is. Spinner said, bro, I'm tripping balls right now, I can see the answers to the universe. Twice asked, what are the answers? Spinner stared into space, 42, just 42. Compress said, I'm starting to get the answer to end rule happiness. Now it's gone. The five were super baked until someone banged on the window which Izuku yelled, scatter. The person who banged on the window was Mustard which the guys jumped out of the van and scattered in different directions. Mustard was knocked down by twice which Spinner tripped a few times while running away. Dabai was running in zigzags. Compress was climbing over fences while yelling, I'm not going back. Izuku was running down alleys which now he was drunk and high as a kite until he stopped at a pizza shop which he said, I guess it time to satisfy the munchies. Izuku walked in which he got up the register to say, I would like a pizza. The person behind the register asked, what kind of toppings? Izuku stared at the menu to say, yes. The person looked at the back to say, stoner special. He looked back at Izuku to ask, anything else? Izuku said, I would like a two liter cola. The person asked, anything else? Izuku said, I'm Good. Izuku overpaid the person to take a seat with his two-liter drink, which Izuku looked at his drink to look at the ingredients on the bottle. The pizza came to Izuku which he engulfs it and chugged his drink which he went back up to get some garlic bread. After eating the garlic bread, he went out to continue his adventure stoned and drunk. He continues down the street until he saw Midnight which she was pissed about her car. Izuku said, hey there stranger. Midnight said in her radio, little Shota has appeared, I'm going to need some. She looked at him as he walked like he was drunk and high at the same time, which she said in her radio, I don't think I need backup, but let me check. She looked at Izuku, okay, how many of Midnight's do you see? Izuku looked at her, three, wait, I just realize if two vegans get in a fight, is it still considered beef? Midnight pulled up her radio, the anarchist is drunk and stoned. Aizawa jumped down from the building to see the situation. He looked at Izuku to say, I believe it's safe to say that we can capture him with ease. Midnight said, I feel so dirty for taking advantage of this drunk and stoned Shota. It turns me on. Aizawa looked at her in disgust which Izuku giggled. Am I going to be a part of my fantasy threesome like I always dream of? Aizawa was going to get some therapy after this, because this was something he didn't want to imagine, and he was now imagining it. Aizawa came closer to grab Izuku but Izuku swung his arms around like a drunk. But something was unusual about his movements. Aizawa grabbed Izuku which Izuku grabbed him to throw him into a dumpster. Aizawa asked, wait, are you using drunken fist? Izuku giggled, perhaps. Aizawa said, but drunken fist is to pretend you're drunk, not to actually be drunk. Izuku smiled, does it truly matter? Midnight whipped Izuku's back which he yelled, harder mama. Midnight and Aizawa stopped at that moment which Izuku dropped a smoke grenade to then run away to escape them. Izuku was still running around the streets trying to escape until Kirajiri warped his ass home. Izuku ran into the door which his mom, Melissa, and Kayoka got up to check if he was okay. Izuku got up to say, I'm good. 
He sat down to try to listen to what they had to say. But his mind was focused on something else entirely which Kayoka looked at his red eyes. Kayoka asked, How high are you? The girls looked at Kayoka which Izuku said, No Kayoka, it's high, how are you? They then knew that he was stoned which Inko asked, Where did you go? Izuku smiled, I went on this alien ship, which me and the guys were abducted by these aliens that were in the middle of giving us the keys to universe until some weirdo with a gas mask knocked on our window which the aliens told us to run away. Tonight has been one crazy night. First I get a few drinks with a Tamura in a suit at the bar. Then went to smoke a plant with the boys. Then abducted by aliens with the boys. Then fought a racer head in midnight alone. Then ended up here. And Ko said, I think you should sleep. And we will talk about this tomorrow. Izuku hugged his mom to say, Okay, night night mommy. Melissa and Kayoka giggled a little bit which Izuku slapped both of their asses to say, I can't wait to see you two tomorrow in my bed. Inko was in shock that her son pulled that sit in front of her while Melissa and Kayoka were read in embarrassment from the comment. Izuku asked, Do we tell the truth if we are lying in bed? The girls started laughing their asses off from that comment, which Inko said, I know what I should do to prank Izuku. I need you two to go along with me on this one and gone, I need you too. Gone asked, What are you going to do? Inko said, I'm calling all for one. The next morning, Izuku got up with a headache which he got up to make himself some breakfast until he heard laughter in the living room. He headed on over to check it out which he saw Sensei. His mom, Melissa, gone, and Kayoka which Izuku groaned. I have two questions to ask. What happened last night and why is Sensei here? Sensei said. Well I saw that you and Tamura got drunk which you left to get high with Dabai, Compress, Spinner, and Twice. Then you ran around to fight both Eraserhead and Midnight and escaped. Izuku said. Thank you Sensei. But that is only one question. And Ko said. I have been meaning to tell you Izuku. She and Sensei held hands which she said, We have been going out for a while now and we believe we should tell you that. Izuku fainted right on the spot, which Izuku was muttering about how Sensei was going to be his stepdad, Tamura will be his stepbrother, and his mother going out with Sensei, which they went to check with him which he got up to say, Give me a minute to process this, I'm beyond confused. Izuku washed some water on his face to ask, Am I still high? He wasn't high at all which he was thinking my died and was resurrected into an alternate universe. Everyone laughed their asses off which Inko said, We are just joking with you Izuku. Izuku said, Oh, you scared me for a moment. I didn't think that you would start getting back out there. Sensei laughed, You had seen your face, it was a great prank. Izuku said, Okay I learned my lesson and I will calm it down on my pranks. That was a good prank mom. Everyone laughed until Sensei said, Actually we are serious. Izuku, gone, Melissa. And Kayoka kept laughing which Izuku said, Stop it, I already had one heart attack already. And Ko said, No, we are serious. The four stopped and looked at the two which Izuku could see how serious they were which Izuku in shock. Hold up. Izuku sat down to take a deep breath to then say, As Kane West once said, How sway? Sensei said, Well you know those four weeks we went into hiding. Izuku said, Yeah. And Ko said, You remember you would be gone for four days at a time then come back for a day off then continue. Izuku said, Yeah. Sensei asked, Do you remember when I asked where you put the file of Ragdoll? Izuku said, Oh, that long ago. And Ko said, I'm surprised you are taking this better than I expected. Izuku said, Well mom I didn't expect you to get back out there and finding someone. I kind of thought you weren't going to get in a relationship because of dad. But I'm happy that you finally found someone. Sensei ached, Even if it's me. Izuku chuckled, Sensei, I already saw you as a father figure and I have called you dad a few times. I'm glad you aren't in that dark room alone all the time and you have an actually life outside of villainy. Everyone was relaxed which Inko said. This actually went great but Izuku, calm it down on the pranks and you are grounded for getting drunk. Izuku looked at her, what? Inko said, no pranks on anybody for the next week. Izuku said, okay mom, but what am I supposed to do with my free time? Sensei said, why not look into other businesses and expand your knowledge like a normal person? Izuku sighed, yes dad. Inko said, I won't go that far. Sensei said, I'm still trying to get used to being called dad. Izuku said, too late, I'm calling you dad. Izuku looked at his watch to say, well time to take my goddaughter to the park, I will see you two later. Izuku quickly jumped into a portal to get to Eri which he was having a weird day, but he doesn't regret getting high. Izuku thought about what Sensei said while Eri was playing. He was thinking about another business to get into. Izuku then thought about the nearest location to get weed is about 10 miles away which Izuku remembered that there were 20 warehouses next to his warehouses for sale. After taking Yuri home he quickly made some calls, which he laughed as he got a new project he was working on. Izuku then called up Dabai, Spinner, Compress, and Twice to come to his warehouse at noon. When they arrived Izuku had a slideshow presentation ready for them, which Izuku said, Okay Dabai, Agachi, Atsuhiro, and Jin come have a seat. They sat down which Izuku started with, How far is the closest weed shop? 
Dabai quickly responded, 10 miles, why? Izuku said, I bought the 20 warehouses next to my warehouses and enough supplies for our shop. The slide changed reading Midoriya's Midori which Izuku said, I'm going to open our own weed shop and use those 20 warehouses as our weed farm. The four got up to cheer for this idea because it was genius and they were going to be a part of this. Izuku then showed his business strategy, growth in business over the next 10 years, and their supply in the next 3 months which Atsuhiro asked, how big are these warehouses? Izuku said, every warehouse I own is the size of a football field, imagine 20 football fields of wheat. They looked in awe which Aguchi asked, when will you start growing? Izuku said, I bought the seeds and we have started just an hour ago to make the warehouses to be able to grow it. Izuku guided the four to show that Izuku's grunts were bringing soil, gardening beds for the soil and plants to be grown in and the special lights for the plants. Jin teared up a little bit because it was going to be beautiful which when they head back to Izuku's personal warehouse which he said, Atsuhiro, since your secret identify isn't exposed unlike the rest of us, I'm going to give you money to buy a building to sell this and the license to sell this. He nodded which Izuku said, We are going to make some money and get high at the same time. Dabai asked, Wait, are we supposed to not get high on our own supply? Izuku sighed, Well do you want to go 10 miles for someone else? Dabai said, You're right, F that rule. Which went they were done and hyped about Izuku's weed operation. Izuku said, I need to find more warehouses to expand to other businesses because I completely bought out the warehouses in this place. Izuku sat down to get the finances in order and looked for more warehouses for sale, which he looked at his car collection as well. Izuku looked at his Telsa Roadster, his Firebird, and his Corvette to say, I'm going to start spending money from my Bahamas accounts because my Jamaican and my Japanese accounts is getting low. Izuku had bank accounts from all across the world which he would constantly fill but when they get to a certain point, he starts spending money to not raise any alarms. Izuku has two Japanese accounts, three in Jamaica, and five in the Bahamas which Izuku made a lot more bank than most people think. Izuku actually has stock from Mercosoft, Apple, Crytocoin, and Nikkei which add that to his firearms business, supervising quirk erasing bullets, his quirk analysis, slave valuing, bank robbing, other villain things and now weed business. It was safe to assume that he always has money on hand which his mom knows about his Japanese accounts but not the rest. Izuku looked at a Rolls Royce black badge which he said, I'm buying that. Izuku spent his money on it which he can come by to pick it up. Izuku got on his business suit and brought a few weapons for just in case. He wasn't causing any pranks on heroes. He was going to pick up a car that he bought and if a hero attacks him then it's self-defense. Izuku knew how to break and bend the rules which he called Kirajiri to warp him to the dealership for him to pick it up. When Izuku got there, he signed a few papers then drove off in his brand new car and on the way some old lady was crossing the road which he stopped but someone rear-ended him. Izuku was now pissed off he got out his insurance card and license which he got out of the car to look at who hid him. His eyes were wide that Sir Night I rear-ended which Sir looked back at him in shock which Izuku yelled, You bastard. I just bought this car like 10 minutes ago. What the F? Sir yelled, You are the bastard. You nearly killed Mirio and Yagi. If anything you deserve to get your new car rear-ended. Izuku and Sir started throwing punches at each other because no one was around to stop them. It turned out the old lady that was crossing the road was Recovery Girl which hit both their heads with her cane which they stopped to look at her. Recovery Girl said, That's enough from you too. I was enjoying my walk and then you two are ruining it. Izuku said, This cook sucker rear-ended my brand new Rolls Royce, I want to kill him. Sir said, I was on my way to get my brakes repaired in the first place, but this villain here nearly killed All Might and his successor. Izuku said, I wasn't going to kill them, I only want to ruin and break All Might for destroying my dream. What I did to him make me and him even, Mirio was nothing more than bait to get All Might to fight me. Just before they attacked each other again Recovery Girl said, Okay you two, I'm going to say this once. Mr. Midoriya go home, and I won't report you were here. Sir Knight I go home to go get some rest. Pretend this never happened. Pretend that you haven't seen each other all week, and don't go chasing after each other. If you two don't, I won't think twice about beating the sit out of both of you two. They felt recovery girl's rage which the two got in their cars and drove away like nothing happened, which Izuku got back and parked his car in the workshop to say, Before you ask, Sir Knight I rear-ended me on the way over here. His grunts felt the anger coming off Izuku which they went to work on fixing the car while Izuku planned on making a prank or attack on Sir Knight I's building. Izuku was going to avenge his car and was tired of Sir's bullshit so this plan was going to get even. Izuku then got hungry which he looked at Deadbeat to say, Go get me a pizza. Deadbeat run off to get Izuku which he heard. Out of all the things you can make it do, you make it go get you a pizza. Izuku looked over to see Kai which Izuku smiled. Hey Kai, you need me to do something. Kai said, I came to check on you. You looked a little stressed right now. You want to talk about it? Izuku told Kai about the car accident which he chuckled. Recovery girl scared you off. 
Izuku said, I'm not afraid to beat up a female hero, but I'm not hitting mothers and old ladies. I have standards. For old men if they are heroes like Gran Torino, I would make sure he stays retired. The two looked at each other which Kai asked, you want to go to the underground to fight out your anger? Izuku said, I got time, let's do this. Underground fighting ring. Izuku just took down his fifth opponent with his bare hands and he was super happy at the moment. It's been a while since he had a good underground fight. He had Kai betting for him and coach with towels and other stuff. Izuku stood over his lately opponent then yelled, Who's next? A man appeared in the ring. He had the gray hair and a lot of it which Izuku asked, You're looking a little luck, what is your name? The man said, Shinya. Izuku looked at him to say, Well Shinya, I may be tired, but I still can kick some ass. Izuku got into a fighting position which then Shinya turned into a needle to get into Izuku which Izuku somehow grabbed him. Shinya thickness his head to ask, How? Izuku chuckled, Trust me Ed shot. I've known the secrets of everyone I see interesting and their quirks. When I saw you enter the ring, I knew who you were and your quirk, which I have to say that you have a great quirk, but there is one flaw. Izuku started squeezing Shinya which Izuku said, it's easier to strangle and knock you out this way. Shinya was struggling to get out, but he was already at his thinnest and Izuku wasn't letting go which Shinya passed out. Izuku threw him to the side to yell, the heroes are coming. Everyone started running which Izuku, coach, and Kai ran out to escape the heroes and police coming in which when they were in the clear coach went home, while Kai and Izuku walked home to Kai's hideout. Izuku sat in the chair across from Kai's chair to discuss the second factory's production and what new technology Izuku is making. Kai asked, Come on between you and me, where did you get that power armor? Izuku said, All right, between you and me. Izuku leaned closer to say, Aliens. Kai looked at him, Are you high? Izuku started laughing, Of course not, we actually found it in a warehouse outside the city in the wilderness. But the warehouse belongs to the government and we burned it to the ground trying to get it. Then Izuku got a call from Dabai which Izuku said, give me a moment. Izuku picked up the phone which Dabai said, meet me at your torture warehouse. Izuku asked, you mean Sibis? Dabai said, yes, come on over. Izuku said, I'll get there when I get there. Izuku hung up to say, sorry about that, I'm going back to the warehouses to see what's going on. Kai nodded which Izuku texted Kirijiri to warp him, which Izuku walked through. Izuku said, okay Dabai. What is? Izuku saw Shoto Todoroki on the chair chained up and Dabai standing next to him. Izuku asked, what happened? Dabai said, I found walking around near here and I knocked him out. Izuku said, Dabai, that is your little brother. Dabai said, I know and I feeling bad about it. Izuku said, calm down, we can figure this out. Why not show him too and what you did to Endeavor, which hopefully he might join us. Dabai said, I think that might work. Izuku said, have a talk with your brother and do big brother stuff with him, get him to know you. He misses you, your family misses you, and I think you catch up with them. Dabai nodded and Izuku left him to talk to Shoto and hopefully get him to join. Izuku was packing up for his business trip which he and Dabai are going on. Izuku said, Okay mom and dad, me and Dabai are going to Russia for a week. So, if you need anything call me. All for one and Inko looked at him which AFO said, Okay, don't get injured. Izuku and Dabai are wearing black added as jumpsuits with white stripes and black beanie hats, which Izuku said, Let's go comrade. They texted Kirijiri to send the two to some coordinates outside Moscow, which Izuku said, We have arrived at the motherland, comrade. Dabai said, It's cool here like my soul. Izuku said, Let's find Lenin Putin, who I haven't seen yet. An old Russian military base outside Moscow. Izuku and Dabai found Lenin's hideout which they came in to find guns pointed at them. Then they heard, Hold your fire comrades. They are allies. The men lower their guns which a man in a hazmat suit, with two AK-47 seconds strapped on him, and was riding a bear came into view. Izuku and Dabai thought to themselves, I want to learn how to ride a bear. Then Izuku and Dabai noticed that there was added as hard bass playing in the background which the man said, Turn off the music. The man asked, Are you Izuku Midoriya? Izuku said, Yes I am. The man said, I am Lenin Putin, nice to finally meet you. Izuku came up to shake the Lenin's hand which Izuku said, It is nice to finally meet someone like you as well. Lenin is quirkless just like Izuku and they both believe in equality for the quirkless and mutant quirk users. They were similar in ideology, but Lenin believes that communism can solve the inequality problem. Izuku did want it to see if it would work. Even though he was against all governments he still found them interesting in a way. He liked looking at their flaws mostly, but he wanted to see Lenin's communism in practice. Lenin said, It's good that you are continuing to supply us with guns and ammo, comrade. But we heard you sell more than just those things. Izuku asked, What did you hear, comrade? Lenin said, We heard you also sell quirk erasing bullets and monsters, that is what we heard. Izuku smiled, The quirk erasing bullets, we can sell. The gnomus we can't. But we can do something about that for you if you want. Lenin smiles, You are a good man, comrade. What are you going to do next? 
Izuku smiled. I want to learn about this no arm push up I heard you can do. Also, me and Dabai want to learn how to ride bears. Lenin smiles. Today you both want to learn how to be true slavs. Once you start there is no going back. The two nodded which begins the beginning on how to become true slavs, which they had to go to Siberia. Izuku and Dabai were freezing their asses off until they got warmer clothes. But it still wasn't enough. They then went to live in one of the abandoned Gilug camps for the training. They had to do push-ups, dance, fight off bears, and get food without weapons. If they wanted to take a bath, they had to drill a hole in the lake to take a bath in the water. After four days of training they came back to the base riding bears with Ak 47 seconds strapped on them and could do push-ups without using their arms. Izuku and Dabai learned the proper Russian accent, to speak Russian, ride bears, and now they will screw around with Lenin. They went to a dance party on a moving train which Izuku said, what could possible go wrong? They partied really hard and got super drunk from the vodka while the train was just rolling down the tracks, which then they came across one of Russia's top heroes Blyatman which the three of them being stupidly drunk took the fighting stances. Blyatman came in to beat up Dabai which Izuku pulled out his gun to shoot a rubber bullet to Blyatman's teeth. Blyatman fell in pain which the three started kicking him until he passed out. Izuku noticed as they were walking around saw an old lady with an RPG on her shoulder. Izuku asked, am I seeing this old lady carrying an RPG? Lenin said, that my mom, that's her therapy RPG. They talked with her for a little bit which then they found a piano in the base which Lenin said, for your final test you will play the national anthem of the glorious Soviet Union. Izuku got on that piano to play it perfectly and Dabai did the same, which Lenin and his men clapped for them. Lenin said, you two are now true Slavs. Izuku said, what's next Dabai? Dabai said, a bet we can take over the government by the time we leave. Lenin looked at them, we have been taking to do it for years. What makes you two think you can do it by the time you head back? Everyone was drunk. Izuku smirked. This country doesn't know the power of quirk erasing bullets and gnomas. So Izuku called Kirijiri and convincing him to warp about 50 gnomas to their location, which they planned attacks on the St. Petersburg and Moscow in one go. They went to sleep to get well rested for the overthrow of the government which the two being drunk off their ass fell asleep on the chairs that they used map out the plan. The next morning, they had massive headaches as they got up to look at the plans. They created which Lenin came in drinking even more vodka said, What's up comrades? Izuku asked, What is this? Lenin looked down to say, Looks like a plan to overthrow the government and it looks solid. Let's use it. Dabai asked, I wonder who made it? Izuku said, Beats us, let's try it out. I will lead this bear riding squad and you lead this tank squad. While Lenin leads the infantry units into Moscow which we will then get the gnomas to attack every hero in the city. Lenin said, sounds like a plan, let's do these comrades. Izuku got on his bear to gather the other bear riders. Lenin got his foot soldiers and carried the flag of the Soviet Union. And Dabai got in a tank to drive to the Moscow. They were outside the city which Lenin radioed his foot soldiers in the city to get ready for the attack which then Izuku raised the USSR flag and yelled, for Mother Russia, which he and the bear squad rode to the city guns blazing and bears roaring. Dabai and Lenin followed with the rest of the army. The Nomis were released to fight the heroes which the heroes have never fought a Namu before so the Nomis were brutally kicking their asses. Izuku, Dabai, and Lenin went in the Moscow Kremlin to capture the president which they had rockets shooting down every aircraft vehicle coming in. Izuku beat the sit out of his enemies. Lenin killed them, and Dabai just cremated them until they found the vault that the president was hiding in. Lenin said, Disgusting. My great-great-grandfather Vladimir Putin would be fighting his enemies instead of hiding like a coward. Dabai then said, stand back, I'm going to melt the door. The two backed up to let Dabai use his fire to melt the door down, which when the door melted down, they saw a fat man in fear. Lenin said, yeah that is the president. Lenin put a gun to his head, and they went to the president's office to force him to hand power over to Lenin. After two days, which Izuku and Dabai will return to Japan the next day, the government was under Lenin's control. Lenin reinstalled the right government for Russia which the country celebrated the new government because the old discriminating the mutant quirks and quirkless, greedy, and didn't give people a lot of jobs. Izuku, Dabai, and Lenin got pictures taken as the founders of the new Soviet Union, which the people statues of the three. Izuku and Dabai were now wearing KGB fur caps with the Soviet Union symbol on them while wearing leather jackets, dress shirt and pants of a Russian soldier. They were given medals of honor by Lenin the new leader of Russia, and they listened to the Soviet Union anthem while the new Soviet army marched the streets. Izuku said, I don't know how we did it, but I'm somewhat proud that there is now a government that treats everyone quirk or quirkless equal. Izuku then took a drink his bottle of vodka, which Dabai said, Izuku watch this. Dabai drank his bottle then split it out and made flames his pinky to make it look like he was breathing blue flames, which Izuku was laughing his ass off. Lenin came to them to say, thanks for helping us restoring our country back to its rightful government. 
for that you will be allowed immunity when you come to visit or live here. The two shook his hand which Izuku said, Dabai, we have brought Shoto. Dabai said, he is a spy for us now. Wait until he can reveal himself as a villain like us. So for their last night, they celebrated the new Soviet Union and started drinking vodka like it was water to them. Izuku and Dabai took pictures of monuments that weren't destroyed and them riding bears around. The next day Izuku texted their location to Kirajiri which he warps them to the warehouses which they saw everyone stand there. Inko, All for One, Melissa, Kayoka, Shoto, Kai, Iri, Gon, Tamura, the rest of the Lee, and Kai's best men looked at Izuku and Dabai riding bears while they were wearing Soviet Russian general uniforms with an AK-47 in one hand and a bottle in the other. Izuku jumped off the bear to speak in Russian. We are back, comrades. Dabai and Izuku continued to speak in Russian which no one could understand them, which Inko said, when we said calm it down, he went ahead and overthrew the entire Russian government to reinstall the communist government. Izuku said, for Mother Russia, which everyone knew that they were Russian drunk which they took them to a bed to sleep it off. Izuku and Dabai quickly doing no arm push-ups which everyone lost their minds by this because it was cool. Dabai said, we have become true slabs, it was hard but worth it. Everyone agreed to get them away from alcohol for a while until they can control themselves. Then Izuku and Dabai sang the USSR anthem for a while until they fell asleep. All for one relaxed to say, I knew those two were going to cause trouble, but I didn't expect overthrowing an entire government. And Ko said, I didn't expect a lot from Izuku, but at least he was enjoying himself. The two looked at Izuku on his bed which all for one asked, he is getting ground, right? And Ko said, definitely. Izuku woke up with a massive headache but he wasn't going to complain about it. He went to his medicine cabinet for some Advil to help. He went to find his mom made him breakfast for him with Sensei, Gon, and his girlfriends there. Izuku sat down to ask, what happened? Kayoka asked, you don't remember happened? Izuku said, by day three, I was drinking vodka like it was water like a true slap. Melissa said, you overthrew the Russian government. Sensei said, and communism got reinstalled which you helped bring back the USSR. Izuku chuckled, well I guess I should stay away from alcohol for a while. Izuku engulfed his eggs really fast and chugged him glass of milk then continued, did I bring back my bear? Melissa said, you rode your bear through Kirajiri's warp gate and then showed off your no-arm push-up. And Ko said, I have some crazy things in my life but that is something I was too impressed with to kill you. Izuku asked, am I grounded again? And Ko said, yes. Izuku shrugged, fair. Izuku got a green t-shirt, blue jeans, and a black leather jacket then said, I got work today and I got a special project to oversee. Izuku got warped there with Inko asked, What is this special project? Sensei sighed. What I heard from twice is that he is building a weed farm and opening up a weed shop. Inko stared at Sensei. Hiroyoshi, I let him off on the weed once because we have all done it once. But this is just craziness. We are going to talk to him about that. Hiroyoshi said, Okay, but you should hear the name of the shop. Inko asked, What is it? Hiroyoshi said, Midori is Midori. Inko giggled a little bit. I guess I will let it go for now. Warehouses. Izuku was doing paperwork then he heard the door open which he looked up to see Shoto walk in which Izuku asked. Hello, you need anything? Shoto said, I have some questions for you that have been bothering me. Izuku said, I'm an open book. Shoto asked, Aizawa sensei or Bakugo wouldn't say why you hate Bakugo, so why do you hate Bakugo? Izuku said, he bullied and abused me ever since age 4 when I was discovered quirkless. I then one day had enough with the abuse and snapped. I got my ass kicked by him on that day. But I felt a fire in me was created so I went to the underworld to learn to fight. Shoto asked, why not go to a dojo or gym? Izuku chuckled, there are things you can only learn in the underworld like Wing Chun for example. Shoto asked, why is that fighting style important to Aizawa sensei? Izuku smiled. It's a nearly forgotten quirkless fighting style that requires the person to be a certain level of relaxed and focus. But the fighting style is lethal. It took me two weeks to learn it, but I didn't master it until my fight with Mirio and All Might because one thing. Shoto asked, what was that one thing? Izuku looked at him, to let go of my anger. When I beat the Sid of All Might, I felt even with him and so I let go of my anger. Shoto asked, when you took away Bakugo's quirk, did you feel even? Izuku said, yeah, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Shoto asked, I saw the video clips of what Taoya did to dad, which I found it satisfying. Am I a bad person for that? Izuku said, to most people yes. But to me, Dabai, and people who know your pain then no. Because he deserved it and remind me later to get two to follow your orders later today. Shoto nodded then asked, do you still wish that you could be a hero? Izuku said, if you asked me before I beat up All Might. Then yes. But now, no because I love my life the way it is. Shoto asked, what are you going to do next? Izuku said, I'm going to be working here for a while because mom is upset that me and Dabai overthrew the Russian government. But I can relax and clear my mind from all the vodka I had. 
Izuku continued the paperwork which Shoto looked at one of Izuku's cars to ask, so which one is your favorite? Izuku chuckled, I can't pick a favorite because I bought each one because I love it. Shoto chuckled and Izuku said, Shoto, I know you don't want to use your fire because of him, but he is a monster that just follows orders. I believe that you should use it because that isn't his fire. It's yours and yours alone. Shoto sat there which he said, I want to check with someone before I make that decision. Izuku smiled then said, take Dabai with you. I'm real sure needs help like you to come and see her. Shoto smiled and headed out, which Izuku looked at his Rolls Royce to say, it's time to go on a drive. Izuku then got in the car to hopefully not get rear-ended and have a good drive. Izuku got in to drive off to roam around the cities to go soul-searching. Izuku drove around to pick up some ice cream and to look at the clouds. Izuku said, this is nice, I wonder if Mirio is thinking about, I bet he is super pissed or is super pain. Then as he got up, he saw Mirio walking towards him which Izuku said, hello Mirio. Mirio said, you leave Japan for one week and you overthrow the Russian government. If I wasn't forced to be unable to do hero work for two more weeks, I would be trying to arrest you. Izuku smiled. My mom has grounded me from doing anything involving pranks to heroes because the communist revolution thing. This country is lucky my mom is the only thing preventing me from overthrowing the government. Mirio shocked. Wait, your only excuse for you to not overthrow the government is that your mom grounded you. Izuku said, yeah. Mirio started laughing like a madman which Izuku said, Stop Mirio, you're scaring the children. Mirio stopped and said, You are a funny man, Izuku. Izuku said, Sometimes I'm funny when I don't try. Mirio sat next to Izuku which Izuku asked, You want to know some things about me? Mirio said, I don't understand you, Izuku. You are against governments of all kinds, yet you fought for a communist government. You look for trouble to have fun, but when your mom grounds you, you don't against your mom. You say you don't kill but no fighting methods that can kill someone easily. You are a confusing person and I want to understand you. Izuku smiled. It all comes down to the rules of being chaotic neutral. For the communist revolution, I was fighting against the current government, which the sin is joining the government, which at the time the communist government didn't exist, so I was fighting the government. I technically bypassed that sin and empowered the rule of aiding allies of freedom. Mirio was looking at him trying to understand which Izuku continued. The rule of don't betray your word unless your life is in danger. I can't betray my word with mom because my life isn't in danger. As for fighting, my life was in danger because Bakugo's quirk could have killed me but he held back to not kill me so he could become a hero. Mirio felt the vehement on the hero part but Izuku continued. There are things in the underworld that one can only learn there. The rules of never kill innocents and not to murder unless you never intended to kill. If a hero was going to kill me or another villain was, I still don't believe killing is the last option. I have the rules in my head which the ultimate sin of actively in doing boredom or joining the forces of law and order, I would always manage to avoid it. Mirio said, That was somewhat helpful, but what are you going to now? Izuku said, Since I'm grounded you got a week of no havoc from me. But if a hero attacks me like Sir F face, then I will beat the living sit out of them. The two looked at the clouds which Izuku asked, I want to know about you, Tamaki and Nejire. I would like to hear about how you met them and how you three became the big three of UA. Mirio told him the story of the three which Izuku smiled. I love it. It truly is inspiring and heartwarming. Sir Nidai and All Might truly have found a true hero and you have really good friends that will support you no matter what. Mirio chuckled. This is the first time we talk to each other like normal people. I wish we could do this more often. Izuku said, I wish so too, but the world is against me and I'm winning. Mirio smirked, you think so? The two got up which they shook hands and left, which Izuku felt something coming. Izuku jumped to the right to dodge a wave of energy. Izuku looked to see Nanjire and Tamaki which Izuku smirked. Of course you two follow him around because you are his best friends. Nanjire said, it's the anarchist, we have to be careful Tamaki. He has many tricks sleeve and he has defeated Mirio, All Might, and many other heroes. Izuku yawned, you know I'm not supposed to fight heroes for a week right now, so I'm going to just use self-defense fighting for now. But when things get ugly for me, I will pull out much more lethal force. Then Izuku heard air cannon which Izuku blinked his eyes and the two disappeared and a lot of damage was made in front of him. Izuku turned around to see Sensei, which Izuku said, I could have taken care of them, Dad. Sensei said, you know what your mother said, and I am always watching over you. Izuku asked, even when I have it on with one or both my girlfriends. Sensei said, no, God no, that would be wrong in every way, I'm not a pedophile. Izuku sighed in relief which Izuku said, I'm going to get my car. Sensei asked, Does your mom know about your illegal driver's lissies and your cars? Izuku said, Nope. Sensei shrugged and got in the car which Izuku drove around the city. Sensei said, You are wondering why I'm here with you. Izuku said, Yeah. Sensei said, I want to spend time with you. I am a father to Tamura and I do see you like another son. 
You never had a father figure in your life until you met me, which I would like to give you things that fathers and sons do together. Izuku looked at him to ask, like what? Sensei asked, have ever played catch with anybody, done an oil change, or went hunting? Izuku looked at him, I have questions, what is catch? Oil changes are a father-son thing. Hunting, sensei in shock, you don't know what catch is? Yes, oil changes are a father-son thing and we can either hunt animals or quirks. Izuku smile. Well time to do father and son things. Izuku and sensei drove off to go do father and son bond activity. Which first Izuku actually needed an oil change on his Tesla so they did that. Then they went around the city to hunt for a bunch of quirks. Then they came to the beach. Sensei brought baseball gloves and a baseball where they played catch. They were playing catch which sensei would chuckle. You're getting pretty good Izuku. Izuku would laugh, thanks dad. Little did the two know All Might was watching from the sideline and he was horrified by the scene. He couldn't do a thing about it because if Izuku could beat him then all for one could kick his ass and he wasn't allowed to do hero work for five weeks. It was like the two were mocking him which he walked away because he couldn't do anything. And he caused this to happen. Izuku asked, did he leave? Sensei said, Definity, I saw his face and it was enjoyable. Izuku said, I agree dad, it was very enjoyable. The two laughed, which Sensei said, time to go home. Izuku said, okay dad. Izuku was working on the weed farm until Jin came over and said, Izuku, I have a friend who can help us with the farm. Izuku came over to Jin and his friend which Izuku said, Hello mister. The man said, Hide, Stephen Hyde. Izuku asked, How can you help us with this project here? Stephen said, My quirk allows me to accelerate the grow of plants nearby. Izuku looked in his eyes, How much do you want? Stephen said, I want a share in profits and some free weed. Izuku got the main guys that were investing in the project which would be Izuku, Jin, Dabai, Aguchi, and Atsuhiro. The five discussed it which Izuku said, Welcome aboard, we now each own one-sixth of this here project. Stephen said, Glad to be a part of it, now stand back. They backed up which Stephen released a gas which made the weed plants fully grown which they five were in awe, Izuku tearing up, they move in herds. They do move in herds. The guys quickly took some weed to sample it. They went to Izuku's personal warehouse to smoke it. They were in a circle which they each had their own personal blunt and began have stoner thoughts. Izuku asked, Why is Spongebob the main character when Patrick is the star? Dabai stared at Izuku. Bruh. What if the light we see at the tunnel at death is the same first light you see when you are born? Jin said, If we can't see air, then fish can't see water. Steven said, I'm telling you guys, there is a guy who invented a water-powered car. The government kidnapped him because it would kill the gas and oil industries. Aguchi asked, Do you guys think that regular dogs see police dogs and think oh sit, it's the police? Hatsuhiro asked, If you're waiting on the waiter, then aren't you the waiter? The guys leaned back which Izuku asked, How much sample have we tried? Dabai looked at the trash bag they put the sample in which he said, Not enough. Shoto came in to check on Dabai and Izuku to see them high as hell, which Dabai said, Little Shoto, come on over here. Shoto came over to ask, What are you six doing? Everyone laughed then Izuku said, sampling. Shoto looked at the trash bag with the weed which he asked, you're sampling that much. The Gucci chuckled, yeah, can you help us with this? Shoto was about to say no but said, I might as well try it. Shoto sat down to sample with them which after a while Shoto with his hands in the air. That is why I believe that Shinzo Hitoshi is Aizawa's secret love child. Izuku said, my first thought when I saw his picture was the same reaction. Dabai said, look at him. Those Hitoshis are protecting him from the truth that he is a racerhead's child. They are doing it for his safety but look at the hair and tired eyes. Deadbeat brought them 20 boxes of pizza with garlic bread which the guys were eating it like groceries. Jin said, whoever made pizza should get a Nobel Peace Prize, because pizza could end wars. The guys could agree with that statement which Aguchi said, guys, if you buy a bigger bed then you have more bedroom and less bedroom. Izuku leaned back to say, brew. You are right, Atsuhiro said. You know the voice in our head that we use to read something. We can make it whatever we want. Dabai said. My voice when I read is Morgan Freeman. Shoto said, same. Dabai and Shoto high-fived on that one which Izuku said, Keanu Reeves is mine. Atsuhiro, Aguchi, Jin, and Steven said, same. They sat around smoking the sample until they heard a knock on the door which Izuku said, hide it. They grabbed the weed and hide it which Izuku opened the door to see Sensei. Izuku asked, what's up dad? Sensei said, I'm just checking on you making sure you aren't doing anything too dangerous. Izuku smiled, oh, I'm just here doing paperwork with the guys. Izuku opened the door wide to show Dabai looking at papers like he knows what he is doing. Jin was spinning around in his chair. Aguchi was looking at the computers pretending to know what they mean. While Atsuhiro and Steven were washing Izuku's cars which Izuku said, nothing weird going on. Sensei said, I saw Shoto come in here. Izuku asked, where is Shoto? Shoto came out of a room with a blindfold on which he said, Guys, I'm blind. Dabai came over to take it off which Shoto said, I can see. 
I can see. Sensei asked, what happened to him? Izuku said, oh, we are playing a game. Sensei smelled the room and asked, I smell weed. Izuku pulled out a bar of gold from his shelf next to the door which he said, there is no smell. Sensei asked, are you trying to bribe me? Izuku looked at him in shock. No, of course not. I just wanted to give you a small gift. Sensei asked, how much did you smoke? Izuku asked, what? Sensei asked, how much weed did you smoke? Izuku said, what weed? I'm still growing. Jin said, what about Sint? Igachi dropped a book on Jin's head on purpose to shut him up which Sensei said, your mom is coming to check on you, so sober up. Izuku said, thanks dad. Sensei left which Izuku said, okay guys, let's sober up. The guy's side which Shoto asked, guys, where is Dabai? Dabai was behind him which he said, behind you. Shoto jumped in the air in fear which the guys laughed their asses off which Izuku said, believe we will start selling the stuff tomorrow, tomorrow will be the first day of Midori as Midori. They cheered for a while and waited out the effects, but Shoto was super high which Dabai was calming him down. Shoto said, Mirio has to be All Might's secret love child and Shinzo is Aizawa's secret love child. Dabai said, you told us, don't worry it's an interesting theory but for now calm down. Shoto calmed down which Inko came in to say, hey Izuku. Izuku said, hello mom. The other guys waved and greeted her which she said, I got you some food and I've come to check on you all. The guys ate up the food with ease which Inko was surprised which Izuku said, thanks mom. Izuku and the guys went to work. Or Izuku actually is doing work while everyone else was pretend they knew what they were doing. Shoto then tapping the desk with a beat which everyone started getting into it except Inko. Dabai, Shoto, Igachi, and Steven started hooked on feeling which Izuku, Atsuhiro, and Jin started singing the lyrics. Which Inko was laughing her ass off by this. Then Sensei and Tamura came in to see the event. Sensei and Tamura sat next to Inko enjoying the show. Which Izuku pulled out a trumpet to really get into it. When the song finished, Inko, Sensei, and Tamura were laughing their asses off. Izuku in surprise. Wait, how did you get here? Inko said, what do you mean? I was here for a while and brought food. Sensei said, I brought Tamura to check on you all. Steve said, the government has found us. The guys ran in different directions, but Sensei used his warping quirk to keep them in the warehouse until they stopped. Shoto ran to a room which the trash bag full of weed came out of it which Dabai said, not the weed. Dabai dived to save the weed from landing on the ground, which Inko was dying from this new level of comedy. Which Izuku said, okay guys, we need hide the weed from mom before she gets here. Inko laughed, Izuku, I have been here for a while now. Izuku said, I can hear her coming, quick put it in the car. Inko, Sensei, and Tamura was dying from the stoners putting the weed in one of Izuku's cars which Izuku said, I believe she won't find it here. Izuku looked around to say, Hey mom. Inko walked up to the car and got the trash bag of weed out of the car which Izuku shocked. How did they get in there? Inko asked, Was this bag all the way full? Izuku squinted at her, perhaps. Inko opened the bag and said, This is a 10-gallon bag and it's half full. Izuku asked, Are you sure it's half full? Inko said, Yes, I'm sure. Izuku looked at the guys to say, we are too high to be doing anything. Let's take a break and ask ourselves, if Cinderella's shoe fits perfectly then why did it fall off? The guys were thinking extremely hard, which Inko lost her sit because it was super funny, which the guys fell asleep in sleeping bags Izuku had in the warehouse. They woke up the next morning, which Izuku looked at the video cams and voice recorders to see what happened yesterday. Izuku showed the guys and agreed it was funny as hell which Shoto lost his sit when he came out to say he's blind and the song they sang which they agreed to lock the doors next time and not to get that high for a while. They left to do other stuff which Melissa came in which Izuku said, Hello, sorry I couldn't check you yesterday. I had a thing. Melissa said, Yeah we saw the video your mom recorded, it was too funny. Izuku in shock, mom recorded it. Melissa said, I laughed so hard for it and Kyoka couldn't stand up that was so funny to her. Izuku said, Yeah, I'm not getting that high. For a while, Melissa said, Well you're sober now and you are working. You haven't caused any real trouble lately so I'm giving you a gift. Izuku smiled. What is this gift? Melissa said. Just sit on your chair over there and I will show you. Izuku ran over to his desk chair which Melissa came over to give him a blowjob. Which Izuku was beyond happy. Then he heard a knock on the door which he got Melissa to get under the desk to continue which he said. Come in. Kai came in to ask. Hey Izuku, how are you doing? Izuku said. I'm great. I'm just doing paperwork right now. Kai said. Awesome. So how is my production and sales here? Izuku said, well we have increased production and sales by 30% from last week. Kai nodded, great, I hope you continue the good work. Izuku said, I will sir. Melissa started licking Izuku's balls to tease him which one of Izuku's eyebrows twitched but he kept a straight face. Kai said, when you are free, I need you to take her to the park like usual. Izuku said, sure thing. Melissa started deep-throating which Izuku was going plus ultra to keep a straight face, which Kai said, okay, see you later. 
When Kai left, Izuku then grabbed Melissa's hair to bust a nut in her mouth. Then he said, that was too close, but it was thrilling. Melissa said, that was exciting, you have a great poker face. Izuku said, one of the perks of being a villain. I now know what Bill Clinton felt like. Which Izuku felt more focused than ever and did his reports even faster than before which he thought, I need to do this more often. When Melissa left, Izuku said, today is a great day so far. The intruder alarm went off which Izuku checked the cameras to see in Genuim. Mirko, Mount Lady, and Kamui Woods were outside the warehouses which Izuku said in the radio, Level 2, Orange, I repeat Code Orange. Izuku had a plan for this and broke down his security into layers. Level 1, Yellow, which was normal operations, but guards should be on low alert. Level 2, Orange, be quiet on operations and guards should be prepared. Level 3, Red, prepare for attack and grab your weapons. Level 4, Gray, grab your weapons and start shooting. Finally, level 5, Black was to destroy everything, release Nomis, and gun down anything not friendly. Izuku watched the heroes until he got in his power armor which he continued to watch them. Izuku saw they were about to walk into their trap which Izuku said, Cobra team, unleash the sleep darts. The heroes were shot with darts which they fell to sleep quickly which the team picked them up to go to warehouse Sibis. Izuku saw as his men put on the quirk erasing cuffs and scanned their bodies for tracking devices. Izuku found took their phones to get them warped into another part of the city which he watched the heroes in the monitoring room. I saw them wake up which he said, time to give each of them the bad news. Izuku saw that slapping Dabai wasn't helping so he pulled out a bottle of water and poured it on Dabai's face. Dabai woke up which Izuku said, Dabai, you need to wrap it every time for now on. Dabai went up to Ray to say, hello Ray. Ray said, hello, Papa. Dabai smiled which Alina asked, Ray, you want to show your Papa something? Ray shyly but showed her white flame which Dabai said, there is nothing to be afraid of. Dabai showed his blue flame which the two flames danced next to each other which everyone was in awe. When the flames disappeared Dabai saw the burn marks on her hand which Dabai asked, you want to show her how to control her flames to not hurt her as much. Alina nodded which Dabai said, don't worry Ray, I will show you how to control and use your fire. Ray smiled which Izuku said, it's so pure. Dabai smiled, you look just like your grandma with the white hair and her smile. She will love you, Izuku said, remember Dabai, we can't reveal anything about aliens or that she is half alien. Dabai nodded which Maria said, we are also here because we heard about quirk erasing drugs, which we need them to keep order and protect our people from the quirk to use their quirks for evil. Izuku said, so, you also want to see the factory I oversee. The alien looked at Izuku in shock which Alina asked, Earth has factories of the stuff. Izuku said, no but actually yes. You see there are two factories in the entire world they both belong to Kai Chisaki, my friend. I oversee one of them and both factories are here in Japan. Maria said, I looked up Mr. Chisaki, also known as Overhaul, which he is the leader of the Shai Hasekai. Kai basically has a monopoly on the drug, but no one knows how it's made, which means you must know how it's made. Izuku chuckled, you have done your research, but I can't say how it's made, out here. When we get back to the warehouses then we can show you how it's made and Dabai will spend time with his daughter. The aliens nodded which Izuku texted Kirajiri to warp them to the warehouses which Izuku lead the aliens to warehouse robber Multiplica. The aliens were interested in why Izuku uses Latin to name his warehouses which they looked inside the factory to see how the stuff was made. The aliens watched each step of the process and recorded it for their world to see and asked workers at the factory about how each step works. Izuku got on the speaker to say, You all will help our friends hear how the drug is made after they leave you will forget about them. When they leave, I'm giving you all a pay raise. The workers then showed the aliens how everything works in the lab which Dabai was showing Ray how to control her fire which was hotter than Dabai's fire. Dabai revealed his real name to her and why he abandoned his name. Ray then asked, Is my quirk bad? Dabai said, It's only bad if you make it bad. Then Izuku got out his firebird to take them to Dabai's mom to show Ray his mom which her name is also Ray. Izuku watched as Dabai, his mom, and Ray were talking to each other. Miss Todoroki was happy to see her son as a dad. Izuku noticed that Ray looks almost identical to Miss Todoroki which he thought there was some cloning going on. Which when they left, they went to show her he beauty of Japan. They took her to the beach, to Tokyo Tower, and many different places to show her that her human half isn't that bad as she thinks. She was happy which then a head came which Izuku put his hand in the air to say, No Aizawa, this is Dabai's night to bond with his daughter. If you mess this up, we will make you pay for it. Aizawa said, Sorry, I don't make exceptions for parents. Izuku told Dabai to take his daughter and run which then fourth kind appeared to stop them. Izuku, Dabai, and Ray were surrounded by Aizawa, fourth kind, Midnight, present Mike, Ryukyu, and Vlad King. Izuku said, I guess you want it the hard way. Izuku threw his smoke grenades which blinded everyone but Izuku didn't need sight. 
he used his ears. Izuku came up to fourth kind to dislocate all four of his arms then roundhouse kick him in the face. Then Izuku got dab eye and rage a run which Izuku said, I'm going to be grounded longer but it will be worth it. Izuku ran up to Ryukyu to pepper spray and knock her out with ease. Then Izuku used his taser baton to take out present Mike before he used his quirk, then shot Vlad King in the D with a rubber bullet. Izuku turned to block Aizawa's kick which Aizawa jumped back to attack again. Izuku noticed that Midnight had to be somewhere preparing for a sneak attack. Izuku heard Midnight coming so he threw a punch to the gut then pepper sprayed her and jab a spot on her spine to put her to sleep. Izuku then dodged Aizawa's kick and grabbed his leg to throw him the ground face first. Izuku then tased Aizawa so he can't chase after them. Izuku ran out of the alley to find Dabai and Rei in his car which Izuku jumped in the driver's seat to haul ass out of there. Izuku said, Those heroes are becoming more unexpected when I don't focus on them. I guess All Might told them that I watch them. They are changing their schedules just to confuse me. Foolish. Rei asked, Dad, are you two the bad guys? Dabai said, No honey, we may be villains but we are not bad guys. We fight for things that society don't agree with. Like I want to end fake heroes who want to be heroes for the money and fame. Izuku here, fights for the quirkless and mutant quirk users, who are treated very poorly across the world. But society doesn't agree with us, but we fight for what we believe in to hopefully one day they change and agree with us. Ray and all, I understand it. That's so cool. Izuku said, Dabai, your daughter is too cute to live on earth. Dabai said, I know. They made it back to the warehouses which Alina said, oh, there you two are. Well, how was your trip with dad? Ray said, it was super fun and I saw Uncle Izuku beat up the heroes to get us away from the heroes, which was super cool. Izuku scratched his head which Alina said, well at least you had fun. Alina looked up to Dabai to ask, what is the warehouse labeled anarchist for? Dabai said, that is Izuku's personal warehouse. Alina said, Maria went in but still hasn't come out. Izuku opened the door to find Maria smoking a blunt which Izuku laughed, she's high right now. Alina said, is that marijuana? Dabai said, yep. Alina said, that plant is stupidly rare on our plant. Izuku smiled. I grow 20 warehouses of the stuff, do you want some? Belina said, no thank you, I'm a mother. But we would like some extra credits when we get back. Izuku and Dabai got about 5 10-gallon trash bags of weed to put in the spaceship which Alina said, Dabai, I want you to take care of Ray for a week on Earth time. I got a lot of stuff to do and she needs to understand Earth's history. Dabai nodded then Alina kissed him which Izuku helped Maria get in the spaceship which Izuku also gave them an ammo box full of quirk erasing bullet. The alien ship left Dabai, Izuku, and Rei which Izuku said, we need to expand our business to space. Dabai rocking Rei in his arms, yeah, we should share with the aliens our supply. Izuku pulled out blueprints for new technology, yeah, especially if they keep giving us their technology. I mean look at this a flying time traveling car, plasma pistols, a stim pack, and a machine to reverse our aging. Dabai looked over to see the flying time traveling car which he said, we need to work on that one first. Izuku said, yeah, I'm not ready to change out the laser guns yet. Let's head to the warehouses to get this stuff worked on. The two got warped back to the warehouses which Izuku got to his workshop to say, okay guys, this project time flow will be a secret project that no one here will talk about. Also, you did a great job lately and I want you all to know that. Keep it up. The grunts began working on the time machine which Izuku and Dabai couldn't wait to F around with time. Izuku asked, what should we do for our time-traveling adventure? Dabai said, okay, so we gather the most valuable things across history, hid them in a certain spot then we come back to the present and sell some of them. Izuku said, nice, I like it. They thought about what to steal which they came up with a brilliant idea. Izuku said, I know what I should do. Dabai said, same. Izuku said, you go first. Dabai said, we go to the future to see every winning lottery and write down the numbers. Izuku said, nice. Dabai asked, what's yours? Izuku looked at Rei who was asleep which Izuku said, you know All Might's mentor, Nana Shimura. Dabai said, yeah. Izuku giggled, I'm going to give her a good time. Dabai said, no you won't. Izuku said, but think about it, he fed me over with hero schedule changes and a few other things so I'm time traveling to bone his mentor in revenge. Dabai said, that's fed up man, a little too far. Izuku said, I know right, but I will think of something else just in case I change my mind. Dabai asked, what if we give the Romans laser gun technology? Izuku said, Dabai, we can't F the timeline that hard. We need to keep it stable so when we come back to a slightly different future or we can just look around in the different... Dabai said, yeah we could that. Izuku said, but for now, we don't speak of this with other people. Sensei, Tamura, Kai, no one will know about this. Dabai nodded which they were going to time travel tomorrow which they were going to bring weapons and other things for their trips. The next day, Izuku and Dabai went into the workshop to find the time machine ready and everything. Izuku asked, so, how did Shoto react to Rei? 
Dabai chuckled. He was in shock which right now, your mom is watching her with gone. Izuku said, let's go time traveling, Dabai. When they got in the car, they drove out which Izuku pulled out the manual the aliens gave then on how to operate it. Someone knocked on the glass which Izuku rolled down the window to see Inko which she asked, what are you doing? Izuku asked, would you believe me if I told you that this is a time machine? Inko laughed which Izuku laughed too, which Inko said, you're funny, Izuku. Izuku said, well I'm going to drive this around the place, don't worry I won't crash. Inko nodded which Izuku flipped a switch which the car started flying which Izuku said, hang on tight, we are going to. Izuku looked at the dial to say, dot 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 to the USA in the Wild West era. I'm going to like this. Izuku got the car to reach 88 miles per hour to then surround the car in flames which they came out of a portal see a small town in a dry plain area. Izuku looked at the dials to say, it worked. Dabai said, yeah, let's do some outlaw shit. Izuku wore his green dress shirt and blue jeans with his black leather jacket, while Dabai wore his villain outfit. Izuku and Dabai knocked out two cowboys to take their hats and boots which Dabai cremated them. Izuku said, okay, we are going to rob that bank, but we need to do it with someone famous. They looked in the bar to find someone Izuku notices, which Izuku walked over to a young man, younger than Dabai, which Izuku asked, are you Billy the Kid? Billy asked, depends who's asking. Izuku said, I'm the anarchist and this is my partner Dabai. We were thinking that you would rob a bank with us. Billy asked, you want to rob banks with me, a murder? Izuku said, you bet, no one expects the left-handed gunman. Billy smiled, I do like that name though, sure. I'll come with you too, when do we start? Izuku said, right now. Billy said, without a plan. Dabai said, no, he made the plan as soon as he saw you. The three got up to walk over to the bank. The sheriff said, stop we. Dabai cremated the sheriff which everyone in the town was in shock including Billy. Izuku pulled out his guns to shoot the bank workers which Billy made sure that no one leaves just yet. Dabai went up to the vault to melt the vault door. The three grabbed the money to then run. They gave Billy 80% because he needed it more, which Billy asked about Dabai's power, which they told him that the devil gave him the power to walk the earth to avenge the unrested souls in hell. The story worked like a charm which then Dabai and Izuku went back to the time machine which Izuku said, We have three trips left before we run out of fuel. One of these trips will be back to the present. We're to next Dabai. Dabai said, Easy, 20 years in the future of where we were at. Izuku flipped a switch to fly in the air and the car zoomed 88 miles per hour then vanished in the sky. Izuku and Dabai arrived 20 years in the future from when they drove the time machine. They looked around to see flying cars and new technology. They parked which when they got out of the car, people saw then to run away which Izuku said, yeah, we are infamous villains still. A teen ran up to them and asked, wait are you the legendary villain the anarchist and your blue flaming partner Dabai, the blue dragon? Izuku chuckled, yep, I'm the anarchist from 20 years in the past. Dabai asked, the blue dragon? The kid said, wow, I get to meet my idol from when he was younger, can you sign my notebook? I'm a huge fan because I'm quirkless. Izuku sighed it and the kid ran off which Izuku said, I still got fans. Dabai said, I going to start going by the blue dragon. Then a hero who looked like Ingenium appeared in front of them which Ingenuum said, stop right th. Ingenuum looked at them and asked, where's your robotic eye? Why do you two look younger? Izuku said, that's because we are from the past because we are time travelers. Ingenuum looked at them, no. Dabai was about to shoot his fire until Ingenuum got knocked out by a man with green hair, really muscular, and had a robotic eye. The man looked at the two which Izuku asked, why do I have a robotic eye? Old Izuku said, to answer your questions come to my office. Don't worry, my. I mean our grunts will protect the time machine. Izuku and Dabai came along with old Izuku who was in his mid-30 seconds. They followed to a building labeled Anarchy Corp which Izuku said, perfection. Old Izuku said, exactly. Now I called Dabai to come over to help answer questions you have about the future. They went to the top floor which has paintings of Izuku with the League. Izuku with the Yakuza, Izuku doing crazy things. Then Izuku stopped at a painting of him with Melissa, Kayoka, other women and their kids. Old Izuku said, come on, don't let the painting distract you. Izuku and Dabai sat in the office room with old Izuku and old Dabai which Izuku asked, when did I stop pulling out and who are the other women? Dabai and old Dabai laughed. Old Izuku said, age 16, your birthday. Izuku said, that is two weeks in my current spot in the timeline, so in two weeks I stopped pulling out. Old Izuku said, yep, but it's the greatest thing we did in our life. Trust me, Izuku said, if I continue to be a man of my word, then I will believe you. Old Izuku said, well you know Melissa and Kayoka, as for the other women. Old Izuku poured some alcohol to Izuku which he said, Toga, a girl named Mei Hatsum, and a girl named Ryaiko Hinagi which combined we have 10 kids. Izuku chugged the shot and asked, What about my robotic eye? Old Izuku said, Bakego got lucky one time and stabbed my eye, which in turn in that same fight, I grabbed one of my grunts gun with live ammo, 
I shot his testicles off. Izuku thought for a moment then said, Yeah, that sound even. Dabai said, What the hell? Old Dabai said, Trust me on this one. You two do crazier shit in future and past. As for you, young me, our child is a badass who helps establishes the space trade. Dabai asked, The space trade? Old Izuku said, Alina's planet gives technology and other stuff in exchange for weed and other stuff, but it only works for Anarchy Core. Izuku and Dabai got a glasses to say, We can feel good with that. Then old Izuku asked, Have you two been to Nana yet? Izuku said, No. Old Dabai and old Izuku started laughing their asses off which Izuku and Dabai were scared. Old Izuku said, You are Tamura's grandpa. Izuku said, Hold up. What? Old Izuku said, Not you. Dabai. Dabai said, What? The. Actual. F. Izuku leaned back in his chair to say, Thank God. Dabai said, Why do I have to do it? Old Dabai said, Dude, if you don't then everything gets destroyed. We won't have all of this. And she is real quality like 10 out of 10. Smash again. Izuku said, Okay. We time travel to get Dabai to go raw on Nana to keep everything in order. Old Izuku said, Yep. Dabai said, How did it happen? Old Dabai said, We got drunk. We found Nana drunk. I flirt with Nana, and I bang Nana. It's that simple and then we bang again in the morning. Dabai felt like the fate of the universe and Tamura's existence was all on him. He thought to himself, Should I go through with this? Old Dabai said, Also, here is the numbers of every lottery after Izuku's 16th birthday. Dabai took it and said, I guess I have a duty to for full. Izuku then said, I guess my days of preventing myself from having kids is numbered. Old Izuku then said, Oh, one last thing before you head on over there. Young me, while well, Dabai is banging Nana, you have to fight the sixth one for all user. Izuku asked, Why? Old Izuku said, Because we look like a Yakuza member because we are, and he has a grudge with them. So heads up on that. Dabai asked, Why are you two telling all of this? Old Dabai said, Because it has to happen in order for things to work out like this. You two have a mission that only you two can do. Izuku asked, What happened to the time machine in the future? Old Izuku said, The government took it and we can't find it yet. Izuku said, We promise to help you find it when we continue with the time-traveling adventures. A woman in her mid-twenties with a plague mask, white hair, red eyes, and a horn on her forehead wearing dress pants and shirt with a black fur coat said, Hey Uncle Izuku, I brought the she looked at the two Izukas and Dabas which she asked, Who are these imposters? Old Izuku said, No Iri, these are our past selves back when me and Dabai time traveled. Izuku said, Iri, you grew up to be a beautiful woman, I'm so proud. Iri said, Calm down, I already have one Izuku that tells me that. Everyone laughed at the comment which then Izuku and Dabai said their goodbyes and got back to the time machine which Izuku said, We will not speak of me not pulling out that many times and me sticking my D in crazy. Dabai said, Come on, let's get this over with. I have to be Tamura's grandpa, which we are not going to say a word about it either. Izuku put the numbers in the machine to get on over to get Dabai to keep the timeline safe. They then flew and went to a time where All Might didn't exist and All for One was still in power. Izuku said, Here we are, well let's find her in the bar and you do the banging while I do the fighting. Izuku and Dabai got in the bar which they saw a young Nana which Izuku said, Go get her you lucky bastard. Dabai had no problem and went on over to her which Izuku was in the back watching from the distance. He then checked his phone to look at the news then Dabai was taken by Nana which Izuku knew this was working out well. Izuku then followed them from a distance. Then he rented a room near their room. He was about to go to it until he heard a man asked, Are you a part of the shy? Izuku turned around to see a man dark hair with a outfit Izuku though he has to be best genus ancestor which Izuku said, Nope. The man said, Liar. The man came at Izuku at high speeds which Izuku dodged because of his training and avoided being drunk like his future self was implying. The man came back at him which Izuku pulled out his taser baton to whack and tase the man in midair. The man got back up to punch Izuku which Izuku was wearing the outfit that can take All Might's strongest punch five times and All Might was the eighth user. This man was the sixth user which Izuku has beaten the eighth and the ninth so this guy wasn't going to be a problem. The man looked at him with wide eyes as Izuku started punching him at high speeds which when Izuku stopped the man jumped back. The man said, you know Wing Chun as well. Izuku asked, you know the art as well. The man got himself to a stance which Izuku said, well F. The two started fighting each other which the man is faster because of OFA which Izuku used the electric suit option to help him gain ground. The man punched his suit and felt the electricity flowing through him which he backed up. He asked, what is her quirk? Izuku chuckled, I have none, this is all training and technology. I became strong to show the world that a quirkless nobody like me can defeat the quirked and my kind shouldn't be looked down because they aren't like anyone else. The man chuckled, you're quirkless. So was I until my predecessor gave me my quirk. Izuku said, one for all. The man looked at Izuku, how do you know about it? Izuku pulled out a laser gun to shoot a vase nearby to say, I'm from the future, I'm known as the anarchist. 
The man asked, are you a villain with a name like that? Izuku said, yes, but I'm a villain that fights for good. The man was now more confused by what Izuku was saying with the two sat down for Izuku to tell him his story. The man said, the future sounds horrible. I can't believe people still treat our kind like that, especially the eighth user to say that, which even he was quirkless. Izuku said, exactly, I'm the bad guy for showing the world that my kind isn't useless, which I shouldn't be doing that, but I'm the reason the suicide rate of quirkless people dropped from 80% to 5%, like they want to prevent quirkless to stop committing suicide. But they don't care about how they feel, I care because the world has been against us since birth. The man said, you may be a villain, but you are not a bad guy. Why don't you become a hero to prove all might wrong? That would really shove it in his face. Izuku said, while breaking him and destroying his reputation is better. Being a quirkless villain allows me to get a quick army and also fighting for mutant rights as well makes it easier. I see myself as a revolutionary because I don't want this slow progress to get treated as an equal when I'm way beyond dead. I want quick results and being a villain was easier because I have more freedom. The man asked, so you are not a shy member? Izuku said, no. Izuku isn't fully lying. He was in a time where he wasn't born yet, so he isn't a part of them which he wasn't fully lying but not the truth. The man said, well, I hope you change your mind when you get back and become a hero. The world needs people like you, but as a hero that upholds the law. Izuku chuckled then the man gave Izuku a dagger which Izuku asked, are you sure that you want to give me this? The man said, I'm sure. Besides I have a better one coming in when I fight all for one. The man left which Izuku said, time to sleep. The next morning after Dabai did the deed, they ran to the time machine to head back home. They flew back to the present when they left a few hours from their launch, which they landed and Dabai said, next time, we should go screw around with Genghis Khan. Izuku said, also we need to steal a few Egyptian artifacts and see of how they built the pyramid. Dabai quickly said, Izuku, slaves built it. Izuku said, look at those massive rocks, it has to be aliens. Then they pulled out the money from their bank robbery with Billy the Kid, which Dabai said, I still can't believe Billy the Kid believed I was given a quirk from the devil. Izuku said, I know, people in the Wild West in the USA are pretty dumb. They laughed which Izuku said, I'm going to be a father of 10 children and have 5 wives, I mean I thought I had enough in my life. But getting a robotic eye and shooting Bakego's testicles off is something I can't wait for. Dabai said, I can't believe I'm Tamura's grandpa. The two laughed which they didn't realize that Sensei, Inko, Tamura, Kai, Melissa, Kaioka, Shoto, and everyone could hear their conversion. Izuku said, this time machine is too fun, and we have this money we can sell for a high price. Now let's get this baby charged up again, so we could explore the dinosaurs. Dabai said, yes. Then they heard a cough which the two turned around to see everyone which Izuku and Dabai looked back. Izuku asked, how much did you heard? Tamura said, all of it. Dabai I need to talk to you. Dabai said, sure. Dabai started to walk towards Tamura then quickly turned around to run which Izuku said, well I got nothing to say. Dabai got warped back which Tamura said, I want to know why. Dabai said, we went to the future which our older selves told us we had to. Izuku said, apparently I stopped pulling out on my 16th birthday then I get 3 more wives and then 10 kids. Dabai said, yeah, you're Tamura's great aunt. Sensei asked, when did you get the technology for this and how long did you have it for? Izuku said, we got the technology yesterday and we just tested it this morning. Kai asked, when were you going to reveal this? Izuku shrugged, when it passed a few tests. Tamura said, so never. Izuku said, no, I will show it to you all when it is fully finished. Melissa asked, how many wives and kids? Izuku said, counting you two. Five wives and I assume two kids from each wife. Inko teared up, I'm going to have so many grandkids. Izuku said, calm down it isn't happening yet. Dabai said, yeah, in two weeks he won't warp or pull out on his birthday. Izuku said, not helping Dabai. Sensei said, the next time you time travel I need you two to get something for me. Izuku said, yeah, we can do that. They left which Dabai said, I don't think me and Tamura won't look at each other the same way again. Izuku said, my mom now knows when to expect grandchildren. Dabai and Izuku went inside Izuku's personal warehouse to relax and smoke a blunt or two to clear their mind. Izuku woke up and said, I need to prepare for the future with 10 mother fing kids. Izuku looked at the calendar to then say, I have 5 days until my birthday, I still got time. Izuku quickly got up to get clothes on and got breakfast. Everyone noticed Izuku was hurrying to get stuff done for the day. Sensei asked, what are you in a rush for? Izuku said, if I'm going to have 10 kids then I'm getting their college money prepared for, so I don't have to think about it and a shit ton of other stuff to do. Izuku quickly got into Kirajiri's warp portal which Inko said, My Izuku is already being a responsible dad. I'm so proud. Sensei chuckled at the comment which he was finding this too funny. But he did agree that Izuku was starting to be more responsible. 
Hopefully it would calm him down for a while and keep him from causing too much damage. The bank. Izuku walked into his bank in downtown Tokyo. He was greeted by his banker named Daisuk. Daisuk greeted, Hello Mr. Midoriya. What brings you here today? Izuku sat down. I'm here to make 10 more accounts. Daisuk looked at him, 10 accounts. Izuku said, did I stut TT tutored? I need to open 10 brand new accounts. Daisuk said, we can't just open 10 brand new accounts without reason. Izuku glared at him, I'm going to have 10 kids soon, is that a good enough reason? Daisuk said, sounds reasonable, let's put money in them. Izuku pulled out 10 checks each with 11,149,900 yen on them. Daisuk looked at them then said, Okay, we have 10 brand new accounts. When you have the children, you can come by to give them ownership to them. Izuku said, Thanks, have a nice day. Izuku then went to his warehouses to check that he can go time traveling in 4 days, which he went to his personal warehouse to read and watch videos on how to take care of a baby. Then he remembered the 6th one for all user using Wing Chun. Then he thought to himself, Does Sensei Chang know him? Then Izuku got Kirijiri to warp him to Mount Fuji. Izuku was at the bottom of the mountain which he looked up to say, I haven't done this in a while. Izuku started parkering his way up, but he didn't realize Aizawa was visiting the mountain as well to take a break from his students and meditate. Aizawa saw Izuku parkering his way up the mountain which he decided to follow him. Izuku got to the top to find Sensei Chang meditating which Izuku said, Sensei Chang, I found inner peace. Sensei Chang opened his eyes to say, I know. Izuku asked, how? Sensei Chang said, I felt you entering the phase when you used it on the ninth user of one for all. Izuku asked, wait, you can feel it. Sensei Chang laughed, of course not, Gurren Monkey. I saw your fight on TV and saw you enter it. Izuku chuckled, you got me good, but how do you know about one for all? Sensei Chang said, you said it on live TV, and I was the fifth one for all user. Izuku with wide eyes, what? Sensei Chang said, yep, I trained the sixth one for all user that you time traveled to fight. Izuku asked, how old are you? Sensei Chang said, I'm too damn old, Gurren Monkey. Sensei Chang looked at Izuku's jacket to ask, do you have my student's dagger that I gave him? Izuku pulled it out and gave it to Sensei Chang. He looked at Izuku to say, I will teach you the way of long life like me. Izuku said, well I was wondering how you got this old. I thought Sensei cough all for one cough ended every one for all user except All Might and Mirio. Sensei Chang said, well when he ended me, it turned out I survived. I then banished myself to this mountain as a punishment for failing to stop him. I'm half Chinese and half Japanese just letting you know Gurren Monkey. Izuku nodded. Aizawa was hiding behind a rock in shock about Izuku's teacher was the fifth one for all user. Sensei Chang said, my mother was Chinese and she brought her culture with her, which I learned this from it. I learned about a way of reaching almost immortality. Izuku asked, almost immortality. Sensei Chang said, you live forever, but you can be ended, which I live here on this mountain alone so no one can end me. Izuku asked, so, where do we begin? Sensei Chang pulled out a book. You must read all of this. This is a copy of the original I made by hand. This will teach you the way. Izuku asked, where is the original? Sensei Chang said, I hid it on this mountain to keep it safe from trespassers like the man behind that rock over there. Aizawa came out from behind the rock which Izuku said, God damn it, he followed me up here didn't he? Well I going to take this home with me, if you need a new place to stay let me know. I have places you can stay at. Sensei Chang said, Okay, stay safe Gurren Monkey. Izuku bowed then went down the mountain leaving Aizawa to talk to Sensei Chang, which Izuku knows he is going to do his prank on Aizawa. Izuku went down the mountain and quickly called Kirijiri to pick him up, which Izuku got in the warp gate before Aizawa could reach him. Izuku's Personal Warehouse Izuku sat down to read the book to gain almost immortality, which he thought to himself, what the hell? One of the steps is to actually banish yourself to a secluded area like a mountain. Izuku kept reading until Toga came in which Izuku looked at her, oh no, it's future crazy wife, I'm curious of why I married her. Toga sat down next to Izuku to ask, what are you doing, Izukun? Izuku looked at her, nothing important right now. Toga asked, can I stab you? Izuku deadpanned, nope. But if you really want my blood, I guess I can give you some. Toga's eyes lit up like Christmas lights which Izuku thought, am I getting a boner from this? Izuku let Toga cut his arm and licked his blood. Izuku looked at her as she drinks it which he thought, oh, my, god, I'm getting turned on by this. Toga saw his boner and stopped to look at it, which Izuku tried to cover it which he said, you saw nothing. Toga giggled, you like this, don't you? Izuku quickly, yes, no, maybe, f. Toga said, I know you have two girlfriends, but we can keep this between us. No one will ever know about this. Izuku was having a revolution going on in his head which he went to a rug to remove it to reveal a secret room under his personal warehouse which he said, get in. Toga got in which Izuku checked his desk to grab a condom to say, okay, let's do this. Izuku closed the door and they got it on. 
Three hours later, Izuku came out of the room first to say, We are clear. They got out which Toga giggled. That was fun, and I got some of your blood. Izuku said, We don't speak a word about this, you got that. Toga giggled and nodded as she ran off. Izuku sat at his desk which he continues to read his book from Sensei Chang. He was going to learn about longer life just to piss people off, that he is quirkless and he living to be old as hell. Then he saw a guchi came in which Izuku asked, How can I help you? A guchi said, I'm here check on you. Izuku asked, What do you mean? A guchi said, Well dab I lost a bet. Izuku looked at him, What was the bet? The guchi said, Dab I betted that you wouldn't bang Toga, and you banged her. Izuku with wide eyes and Dabai came in to say, You said you don't stick your D in crazy, and you fing did it. Izuku said, Don't you two say a fing word about this. Dabai said, Thanks to you, I own this man a new car which your grunts are working. Izuku face palmed. Fine, Igachi that is your car now. Izuku told Igachi where to find it and Dabai looked at Izuku to say, Why? Dabai put his hands on Izuku's shoulders, Why? Izuku said, I have a weird fetish that I didn't even know I had until it came out. I apparently had a fetish for girls drinking my blood. Dabai stood back with wide eyes. Duh if. Izuku said. I let her drink some of my blood and I got turned on. Now don't you say a word about this. Dabai was weirded out by this and just left which Izuku went back to his desk which he hid the book to continue his report. Izuku then looked at his watch which said 1pm. Izuku sighed. The day is not even done and I'm already having the weirdest day all week. Izuku looked at his schedule to see that he didn't really have anything to do. He said. The only thing here is to drop off the analyses to stain for him to use. But that's it. I need another hobby to do. He opened Google to find stuff to do which he finds that there is feminist march happening in a few hours. Izuku was a strong believer of equal rights and equal responsibility, which he knows there are feminists that think like him, but he was pissed that the feminist march was going to be full of feminazis. Izuku hated them because they ruined feminism by saying all men are pigs, that they don't need men to keep the population going, and women were superior to men. Izuku found them to be a bunch of idiots, which he got on his villain outfit to debate with a bunch feminazi. Izuku got in his car which pulled out a picture of Ben Shapiro and put it on the dashboard to say, It's showtime, I will not fail you. Izuku arrived at the march where the head leader was on the stand giving a speech about how men cause every problem which Izuku came on the stand to grab the microphone to say, That's where you're wrong. Women also caused problems as well. The leader said, Oh, it's you. Izuku said, Now you have said once men cause wars. Well let's use a basic example. The Trojan War or even better Cleopatra causing a civil war within the Roman Empire. I can go on with this but research in Europe found that during the years of 1480, 1913 where there were kings and queens that ruled everything in their kingdom, which it is founded that queens were 27% more likely to have started wars in that time period. We have had history of women causing wars as well, so women aren't better than men in keeping the peace. Izuku took a breath to say, Now for your comment on Twitter where you put men are nothing but greedy pigs. The leader said, They are and so are you. Izuku looked at a reporter to say, You there, can you look up how much money I donate to quirkless and mutant rights movements across the world in a month? In US dollars. The reporter made a call which Izuku got the mic to her. She said, Around 9 billion dollars dollars a month. Izuku put the mic to his face, you hear that? Now how am I? A quirkless villain, greedy. As for the pig part, I'm quiet the ladies man, believe it or not. Izuku pulled out his phone to say, I'm a man of true equality. Like women get the same rights and responsibilities as us men. Which means if the draft is in effect, men and women get drafted and if men get raped by women cough cardi b cough then we can say hashtag metoo and get the same treatment as a female rape victim. The leader was getting pissed which she came up to punch him, but he dodged it. He said, what makes you think you can hurt me? I am the villain who beat up all might and I have no quirk. The leader said, shut up you racist pig. Izuku was dodging punches while saying, racist? I have a few friends who would easily prove you wrong. Which now I'm offended by you misidentifying me. Which I identify myself as a Japanese straight human male. The leader was getting pissed which Izuku did a mic drop and went back to his car to drive away from the heroes that were coming to try to capture him. Izuku looked at his Ben Shapiro picture to say, I wish I had more time to destroy them like you, but I did some serious damage for now. Izuku flipped a switch in his car to make him fly. One of the heroes who were chasing him on the ground said, What? He's flying. Izuku then flew his way back to the warehouses which he said, One day someone will fly right after me. I need to install weapons to this thing. He got the car to the shop to add his air combat weapons on it which he heads home to get some sleep because the day was just too exciting weird, and confusing for his mind to process and ask himself how he did he manage to pull this off. The league members and Izuku were now sitting down for Tamura to explain why they were all gathered. Tamura explained that the UA students were going on a camping trip which it was the perfect opportunity to kidnap some students. 
Tamura pulled out a list which he said, You guys need to recover Shoto Todoroki, kidnap Bakugo, kidnap Takoyami, kidnap Monoma, and meet at the escape point. Izuku asked, Why did do you need to kidnap Bakugo? Tamura chuckled, Well I was going to keep it a secret, but he is your early birthday present. Izuku smiled, Thank you, Tamura. They got paired up which Izuku got teamed up with Muscular, which he didn't like him one bit. Muscular was a murderous asshole that ends what is in front of him, which the only things to take him down was a bunch of gnomus, the All Might ending Namu, All Might himself, Kai, Sensei, and Izuku. All Izuku had to do was shot a quirk erasing bullet and kick his ass, which Muscular believed he can end with Izuku with ease but Tamura knows Izuku can easily defeat him. Tamura put Izuku with Muscular so Izuku can take him out if he disobeyed orders, which Izuku tells Dabai, if you see Muscular on the ground, cremate him. If somehow you see Muscular and I'm not with him, cremate him. Dabai nodded and they went through Kirajiri's warp gate to be on a cliff overseeing the camp. Izuku said, okay, you know the plan. Now split up and go do the plan. Everyone splits up to do their jobs which Izuku and Muscular were walking down their path. Muscular said, I can't wait to end some of these kids. Izuku said, just remember who we are after. Muscular then looked to see a kid on a cliff, which he walked over to him. Izuku stopped to see what the F he was doing, which Izuku said, quit your shit Muscular and get back to the plan. Muscular took off his mask and the kid was too scared to move with Izuku pulled out his quirk erasing gun to say, last chance Muscular. Muscular turned around to Izuku, or what? Izuku shot Muscular in the shoulder which he laughed, really? One bullet. Izuku smirked, come on, fight me. Muscular ran up to Izuku and was about to activate his quirk but he realized it wouldn't activate. Izuku punched Muscular in the face, which Izuku chuckled, what's wrong? Your quirk is gone or something. Muscular got up to say, what did you do? Izuku smiled, I erased it, you are now quirkless. Like me. Muscular was in shock which Izuku laughed, you know the truth is. Izuku aimed his other gun to Muscular's head. The game was rigged from the start. Izuku shot Muscular in the head and Izuku realized, oh f, that was live ammo, fing hell. The kid just stood there as Izuku just ended the man who ended his parents which he asked, why? Izuku looked at the kid which Izuku asked, what? The boy asked, why did you save me from the man who ended my parents, even though you were a villain? Izuku thought, oh shit, that is Kota Izumi the son of water hose who was ended by muscular. Well I can feel a little better about accidentally murdering muscular now. Izuku asked, you want to sit down and allow me to explain a little bit? Kota sat down on a rock and Izuku sat next to him, you see Kota. Kota asked, how do you know my name? Izuku said, kid, I do a lot of research especially on your aunt and her team because I have fought the four of them by myself a couple of times before. Kota looked at him and realized he was the anarchist, the villain who beat All Might in a fight and many other heroes including his aunt and her team. Izuku said, you see Kota, I don't like seeing people dying or ending, but tonight, I made a mistake and accidentally grabbed my live ammo instead of my rubber bullets. I wanted to prevent him from ending you and any innocent people again, but I didn't mean to end him. Kota asked, you wanted to erase his quirk and knock him out. Izuku said, yeah, that was the plan but like usual there is always that one unpredictable factor. Well I'm going to let you know that he is gone now and you no longer going to see him again. Kota asked, why are you a villain? Izuku put his hand on Kota's shoulder, you see there were two triggers in my life that got me to be a villain. The first was when I had enough of my bully's abuse which I snapped on him but lost the fight, which I went to the underworld to learn how to fight and then I got caught in some underworld activities. Kota was listening to his story to understand Izuku, which Izuku said, the second was All Might himself, believed quirkless people couldn't be heroes, as I said on TV. He was quirkless as well. I was pissed off to no end by that fact. Kota was shocked that even the All Might would tell people that, which Izuku said, but after I beat him up, I felt even. But I'm so far deep in the underworld that there is no point leaving because it would be boring life. I enjoy my life as a villain, a godfather, a boyfriend, a civil rights activist, a good friend, and a good guy for the most part. Now Kota, here's a question. Kota was scared, yes. Izuku asked, where is your aunt at? Kota said, down by the building. Izuku smiled, get on my back and I will take you back. Kota got on his back and Izuku run and parker his way to the building, which Izuku found this trail to be a little tiring. When Izuku got near the building he put Kota down to say, Okay kid, you stay safe in here. Izuku gave Kota bullet case which Izuku said, You might want to hide that. That was the bullet case from the bullet that ended Muscle Man. It's to remind you that he is gone. And he can't hurt you or anyone else again. Kota put the bullet case in his pocket and Kota ran on over to his aunt, the rest of the SUSS Ikats, Aizawa, and Vlad King. Izuku chuckled a bit, I guess I could live with a few kids of my own. Izuku ran off to find Dabai and the rest of everyone which Dabai asked Muscular's gone. Izuku said, I accidentally ended him. Dabai asked, what? Izuku said, we still have a few minutes left, I need you to cremate his body. 
Dabai and Izuku went to Muscular's body to cremate it and they left the wind to blow the ashes away. They met with everyone except Mustard and Monfish which Izuku said, Come on let's go. Jin asked, Where is Muscular? Izuku said, In subordination. Which Kirajiri's warp gate appeared which they all jumped in which Tamura asked, Did you all succeed? Atsuhiro revealed the marbles and said, Yep. Hatsuhiro let them out. Dabai took Shoto to a comfortable bed to sleep. Takoyami and Monoma were strapped on chairs. And Izuku took Bakugo to his warehouses. Izuku said, I'm going to have some fun for a while. Tamura asked, Are you going to be on the news? Izuku shrugged, Possibly. Izuku got warped to his warehouses to put Bakugo in the torture chair. Which Izuku thought to himself what I should do to him. He needs to wait for the testicles for another day and he has taken his quirk already so Izuku though. What if I broke his mind? Izuku was moving his base of operations anyways so what if displays all of his trophies to bring as many heroes coming to rescue them while he and his men gun them down with quirk erasing bullets. Then when the quirks are erased, then his men will beat them up in front of his trophies and the world. That would totally break Bakugo's mind and the world would be in shock by this. Izuku checked what else needed to be moved which it's just his stuff which his grunts were now moving the cars and documents. Izuku grinned, this is going to be epic. Izuku went home and looked at the calendar to see his birthday is tomorrow. He started dancing his way over to his bedroom which his mom was giggling because it was just too funny. He got on his bed which Melissa was there which he said, hey there. She said, someone looks excited for their birthday tomorrow. Izuku said, you bet I am. Melissa said, come on time for bed. Izuku jumped in, you don't have to tell me that twice. They kissed then Izuku decided to go in raw and not pull out like his future self said. They got in a doggy style which he said while busting a nut, let me show you what it means to go beyond. Plus ultra. Next morning, Izuku got up and Melissa said, happy birthday. Izuku said, love you too. Melissa said, it's a good thing your room is soundproof. Izuku said, yeah, imagine my mom's face when I come out of this room after the things I said to you and Kyoka in here. Izuku came out and he saw his birthday cake and everyone in his apartment which he blew them out. He received many gifts like a new watch, new suits, more gnomas for Izuku's use, a pay raise, and when he went to his warehouse he and the guys got high as F. Dabai asked, so, where is everything? Izuku hitting the bong, you see, we have moved my base of operations. I plan something big sometime soon that involves destroying this old place. The guys were curious but Izuku said, I still have my trophies here which they will be needed for the operation. The guys laid back and got high as F which Kyoka came to see them. Izuku chuckled, you want some? Kyoka was laughing her ass off by how high the guys were then she came over to get the bong. After a while, she was high. What if you crash your car on purpose? Is it still called a car accident? Jin said, okay, she is really asking the questions we need answers to. Izuku asked, if we were 13 hours ahead of the USA, why didn't we warn them about 9-11? The guchi lost his shit, bruh. Dabai asked, why do we call them apartments when they are built together? Everyone looked at Dabai which Atsuhiro said, bruh, that is an excellent question. They were now thinking incredibly hard on that question until Jin asked, what are doing? Izuku said, I don't know. Atsuhiro asked, how come our lips don't touch when we say touch but our lips touch when we say separate? Dabai said, I think we smoke too much. Higuchi looked the bong to say, yeah, we hit it too much. Someone knocked on the door which Izuku opened the door. He saw Shoto, Takoyami, and Monoma. Izuku said, right now we are a little baked at the moment. Shoto asked, can we come in to join? Izuku opened the door wider to say, that's all you needed to say. So, the three came in to get stoned as everyone else. Takoyami said, there is something I don't understand. Izuku said, take it slow and we will help you. Takoyami nodded, if money doesn't grow on trees, then why do banks have branches? Everyone stopped to think about the question which Shoto said, my eyes are now opened by that question. Monoma asked, if your parents tell you not to talk to strangers, then how do you make friends? Kayoka said, that's deep. Atsuhiro said, he is on a whole new level. Izuku then asked, why are pizza boxes square if the pizza is a circle and a slice is a triangle? Everyone leaned back which Shoto said, this is beyond science. Takoyami asked, why doesn't the league advertise that you got weed? Izuku said, it's my side project and I'm a member of the league in Yakuza. If I advertise something it would be for my side projects, the league, and, or Yakuza, which the weed shop is giving me more money. Dabai asked, how much? Izuku chuckled, about 12 million yen a week. They looked at him which Dabai asked, wait, where is my money? Izuku asked, don't you look at the account I gave you a month ago? Dabai asked, I have an account. Izuku pulled his phone out to show Dabai which he chuckled, oh shit, I have an account. Higuchi said, I can't believe we are getting this much money from a simple business. Izuku said, exactly, oh Dabai, the time machine is ready when you are ready. Dabai asked, okay, we are going on three trips and one trip to get us back. I have an idea where to go on one of them. 
Izuku said. One of the trips will be when Endeavor, All Might, Midnight, Present Mike, and Eraserhead were our age in UA. Atsuhiro said, Bruh, that sounds fun. Shoto said, When you see my dad, kick his balls for me. Dabai said, It will be done. Kayoka asked, I wonder what Midnight was like when she was our age. Everyone sat there thinking until Monoma asked, What we're thinking about again? Shoto said, The key to the universe, life, and death is 42. Izuku said, Oh yeah. They hear knocking on the door which Izuku got up to open it and Tamura was there which he asked, I came to check on you. Where are your men? Izuku said, I'm moving my base of operations because of the number of trophies I keep getting. I also wanted to get nicer buildings as well. Tamura nodded and asked, where are the new recruits and the rest of the league? Izuku said, they are here relaxing and getting high. Tamura asked, you mind if I join? Izuku smiled, not at all. Izuku was getting ready for his plan which Melissa asked if he could have a talk for a moment. Izuku sat down to ask, what do you want to talk about? Melissa said, I believe that you should stay away from the weed for a while. Izuku looks at her, it's for child, I guess I will stay away from it for a while. Melissa smiled, and the alcohol, as well as the mushrooms. Izuku in shock, you know about the shrooms. Melissa said, I checked your desk one time. Izuku said, I haven't done them in six months I swear, but I'll give them up as well. For now, Melissa giggled a bit which Izuku got up to say, yeah, I got plans and maybe buying something. Well I'll be back. They kissed which then he got warped to an office complex which he headed to a room with the words on the door reading Namaza Real Estate. Izuku smiled, this looks like fun. I can't wait to see the listing. Izuku chose to find a house about two hours away from Tokyo to keep his kids safe from destruction that he or the heroes will cause. He is looking for a beach house because he has money and he wanted to. He looked at each house until he found the perfect house. That had rooms for all his future kids, a big-ass master bedroom, a huge dining room, a marble kitchen, two guest rooms, four restrooms, a big living room, a big basement, and a garage big enough for his cars. Izuku looked at the real estate agent and asked, How much? The agent said, 5,573,950,000 yen for the whole house. If you want, we can do house payments of 500,000 yen a month. Izuku quickly said, I will pay the entire thing. If you don't mind if I use US dollars as well to pay for it. The real estate was shocked that he just said he will pay for the entire thing on the spot like it was no big deal. Izuku signed a few papers and sent the money to the agent which his jaw dropped. Izuku gave Kirijiri the house's location which Izuku brought Melissa to the house and her jaw dropped by how huge it was. Izuku chuckled, this is the greatest purchase I have ever made. Melissa's still in awe, how much did this cost? Izuku smiled, one day, I'll tell you. I paid it full which it's mine. I mean ours. Izuku had to talk with David to get his blessing and prove himself, which he was going to do it in a few hours. Which Izuku left Melissa with his mom at the new house which he checked at the new buildings at the new base of operation. The new base. Izuku checked at the buildings that were actually buildings not those warehouses that can be destroyed with ease. They can be expanded, and floors can be added if they needed to be. Izuku went to his building which his office was on the top floor and he was loving looking out the window behind his desk. He filed his reports which he looked at the time to say. Well time to talk to her dad. Izuku got dressed in a business suit not his villain suit because Izuku needed to dress to impress. Izuku got his car to drive to where David live which is really close to All Might's place and he was hoping to not to see All Might. Izuku drove over to David's place which he knocked on his door. Which David opened up the door and said, Mr. Mittery. Izuku said, Hello Mr. Shield. David asked, What are you here for? Izuku said, I want to prove that I'm worthy of your daughter and I want to hopefully get your blessing. David said, Well. You are dressed to impress, so I will give you that. I need more than that. Izuku asked, I know. That why I'm here to prove it. David let him in. Which Izuku saw all might which he asked David, Mr. Shield, did I come at a really bad time? David said, well yes but actually no. Izuku was confused as hell by what he means which Izuku sat across from all might which Izuku said, hello again, Yagi. Yagi said, hello Izuku. Izuku chuckled, you finally use my name, not young Midoriya. David said, the first thing to prove to me that you are worth is to apologize to Yagi for the leg at the USJ. Yagi in shock, but Dave, what about our fight and how he exposed my secret? Izuku looked at Yagi. I am sorry about your leg, your reputation, your quirks exposure, and for brutally kicking your successor's ass. David said, I'm beyond impressed, you went beyond what I asked. You definitely want to show how far you are willing to go. Izuku said, I love her, I want to give her happiness, and this is just the beginning. David smiled, keep this up, and I will give you my blessing. Izuku chuckled, what's next? David asked, do you have a house? Izuku showed the pictures which he and All Might were in shock. Izuku said, don't tell her the price of the house. She and my mom will end me if they found out. David said, you can tell me, I won't say a word. Yagi didn't say a thing, which Izuku leaned towards him to say, 
$50 million. David was in shock which he asked, where do you get the money? Izuku said, I have a weed business, I sell firearms, I oversee a quirk erasing bullets factory, I sell the said bullets, I'm an info broker, and I also sell new technology. Izuku pulled out his laser gun and Stimpak to show David which he and Yagi were impressed with the technology. Izuku then said, those are just a small example of the tech my scientists, engineers, and your daughter made. My cars can fly which I haven't seen any other hero's cars that fly and that Stimpak can heal almost any injury. David put the devices down which he asked, You must make money to afford this, but I feel like that isn't all the ways you make money. Izuku chuckled. Well I do have stock in the Japanese and American stock markets, which I have to say Mercosoft and Apple have been doing well lately. David was seeing he was a somewhat responsible adult, but he was a villain and his best friend is the number one hero. Izuku said, You want to go somewhere and get some food, I mean I'm not going to kidnap you. David asked, What do you mean about the kidnapping part? Izuku said, That last part was to ensure Yagi that I'm not going to kidnap you, sir. But we can talk more. But I don't feel comfortable about telling you everything around Yagi because I'm a villain. David nodded high head because it was understandable. And they went to Izuku's Firebird which David loved the car. Izuku knows how to impress and David may be a challenge but he wasn't going to not attempt to convince David for his blessing. As Izuku was driving, David asked, So, you run a weed shop? Izuku said, I own a weed shop, but Melissa convinced me to stay away from the weed for a while, which I will continue to make money from it and I will probably get into other more legal businesses like selling my tech to the people instead of just villains or maybe medicine like the Stimpak and Rad Away. David asked, what is Rad Away? Izuku said, it's a drug that removes radiation from a person, it's really popular amongst the doomsday preppers. I have tech that can make our society do a technologic leap. David asked, why keep it from society then? Izuku chuckled. How would society reacted that quirkless people made that leap? David asked. Quirkless people made them. Izuku chuckled. I have only have quirkless and mutant quirk people working for me. The two most discriminated kinds of people in the world made this technology. The world wouldn't accept it. They will take it away then get someone to reverse engineer it and that said person will figure it out. That said person will be the inventor of the tech because that said person will have a quirk and the real inventor is quirkless. You know how it works, don't you Mr. Shield? David said, yeah, I had a few inventions stolen from me, especially one that could make a quirk stronger without damaging their mind. Izuku said, I read about that invention from the dark net. The device would change the world and will get rid of trigger. David looked at him, you know about it. Izuku chuckled, what if I told you I have that said device coming in today? What would your reaction be? David said, there is no way. It's on my island which it has a nearly unhackable security. Izuku smirked, keyword nearly which means it is possible to hack into it. I took a chance and my mercenaries I hired are bringing it to my office today. David was in shock. Can I come to see it? Izuku smiled. Of course. Izuku pushed a button on his stirring wheel which lets Izuku tell Kirajiri that he needs to be warped to his office. Izuku drove through the portal to park the car in front of his office. They got out see the mercenaries in his office which Izuku said, Sorry for the inconvinced Wolfram. I will pay you double because of it. Wolfram smirked. Aren't you a kind man? Izuku chuckled. I try to be, but sometimes it's not enough. Izuku sent the money to Wolfram's account and Wolfram handed it over which David was in shock that his invention he wanted back for a long time was now in front of him. Izuku said, this will be my gift to you. David asked, what? But you paid men to go after it and bring it to you, why are you giving it to me? Izuku said, I don't want to see a device like this to be reinvented by someone else and taking credit for your work. David smiled, you are a good guy that Melissa sees in you. Izuku said, well time for some food, I bet you are starving. Three hours later, Izuku was back in his villain outfit which he got the blessing. He was about to smoke a blunt, but he remembered his promise. He went to get every hero he captured and Bakugo tied to a chair on top of a building. He looked at the cameraman to say, let's get this rolling. The TVs all across Japan. The screen showed all the heroes captured that have been missing for a while then Izuku appeared next to them to say, Hello Japan, you're probably wondering why I have these missing pro heroes. Well they trespassed on my secret base which I had to move my base of operation to somewhere else. It's a real pain, except Bakugo here. He is here because he was the bastard who bullied and abused me with his quirk, which I erased his quirk and gave him a good ass beating. I will reveal the location of where we are at, so the heroes can come pick them up. A screen opened up next to Izuku revealing the location of his old base where he and the trophies were at. He then continued, Come on now heroes, I don't have all day. The screen went black and the TVs went back to what was original shown. Izuku's location. Izuku pulled out his radio to say, Get ready, they will be coming. Izuku walked over to Bakugo and said, 
You will watch as an army of quirkless people, you though were nothing, take down a ton of heroes. Izuku looked out to see cop cars, army vehicles, and heroes coming towards his old base. Izuku chuckled. Two thousand men and women armed to the teeth with quirk erasing bullets. Two hundred gnomus at my expense. Twenty-five of the fifty villains I freed from Tartarus. Ten heroes captured, one old childhood bully captured, and me. I will win this battle and the best part is that my army and I will escape this. Izuku looked at his power armor X2 and said, let's get this show on the road. Izuku got in his armor and looked at the heroes, police, and army coming in the compound which when all them came in Izuku said to his radio, do it. When the police and army men came out of the vehicles, Izuku's grunts opened fired on them. The heroes were about to attack until the 200 gnomus came out to attack them as well, they realized they fell into a trap. The police and army were overpowered by the gnomus and gunfire. The heroes were dealing with gnomus which they were losing to them because of how strong and powerful they were. Izuku and his prisoner watched on the roof on one of his old warehouses. Izuku smiled, well I guess I don't need to join in. Then he saw All Might and Mirio come in and beating up the gnomus which Izuku chuckled, maybe I do now. Izuku activated the jetpack on his armor to fly up and land in front of Mirio to punch him in the face. Mirio didn't react in time which Mirio flew across the battlefield. All Might came over to punch Izuku but Izuku blocked it. Five gnomus tackled All Might which Izuku said. This is great, I have to take advantage of this. Mirio came in to punch Izuku's helmet which Izuku grabbed his arm to throw him. Izuku asked, is that the best you got? Mirio laughed, are you really forcing me to do it? Izuku got in a defensive stance which Mirio threw a punch and Izuku did as well. Mirio yelled, one for all, one million percent. Izuku's and Mirio's fists met which Izuku looked at his dials which they were going crazy. The armor was in overdrive trying to redirect the power to the ground and absorb some of it. The two both flew back a little bit. Izuku looked at Mirio with a broken arm and then he looked at his arm. The armor that surrounded his arm disappeared. But his arm was left untouched. He looked at Mirio and clapped. Mirio looked at Izuku, all that, and I destroyed the armor that protected your arm. Izuku said, you should be proud that you found the limit of the armor. But I sent a message to my scientists to send me the parts of the armor you destroyed. You have about five minutes before it arrives. Mirio chuckled. Well I have one good arm and two good legs, I won't lose like last time. Izuku said, you will lose worse than last time because you can die from that amount of damage you are producing on yourself. Mirio charged at Izuku and Izuku prepared himself. Mirio yelled, one for all, one million percent. Mirio threw a left punch which Izuku used his left fist because he wasn't going to use his unprotected arm. Their fists met and the ground them made a huge crater. Izuku yelled, quit your shit, Mirio. D.I. didn't you hear what I just told you? The two jumped back and Izuku saw that his armor on his left arm disappeared. Izuku looked at Mirio with two broken arms. Izuku looked at Mirio like an animal who needs to be put down to stop its suffering. Izuku said, stop it, Mirio. Just go down and I will take you to a hospital, because you will die from this. Mirio said, I won't stop until. Mirio coughed up some blood which Izuku asked, until what? Mirio smiled, until I capture you and give you back the dream that you wanted, back before it was destroyed. Izuku said, I don't want that dream, I'm happy where I'm at. I will not accept that dream again. Mario chuckled, because you believe the quirkless shouldn't be heroes. Izuku yelled, that not what I mean, I'm saying I will not be a hero. I am unfit to be a hero and I don't want to be a hero. Mario smiled, you weren't even given a chance yet. Mario charged at Izuku and decided to kick Izuku which Izuku blocked it with his leg. The kick blew away Izuku's armor on his leg but Izuku was in horror that Mirio was one non-broken leg. Izuku said, God damn it Mirio, stay down and I will take you to a hospital. Mirio fell down which Izuku ran up to him and asked, Mirio stay with me here, I'm going to fly you to the hospital. Mirio looked at Izuku in the eyes, why do you care about my health? Izuku said, I may have said a lot of things, but I never hated you. The truth is that I admire you, you are a true hero. You give people hope like All Might did, but you extended it to quirkless people a lot more than he did. We are two sides of the same coin. We are similar yet the only thing that truly separates us is that you have a quirk and I have none. Mirio saw it in Izuku's eyes that there was still a young boy that wanted to be a hero. But that boy was sad that no one ever supported that dream. Mirio pulled off a strain of his hair and got on top of Izuku to put the hair in his mouth. Mirio put the hair in his mouth and cover his mouth with his broken hand. Izuku struggled which Mirio said, swallow the hair god damn it. Izuku did what he asked, which Mirio rolled off of him. Izuku got on top of him to ask, what did you do to me? Mirio chuckled, you have a quirk now. Tenth user of one for all. Izuku was pissed, take it back. Mirio smirked, I'm about to die, I need to pass the quirk on. You were the closest person so why not give it to you? Izuku picked Mirio to flew on over to the closest hospital, which Mirio laughed, you know how to give someone a fun time when they are on the verge of death. 
Izuku said, yeah, keep talking. That will keep you alive until I get you to the hospital. Mirio laughed. You think you can get me there in time? Izuku ran out of fuel in his jetpack. Then Izuku found a car and stole it which he said, I'm going try my best. When you survive this, I'm going to shove my hair back down your throat and see how like shoving things down people's throats. Mirio smiled. You seem pretty angry about getting a quirk. Izuku. Izuku was going around cars and going through red light. No shit. If this was given to me like before All Might told me I couldn't be a hero, I would be happy as hell. But this was at a point where I'm a rich quirkless villain who has shown the world that quirkless people can kick ass. Mirio said, well I can at least trust you to give the quirk to someone you see worth enough for it. Izuku smiled, if you die by this sort of bullshit, I will find someone else to give to. Izuku drifted in front of the hospital and got Mirio in which they came in. The doctors took Mirio to the earth. Izuku then called his men to see if they retreated and destroyed the old base like plan. Then he called Mirio's parents, and then Sir Naita. Izuku didn't call All Might because he was definitely going to be hurt after facing that many gnomas. Izuku sat in the waiting room just thinking about Mirio's health and why Mirio gave him one for all. Then he heard a voice asked, Can we sit here? Izuku looked up to see Mirio's parents which Izuku said, Yeah. They sat down which Mr. Tagata asked, Are you Izuku? Izuku said, Yeah, that's me. Mr. Tagata said, So, you're the kid Mirio believes he can save. Izuku chuckled. He really believes in such thing and tells people that. Mr. Tagata chuckled. He believes that you will be a part of the one million lives he will save. I just let him go ahead and try it. Izuku said, I'm sorry about beating him up last time, but this time he used one for all a lot more than his body could take. Mr. Tagata said, he survived it last time and someone gave us the money to cover the hospital expenses for it last time as well. Izuku said, I know the guy, because he is me. Mr. Tagata looked at him in shock. You did. Izuku said, I never hated him. He was in my eyes a true hero, and he is the nicest person to ever walk this planet. I admire him because we are similar yet also different and he sees me as a rival which to me is an honor to be worthy enough for such a title. Mr. Tagata smiled. You are a good person like he said, you know that. Izuku smiled, I try to be, even in times like this. Izuku then saw Sir Nidai which he said, excuse me for a moment. Izuku walked up to Sir to say, okay Sir Nidai, we need to talk. Sir was in shock that Izuku called him by actual hero name and asked, What do you want? Izuku grabbed him, who the F told him to use more than he can handle. He literally just used this one for all. One million percent three times to destroy my armor, his arms and his leg. He is in a shit ton of pain and on the verge of death. Sir looked at him, he did what? Izuku said, You heard me. Sir said, I got a few words for him when he recovers. Izuku said, That isn't the worst part. Sir looked at him, What is the worst part? Izuku whispered in his ear. He gave me one for all and I'm beyond pissed. Sir looked at him in anger. He did not. Izuku said. He fing did. Sir said. Let's talk about this somewhere else. Izuku said. You're right. Let's go outside to talk more about this. They walked outside and told the nurses to contact them when they get an update on Mirio's health. Sir and Izuku sat on a bench outside the hospital which Sir started off the conversion. What are you going to do? Izuku said, if he survives, I going to do the same thing he did to me, shove my hair down his throat and force him to take one for all back. Sir was in shock, what? Izuku said, you heard me, I'm going to force him to take it back. Sir said, you are not going to use it for your thing. Izuku said, I don't want a quirk, a quirk is the last thing I need in my life. Also, I am beyond unworthy of this quirk. Sir looked at him, that is something I can agree with you on. But what if he dies? Izuku said, then we are going to find another Mirio and give him or her this quirk. Sir asked, why don't you give it to all for one? Izuku said, if my stepdad has it then I would have less fun being a villain. Sir in shock, stepdad. Izuku said, yeah, yeah, no big deal. Sir said, that is a big deal. Izuku said, back to the main topic. I need your help to find another true hero like Mirio. Sir asked, you are asking me to help you find another true hero. Izuku said, you found Mirio, it's only nature that you can find another one or have a backup. Sir smiled, I thought I understood you, Mr. Midoriya, but I can see what. Izuku said, yeah, yeah, Mirio sees in me. Now let's hope he survives this, so I can force one for all to go back to his system. Sir asked, how long ago did he give you one for all? Izuku said, when did they arrive at my old hideout? Sir said, about two hours ago. Izuku said, I've had it for almost two hours, which I haven't tried to activate it. Sir chuckled, you are really trying to reject it aren't you? Izuku smiled, you bet. Sir smiled, I would like to apologize for everything I said to you and about you. Izuku smiled, I'm sorry about the same, the golden dildos, the tattoo, and for your car that one time. They laughed a bit which Izuku said, I wish I can smoke a blunt to celebrate this, but I promised someone to stop for a while. Sir said, I have noticed you aren't doing as much as usual, you found someone in your life. 
Izuku smiled. Some women in my life, I'll one day get away from my villainy for a while, but I will return to it. Sir said, we will wait and we'll be ready for your return. Izuku chuckled, no you won't. A nurse came out to say, I got bad news, Mirio Tagata has died. The two were in shock, which the two walked into the room where Mirio's parents were crying. Izuku wrote a check, then gave it to Mr. Tagata to say, I'm sorry. This check will pay for the funeral. I don't want you to suffer for my mistake and I am sorry for taking someone like him away from this world. Izuku walked up to Mirio's body to say, I'm going to find someone who is truly worthy enough of this quirk and you would be proud to have as your successor. Izuku walked out of the hospital to go clear his head for a little bit. He went to the beach to lay down to relax under an umbrella. Izuku's mind. Izuku was standing in a dark place. Then he saw a fire with nine people which Izuku figured out Sensei Chang, Nana, the sixth wielder, and then Mirio. Izuku yelled, M-I-R-I-O. Izuku ran at Mirio which Mirio turned around and was about to say something but Izuku jumped on top of him. Izuku started punching Mirio while saying, Why the F did you die on me, you asshole? The other wielders were looking at Izuku in shock that he was pissed off at Mirio which Sensei Chang said, Gurren Monkey, calm down. Izuku got up to ask, How the F are you here, Sensei Chang? Sensei Chang said, You will learn one day, Gurren Monkey. The sixth wielder said, I remember you. Izuku said, yeah, I time-traveled to kick your ass while my best friend Dabai banged Nana to keep the timeline stable. Nana in shock, wait, the guy I had a sex with is a time-traveler. Izuku said, it's for Tamura's existences for the League of Villains which he is the leader. Nana was in shock that her grandson is the leader of the League, which Izuku pointed at the gray hair guy which Izuku asked, who the hell are you, all for one rip off. The man said, I'm the first user of one for all, all for one's little brother. Izuku said, so, you are my step-uncle. Well shit, Mirio said, Izuku, I know you hate that I gave you one for all. Izuku laughed like a madman, hate isn't a good enough word to describe how pissed I am. The other users were a little terrified by Izuku. Izuku said, you gave me a quirk, but not just any quirk. You gave me the quirk that I destined to fight Sensei, a quirk of pure good. Now I have you people in my mind talking to me which I right now need some weed or something to get my mind away from this crap. Then Izuku looked at the gold-flamed man which Izuku asked. Why the fresh F isn't All Might saying a word? The first wielder said, He isn't dead yet, so you can't talk to him in your mind and he can't talk to any of us. Izuku frowned, What kind of bullshit is this? Mirio said, Izuku, it's not that bad. Izuku yelled, Bullshit. The bald user asked, Mirio, why did you give him the quirk? Izuku asked, Make a wish is right, why? The bald user angrily asked, What did you call me? Izuku said, Kalu doesn't like his nickname. The bald user said, I'm not going by that. Izuku said, okay Johnny Sins. Sensei Chang laughed by the last comment. The bald user was pissed. The first wielder said, we will talk to you later when you have calmed down. Izuku woke up to say, Fing Hell. Izuku came up the mountain to find Sensei Chang which Sensei Chang asked, you are here for answers, if I am not mistaken. Izuku sat down, yes, I have many questions and no answers. Sensei Chang poured some tea for Izuku which Sensei Chang said, take it slow and ask away. Izuku calmly asked, First of all, how come I can talk to you in my mind but not all might? Sensei Chang said, You see what the Book of Immortality doesn't tell you is that when you are immortal, you are in a state between life and death. You are both dead and alive. Izuku nodded, I guess that helps, I want to pass this quirk to someone else. Sensei Chang hit Izuku's head with his cane, explain why. Izuku said, I don't want a quirk and I would like to be quirkless again. Sensei Chang chuckled, Well you're going to hate what I'm going to say about that. Izuku sighed, I'm ready to hear it. Sensei Chang said, you see when a person receives one for all, it like a fire you can give someone your fire, but you still have the fire in you that will continue to grow until you can't grow it anymore. Then it will die down and you will be quirkless again. Izuku sighed, how long until I become quirkless? Sensei Chang laughed, by age 50. Izuku yelled, F. Sensei Chang said, don't you have quirk erasing bullets? Izuku said, I'm not shooting myself and we don't make syringes anymore. Sensei Chang said, well you have the quirk now and whoever you give it to will make three living one for all users existing at the same time. Izuku sighed. I will have to get one of my workers to make me a syringe for myself, but not tell them it's for me after I give the quirk to someone else. Sensei Chang asked. Why not try it out? I mean what is the worst that can happen? Izuku said. Not my quirk. Not going to use it. Sensei Chang looked at him. Didn't you have a stimpack on you during your fight with Mirio? Izuku said. I did. But it broke when Mirio used 1 million percent on me. Sensei Chang deadpanned, it broke. Izuku nodded, it broke. Sensei Chang said, I'm disappointed that something so simple could break that easy. Izuku asked, how does this quirk activate? Sensei Chang said, you mean quirks activate? Izuku spit out his tea, what? Sensei Chang said, when Yagi gave Mirio one for all, it mutated to give the user past knowledge and quirks from previous users. 
Izuku sighed. Why? Just why? Sensei Chang laughed. You can come back to me if want to learn about the quirks. Izuku got up to say. This was enlightening and interesting, but I must go to get rid of this quirk. It's a mind F, Sensei Chang said. I loved it when you called my predecessor Johnny Sin's best nickname for him hands down. The two continued talking until Sensei Chang revealed a marijuana leaf but it was gold which Izuku asked. What is that? Sensei Chang said. This is what I call God's lettuce. It's 50 times more potent than Ghost and Bruce Banner combined. This mountain grows it near the lava portion, which I have collected the seeds for you to start growing. Izuku looked around and said, I want to smoke one. Sensei Chang revealed one rolled up in golden colored paper which Izuku smoke it, which he got high in two puffs. Izuku was super high and Sensei Chang said, Careful Gurren Monkey, it took me 50 years to handle an entire joint by myself. Izuku asked, If you remembered something that you forgot, then did you really forgot about it? Sensei Chang laughed his ass off, which he put the seeds in Izuku's pocket for him to take with him. Izuku blew out the joint and hid in pocket for later then got warped by to his office which he said, Okay, the plan is to give the quirk to a true hero then if the syringe doesn't get done by then, I guess I have to shoot my foot or leg. Izuku gave the seeds to Steven to get him to start growing them and only a certain 20 people can smoke it. Izuku called up Sensei to say, Hey, I'm going to get captured to spy on Yue is that cool? Sensei said, Let me ask your mom. Izuku sat there for a little bit which Sensei said, You got her approval. Izuku said, Awesome. Thanks dad. Izuku called up sir to say, okay, I'll be captured by you and we can look through UA with Yagi to find a true hero. Izuku then went up to sir's building and got arrested, which Izuku was now destined to live in the dorms of UA. Izuku looked around UA and thought, this will be easy to escape. Aizawa said, we have everything needed to make sure you don't escape. Izuku smirked, of course you do. They put an ankle brace on him. Izuku looked at the brace to see it was also a taser if he attempted to touch it. He looked around his room to see everything he needed which Izuku already saw the proper tools needed to get rid of the ankle brace and to escape. Izuku was then transported to class 1A which during the deal, he specifically demanded that every time he enters the classroom they have to play Ain't No Rest for the Wicked. Izuku was still super high and somehow no one has noticed it yet, which he came and he said, Hello there, I'm your new. Izuku looked at Aizawa. What the hell am I again? Aizawa said, A student teacher. Izuku said, Yes, a teacher student. Some of the students chuckled which Kayoka asked, Are you high? Izuku said, Nope. Izuku wasn't lying because he was higher than high at this point, which he said, I guess I supposed to be doing something, but I can't remember. Aizawa jokingly, You are supposed to be stripping for us. Izuku smiled, Okay. He started to take his shirt off until Aizawa grabbed him to ask, What are you doing? Izuku said, You told me to strip for the class. Aizawa said, I was joking, please don't do that again. Izuku chuckled, Okay. Aizawa looked at his eyes. Oh dear God, he is higher than high. I should take advantage with this. Aizawa said, you will teach the class how the underworld works. Izuku smirked. Oh, sure. Izuku got on the board to start his lessons while Aizawa fell asleep, which the class was learned so much. After about an hour, Aizawa woke up to find that Izuku has about five chalkboards full of information, which Izuku was now sober and looking at the student. That is why money laundering is important in the underworld, but it's best to sell firearms and invest in trigger. Any questions? Momo raised her hand. I understand the lesson but why does investing in Trigger is more profitable than any other drug? Izuku smiled. Simple, you see Trigger makes quirk users stronger and or mutates into another quirk. Other drugs like shrooms, meth, crack, heroin and acid are for fun and addicts. Now I've been safe with the legal stuff like weed, but I have been doing some firearms dealing with Russia, Iraq, Libya, Colombia and Indonesia which they are still successful. But my real moneymaker is my stock in the USA and Japan stock markets which I will not reveal for my personal reason. Any other questions? Shoto asked. If you had to go into another business, what would it be? Izuku said. Medicine. Underworld medicine. Or villain merchandise. Hiroshima asked. Villain merchandise. Izuku pulled out poster of himself. Yeep. There is a lot of merchandise of me. I would sign them as well because I'm that popular. Takoyami asked. What is the worst business you were a part of? Izuku said. Slavery. Well I was a slave valuer, meaning I look at a slave and their quirk to determine their base price. I have bought some slaves freedom but not all of them. Aizawa wasn't expecting him to show that much of the underworld. He was looking at things he hasn't even heard of which he was taking notes on a few things. Izuku said, now you are probably wondering how they stay together and make trades to each other. Well me, overhaul, and all for one or the reason. You see we have a lot of connections, so we combine them to where the three of us are the middlemen that connect everyone to make the trade. The idea for this was mine, which you can say that the three of us united the underworld. Everyone was in shock then Izuku said, Aizawa's awake. Well I'm going to ask him a question. 
Aizawa asked. What? Izuku asked. Where is midnight? Aizawa said. In her office. Why? Izuku said. I'm done for today. Izuku ran out of the classroom which Aizawa was about to chase after him but what he wrote was just too interesting to leave. Izuku ran to Midnight's office to say, Hello there, my sadist mama. Midnight laughed a little bit then said, You know I'm a little bit upset about my car. Izuku smiled, Since I'm being kept here, you want another nude model shoot? Midnight did a sadistic smile, Yes, little Shota. That will be excellent. Izuku giggled, We are doing the dog collar right. Midnight smiled, You bet we are. Which present Mike was about to enter the room to give Midnight some papers but after hearing their conversion, he calmly turned around and pretended he didn't hear them. Izuku then walked down the hall to smell something. He chased after the smell to find a teen with purple hair with some weed and Izuku said, You. The teen turned around which Izuku said, Pass the weed. The two started getting high which the teen revealed his name to be Shinso, which Izuku said, I promised someone I wouldn't smoke weed but if no one is watching me then F it. Shinso said, You know how to roll up a good blunt. Izuku said, I own a weed shop, of course I know how to do it right. Shinso asked, if you work as a security guard for a Samsung store, does that make you the guardian of the galaxy? Izuku asked, today is the oldest you have ever been, but it is the youngest you will ever be again. The two laughed for a while which Izuku said, okay, tomorrow we are going to smoke some real shit. Shinso asked, why are you here in UA in the first place? Izuku said, to help train some real heroes and other stuff until I escape. Shinso asked, escape. Izuku said, I can escape anytime I want. You see this ankle brace you see can tase me if I attempt to take it off or escape. I can get either someone else to do it or. Shinzo asked, or what? Izuku chuckled, that's the secret. Anyways come here tomorrow around the same time to smoke some good shit. Shinzo nodded and Izuku went to his room to then look at the files sir sent him to look at to see who was working. Izuku already looked at All Might's suggestion and threw most of them in the trash just like sir wanted to do. But he didn't want to disrespect him so Izuku did it for him which Izuku was supposed to meet with the two tomorrow to discuss the options of students who should receive the quirk. Izuku looked at the documents to say, let's do the research. Izuku sat down with All Might, Sir Nidai, and Nezu which All Might showed his list of his other choices. Izuku and Sir looked at them which Izuku didn't really like the list. Izuku looked over at Sir and saw that he didn't like the list and All Might asked, so, what do you two think? Izuku smiled, well I would like to look at Sir's suggestions. Sir showed his suggestions which Izuku liked them better, but something didn't feel right about them and the list was short, Sir said, those are the ones I can find so far. Izuku smiled, well your suggestions are nice, but I think I found a candidate as well. Nezu asked, is it Shinzo Hitoshi? Izuku snapped his fingers, bingo. Sir and All Might looked at his file, which Sir asked, why him? Izuku said, he wants to become a hero to prove that even with a villainous quirk, you can become a hero. His existences will inspire many people and can bring hope to many people, including people like him. Look at the video where he saves the girl from the zero-pointer coming out the ground. The watch the video of Shinzo coming to rescue the girl from the destruction while everyone ran away. Which Izuku said, I would gladly give one for all to him. Before All Might and Sir could say anything a hooded man with blonde hair, gold eyes, orange suit, a green heart on his forehead, and vampire-like teeth said, Hello again, Izuku Midoriya. Izuku smiled, Dio Brando, how have you been? Nezu asked, you know him? Izuku said, he is friend of mine. Dio said, I've come to drop a present off, I found this in Mexico. It's the same thing that turned me into a vampire a while ago. Sir, All Might, and Nezu were in shock by what Dio was saying. Dio handed Izuku a stone mask which Izuku said, I never thought I will actually be holding a vampire mask, thank you Dio. I will keep for display and emergency use only. Dio laughed, there will be a few guys maybe coming to destroy the mask. I trust that you will defeat them and prevent them from destroy it. Izuku chuckled, you bet, they will be nothing compared to me. Dio left it which Izuku asked, okay, where were we at? Nezu asked, is what he is saying true? That mask can turn people into vampires. Izuku said, the person has to wear the mask and get blood on the mask. Then the mask will make the person who wears it a vampire. Which is why it's going to be an emergency use only, like if I got shot. I'm putting my blood on it and wear it. Izuku got up to say, excuse me, I have to hide this somewhere safe in my dorm, so no one takes it or uses it. Izuku got to his room to put the mask in a special spot. Then he left the room to screw around on campus until he felt the presence of someone. He turned around to see some purple vines about grab him which he dodges them. Then he saw a purple man coming at him which Izuku said, I've seen you before. Star Platinum. He heard a someone said, Year year days, you figured out my stan's name. Izuku got up to say, Well I try my best to learn everything. The other four guys behind him looked at Izuku. The old man said, a stand user, but he hasn't revealed his stand yet. Izuku said, I haven't used my stand in a while, let's have some fun. Izuku summoned his stand, which was similar to the Star Platinum. 
but it was jade green with an Einstein-like hair, with a belt buckle reading 420 and a symbol of the sun on its head. The five men looked at the stand to figure out what Izuku's stand power was. Izuku said, so who will strike first? The muscular teen used star platinum to attack Izuku but Izuku disappeared which the men looked around. Izuku broke the leg of the silver-haired man which Izuku revealed himself then created a black hole to suck the silver hair man, the darker skinned man, and the red hair man in. Star Platinum prevented the old man and the teen from going in, which Izuku said, I expected nothing less from Joseph Joestar and Jotaro Kyujo. Star Platinum went on the attack but Izuku smirked as he slowed down time which he dodged each punch and made his stand attack Star Platinum. Izuku then said, I'll make a deal. I will give you information if you, Jotaro, can beat me. Jotaro asked, what about my friends? Izuku smiled, I'll return them, but you must accept my deal first and the fight is just between me and you. Joseph looked at Jotaro and Jotaro nodded, which Izuku brought the three men from the black hole. Izuku and Jotaro looked at each other menacingly. Then they started moving towards each other. Then Jotaro said, Star Platinum. Izuku smirked, drop it like it's hot. The two stands came out to attack each other. Izuku's stand dodged each attack. Izuku's stand stats were that power and speed was at an E, but his stand ability is the reason for dodging the attacks. Izuku was doing well until the Joseph said, Jotaro, that stand's ability is powerful, be careful. Jotaro asked, what is his stand ability? Joseph said, it's something to do with the theory of relativity. Izuku jumped back to clap his hands, you're right Mr. Joestar. My stand ability is called relativity manipulation. Anything related to the theory of relativity, I can control. I can control light, black holes, create time dilations, the laws of physics, energy mass equivalents, and so much more. My stand is weak but its ability is powerful and shouldn't be looked down on. Jotaro said, Yir Yir Dazu, quite a powerful stand ability but a weak stand. I respect your stand power, but I'm on a hunt for Dio. Izuku smirked. Well let's finish this fight and see if you get the information. Star Platinum Punch drop it like it's hot in the arm which dislocated Izuku's arm. Izuku smiled as he relocated his arm. Then he and his stand disappeared with did a rush attack on Star Platinum which no one could see where they were at. Izuku's stand ability he can control light and can control it to make him invisible and many other things. Izuku then said, let's show them what the power of energy mass equivalents can do. Izuku's stand had more powerful punches than Izuku used gravity to crush Star Platinum, which then Izuku slowed down time to beat up the stand even more. Then Jotaro said, the world. Izuku knew what that power can do, which Izuku felt pain everywhere on his body and he flew a few yards away. Izuku got up to say, you can do the world, well I'm going to surrender and give you the information. Joseph said, we need information on Dio. Izuku said, he is going to Egypt, I know where he lives but I assume a castle-like structure. Jotaro was about to beat Izuku some more which the dark-skinned man said, that all we need, thank you very much. They left which Izuku sighed, at least they didn't want the mask. Izuku went to the nurse's office which she asked. What did you get into? Izuku chuckled. A training accident. Recovery girl glared at him. I know that is just nonsense, but I'm not forcing you to reveal the real reason. Izuku got healed up then he went to find Shinzo which Izuku pulled out the blunt from Sensei Chang. Which Izuku said, careful with this one, it's potent as hell. Two puffs made me super high. Shinzo chuckled then after two puffs, he was higher than high. Izuku took his two puffs, which they laid down while thinking of everything. Izuku asked, do blind people have dreams? Shinso asked, do you think twins realize that one of them wasn't planned? Izuku said, brah, that is a good question. Shinso chuckled, think about it, you expect one child but then two come out. The same could be the same triplets. Izuku said, if you replace the W with T and what, where, and when you get the answer to each of them. Shinso chuckled, holy shit, what is this? Izuku chuckled, it's called God's Lettuce, it's 50 times more potent than Ghost and Bruce Banner combined. Shinso said, I don't think I will ever get stuff like this, this lives up to the name. Izuku said, yes it does. I can grow some more of this. Shinso asked, you grow weed? Izuku said, I own the farm, but I have someone else grow it. Shinso got up to say, I must satisfy the munchies. Izuku got up as well, same. Izuku and Shinso got a ton of food which everyone looked at them in surprise, which they consumed it like breathing air. Izuku forgot that Melissa also attended UA as well in the support department. Melissa came to the cafeteria with her friend Mei and Kayoka which they saw Izuku and Shinso eat a ton of food. She headed over to say, Hello Izuku. Izuku though, F, I'm too high right now. Izuku smiled, How are you doing? Melissa asked, Why do you need that much food? Izuku remembered that recovery girl healed him a while ago from his stand fight, which he said, I hurt myself, then went to recovery girl to get fixed up, then I came here for some food. Melissa looked at him then nodded which Izuku continued to eat his food and then thought, shit, that was close. Izuku looked at Mei and realized, that is wife number four. Damn she's hot. 
I will give her a good time soon. Then lunch was over and Izuku was reported to go to combat training to help the hero students. Izuku looked at everyone, then pulled out a document and said, I need everyone to sign this first. The students in confusion looked at him in confusion. Mina asked, why do you need us to sign that? Izuku said, this document is a paper that said that you allow me to kick your asses, physical, mental, and emotional, and you gave me permission to. Trust me if I'm going to be teaching something about combat, I will kick your asses equally despite gender. Also, I don't want that hashtag METOO stuff following me around too. Any other questions? Ida asked, this kind of behavior is not how a teacher show behave. Izuku stopped his rant to say, come and sign this then I will explain to you how I will kick your asses in one attempt. They signed the paper, then got in battle stances, but Izuku smiled and said, congratulations, I won. Izuku sat in a chair while the students looked at him. Then Momo asked, how did you win? Izuku said, you all didn't even read the paperwork. It also states in the second paragraph, by signing this contract, you are cannot fight Izuku Midoriya for one day after this contract was signed and resulting into an automatic lose meaning you didn't read the contract. You all fell into the most basic scheme I could make, which today you all learned that the pen is indeed mightier than the sword. Izuku got up from his chair to say, Well I got another class to help teach, so don't mind if I do. Aizawa chuckled a bit from how Izuku just beat his entire class by a simple document. But the lesson was actually valid because there are times where you can't do things to villains because they have connections and stuff like that. Izuku went to Midnight's class to say, I'm back. Midnight looked at her class, Our model is back everyone. The class full of girls blushed a bit because they remembered his 9-incher which Izuku asked, Are you all alright? Midnight revealed a dog collar which Izuku took off his shirt and jacket then put the collar on. Midnight put a leash on Izuku which they got on the stand in a pose of a person walking their dog. Midnight was the person and Izuku was the dog. Meanwhile Aizawa, Yamada, Kan, Ishiyama, and Inui were talking about Izuku. Aizawa asked, Speaking of the devil, where is he? Ishiyama said, I think I saw him entering Midnight's classroom. They all had wide eyes, except Inui. Then Inui asked, Why do you all look disturbed? Ken asked, You haven't seen what the two do together. Inui asked, What do they do together? Yamada said, It's something that I don't want to talk about. Aizawa said, I have to get a therapist because of the things they say to each other and do to with each other. It makes me question everything. Inui asked, What's the worst that can happen? Inui opened the door to her class to see Izuku and Midnight reacting a person walking a dog which Izuku was dog which Inui was in shock by this. Inui closed the door and said, I thought I've seen it all, but that is something new. I need time to unsee that. Aizawa said, You can never unsee that for the rest of your life. It will haunt you for the rest of your days, and they do it a lot. Midnight and Izuku looked at the door that was closed which Izuku asked, You think he went to the wrong room and is looking for the right room? Midnight giggled, most likely, but I feel like something is missing in this picture. Izuku smiled, what if you petted my head like the bad dog I am? Midnight smiled, perfect. The men outside the classroom walked away, and Inui was now disturbed. He later went to Nezu to ask for a special therapy session to see what Izuku is thinking. Inui wanted to see the mind of a smart villain like Izuku, but he knew there was more to Izuku than meets the eye. Izuku came into his office to say, hello hound dog. Inui said, Hello Mr. Midoriya, take a seat. Izuku sat down which Inui noticed he didn't sit down like a student or like normal. He sat down like a businessman who has many successful deals and was going to make a deal with you. Inui was very observant about everything and small details help him with how to see a person's mind. Izuku asked, So you want to see my mind? Inui nodded which Izuku smiled, Where do you want to begin? Izuku asked, Where do you want to begin? Inui asked, I would like to ask about your childhood, if you don't mind. Izuku said, Very well. Before age 4, I had a happy childhood like your average person. I had friends in school, my parents loved me, and I was a big fan of All Might. Inui asked, what changed? Izuku chuckled, when it was revealed I was quirkless. The friends bullied me because of it, my father left me and my mom because it, and the bullying didn't stop until I learned how to fight back by age 12. Inui was angry that his father would leave him and his mother because I stupid reason. How everyone started bullied him for that same reason, but he kept professional. What happened at age 12? Izuku said, I snapped on my main tormentor, Bakego, and fought back for all the bullying. I lost that fight because I was weak and outnumbered, but I felt something inside of me that wanted me to get stronger. I followed that feeling to an underground fighting ring. I saw how they fought each other as equals. Some of the fighters fought with a smile on their face, like they enjoyed it. I wanted that feeling as well. And Yui was scared a little bit from this story and started getting concerned that Bakugo in class 1A and going to be in danger for the rest of his life. Izuku smiled, I met coach while watching the fight and he asked, why are you here, kid? And I said, I want to learn to fight like that. He smiled and taught me boxing. 
I then would also get in the ring to fight the fighters as well. I combined my hobby of quirk analysis and boxing to help me win my first fight. I was happy by my first win, I smiled by it, and I found happiness which was something I lost since age 4. Inui saw why Izuku loved to fight in general. It was a high to him in revenge against society for looking down on him. Izuku smiled. Then I met Kai, also known as Overhaul, one day. He offered me to work for him. He liked my fighting send. Then I revealed to him that I was quirkless in my quirk analysis notes, which he wanted me to work for him even more. I had the conditions of that I am not focused to end, free control of what I do, and an apartment nearby his place just in case. He met with my conditions and I began working for him. But as for what I did for him is something I would like to not to speak of. Inui nodded. But what about the part of you that loved All Might? Izuku chuckled. Before I met All Might. About two weeks or so before I met All Might, Jiren got me interested in meeting the League of Villains. I met with Tamura and Sensei. Sensei saw that I was quirkless but valuable. He revealed to me that All Might was quirkless once before given one for all, which I was shocked by the information. Sensei was nice and a father figure to me. He was like a father to me and Tamura. Anyways I met All Might after he saved me from a slime villain which I asked him if a quirkless nobody like me could be a hero. And you know the rest, except why I ran away from home. The knew he was in shock that despite what he was told about All Might in advance, he still wanted to ask his question. Inui looked at the clock which revealed he had one minute left which he asked, Why did you run from home? Izuku smiled. For my mom's protection of course, I left to live in the apartment that Kai gave to me and I began my life as a free-spirited teen, which I have seen many things and many people, from sensei to mad scientists to slavers to murders to assassins to terrorist cells leaders. I've seen them all and forgot none. That is what it's like to be a part of the underworld for four years now. Inui's timer went off which Izuku smiled. Well that's time's up. Inui quickly asked, You want another appointment? Izuku smirked, No point if I have 20 possible escape routes out of here. After I've done with a few things of course. Izuku opened the door to find Nezu standing there, which he asked, I would like to know these 20 possible escape routes, if you don't mind me asking. Izuku smirked, Depends what I get from telling you. Nezu said, No prison time. Izuku nodded, Sounds good. But I need a little more. Nezu looked into his eyes. What do you want? Izuku chuckled. No prison time and allowing me to give the quirk to Shinzo with no questions asked. Nezu sighed. Okay. Izuku then showed every possible of escape except his real plan to escape. Izuku then went to Shinzo to say, Hey Shinzo meet me in our usual spot. Shinzo followed which Izuku pulled some of his hair to say, You see when Mirio died he gave me a quirk. Shinzo in shock. He gave you a quirk, so aren't quirkless? Izuku said, Shut up. I'm getting rid of it after I give you this quirk. Shinzo nodded which Izuku continued. This is a quirk for true heroes which I can see it in you. All Might and Sir Night I will help you train it. Now will you accept this quirk? Shinzo nodded which Izuku in an All Might impression. Eat this. Shinzo looked at the hair. What? Izuku said. The quirk passes on to someone by DNA. So it was either the hair, I split in your mouth, or I nut in your mouth. The choice is yours. Shinzo quickly said. The hair. What the F? Izuku gave him the hair and Izuku said, Okay it will kick in soon. Possible two to three hours and if you see and hear people in your head, it's going to be a normal thing. Shinzo asked, Well that's interesting and at the same time this is one weird quirk. Izuku said, Yeah, it's a weird quirk. Izuku looked at his watch to say, Well I'm going to escape from here now. Izuku parker his way down the building until he went to the wall near Jim Gamma which it fell down and Izuku jumped into the back of a truck. In the back of the truck there were men with the tools to get the ankle brace off of him without hurting him. The truck drove off and the teachers started chasing him. When they got the brace off of Izuku, he said, Thank God, it's off. Izuku checked his jacket to check if he still had the vampire mask which he still had on him. Then he pulled out a stun grenade made from the materials in his dorm room. He threw the stun grenade at the heroes which stopped them and allowed Kirajiri to warp them without problem. Izuku saw his building then jumped out to shout. Well I back beaches. Izuku went to his office to write his reports in the past two days he was at UA, which he then took his vampire mask and put it on the wall. Izuku put his book of immortality under the mask and said, if I get murdered, then mask is the backup plan. Izuku sat down on desk and took a nap, but his forgot that he needed to erase one for all in his system. Izuku's mind. Izuku looked at the former one for all users then said, son of a beach, I forgot to erase the one for all in me. Nana said, we would like to talk to you about something. Izuku said, Nope, sorry Dream Milf I'm not going to keep or use this quirk. Mirio said, At least hear us off. Izuku said, Mirio, I held up my end of the bargain and now the deal is done, so I'm going to erase this quirk in me. Sensei Chang said, Gurren Monkey. Izuku said, Fine, I'll listen but it better be good. Sensei's brother said, Okay, now we like that you gave one for all to another person, but we believe you can be a hero. 
Izuku said, I already hate this. Mirio said, he didn't even finish, you might like this. Izuku said, are asking me to focus more on my vigilante work and make a shift to be an antihero. Because if you are, I might think about it but I'm not going to use this quirk. The sixth user said, okay, we will let you not use us, but we will offer the leaning hand. Izuku sighed, I guess that's the best I'm going to get with you all. Sensei Chang whispered, I tried to convince them to leave you alone about it, but no. They believe that you have been more heroic and whatnot. Izuku asked, what do you think Sensei Chang? Sensei Chang said, when you trained under me, you were like a diamond that wasn't polished. After I trained you, you were just polished and that was the only thing I did. You should do what you want to do. You are a free-spirited one which you should be you. Izuku smiled. Thanks Sensei Chang. The bald user said, you are supposed to help us. Izuku looked at the bald user. You know if you stopped using toothpaste instead of shampoo, you could still have your hair. Sensei Chang fell back crying because it was too good. Mirio said, don't be like that Izuku. The bald user said, you are always lost in thought. It must be unfamiliar territory to you. The other users can feel the burn from that one, which Izuku smiled. If I had a face like yours, I would sue my parents. The fire near the user rose up and got bigger from that burn. The bald user smirked, I can make a monkey out of you, but why should I take all the credit? Nana said, stop it both of you. Izuku chuckled, I've seen people like you, but I had to pay admission. Then Izuku woke up and said, god damn. I need to get that syringe. Izuku picked up the phone. Hey Phil, you got that syringe? Phil on the other line. Eep, it's on its way to your office. Izuku said, great. Izuku hung up the phone and waited for the syringe, which Izuku read the Book of Immortality and thought, well I know how to do this but in summary, I need to hide in a secluded area, find inner peace, drink tea, consume soups and rice, and meditate hourly. Putting on the vampire mask and becoming a vampire is easier than this. Izuku heard a knock on the door. He looked up to say, come in. A man came in with a small box which Izuku said, Thanks Matt. Matt left and Izuku examined the syringe in the box. He then asked himself, I can be quirkless again like I want to, or I can continue to mess with the past users. Izuku sat on the thought for a while until he heard a knock which he put the syringe away and said, Come in. Kayoka came in which Izuku said, Hey, how was your day? Kayoka smiled, You made quite the escape you know. Izuku said, I had 21 ways to escape and revealed 20 to make Nezu feel bad about not having a building to keep me in. Kayoka giggled, you have made him mad and he can't wait to get a hold of you. Izuku smiled, I may not have a quirk or a quirk like him, but I do take steps in case something like that happens. Kayoka asked, how are you doing? Izuku smiled, I bought a house for all of us to live in, it's a beach house which I will show you later. My businesses are still growing and giving me money, I got new treasures as well. Izuku pointed at the mask which she looked at it and interested but didn't touch it and looked at the book. She turned around, immortality. Izuku smiled, imagine I'm quirkless and I am living longer than everyone else. She giggled a bit which Izuku said, you know I think I should lock the door and allow us to have a good time. Kayoka blushed, I wouldn't go against the idea, but I would like the idea. Izuku quickly locked the doors and covered the windows for them to have a good time. Izuku and Dabai packed in some weapons and food in the time matchy, which Izuku said, I can't wait for this trip. Dabai smiling, I can't wait to steal King Arthur's sword. Izuku said, aliens built the pyramids, and this will prove it. Dabai looked at Izuku, I'm telling you aliens didn't build them. Izuku said, dude, you banged an alien. Don't you believe there might be a possibility of them building them? Dabai said, I find it hard to believe that they came to help build pyramids. They both got in the time machine and flew in the air to go to their destination. Yue, 15 years ago. Izuku and Dabai look out the windows to see Yue when it was small, which Izuku said, let's land where those people are at. They land next to a group of teens with a tall man with gray hair, which the gray hair man and students prepared themselves. Izuku rolled down the window which Izuku shout, chill the f out. Is this 2xxx? The gray haired man asked, yes, it is why would you ask us that? Izuku said, because we are time travelers and we came to visit. They heard, time travelers, my s. Dabai said, endeavor. Izuku said, hold it Dabai. The red hair teen asked, you know my future hero name. Izuku said, we know all of you, but Dabai doesn't want to hear a word from you. A blonde muscular teen boy asked, who are you? Izuku smiled, we are from 15 years in the future. We have come to keep the timeline in check. Right Dabai. Dabai sighed, yep. Then they heard, Dabai. They looked to see an older Nana which Izuku said, oh f. Dabai said, hello Nana. It's been a while. Nana asked, you're a time traveler. Dabai sighed, yeah. Nana asked, can I speak with you in private? Dabai nodded which Izuku said, while Dabai talks with Nana, I'm going to reveal myself. I'm the anarchist, the one keeps the timeline stable and protects the world from destroying itself. Inji asked, the anarchist, that sounds like a villain name. 
Izuku smiled. I like to think of myself as an antihero or a kind villain, but thanks for noticing. The gray-haired man attacked Izuku at great speed but Izuku didn't take damage. Izuku grabbed the man's leg and throw him around. Izuku punched him to say, Quit your shit Gran Torino. Gran Torino said, We are not listening to a villain. Then the blonde muscular teen punched Izuku with a lot of force, but Izuku took no damage which Izuku grabbed his broken arm and moved it around in uncomfortable ways. Izuku said, Let me explain first. Gran Torino said, Fine. You have our attention. Izuku let them go which he said, Thank you. Where was I? Oh yeah, we are going to look around and make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. Everyone looked at him like he is crazy but then heard, What is your quirk? Izuku looked at them in seriousness, plot armor. A blonde skinny teen with sunglasses asked, Really? Izuku said, Nope, I'm not revealing shit to any of you because it would ruin the surprise in the future. Izuku looked around to see a teen girl with dark purple hair, sky blue hair, and revealed a sadistic smile which he went up to her to ask, Nimuri. Nimuri asked, You know me. Izuku held her hand, Yes, you are my friend with benefits and an amazing hero. Nimuri blushed and a black long hair teen asked, What are you doing? Izuku said, Me and her have a sadistic version of Romeo and Juliet in the future, even if she is 15 years older than me. Everyone around the two were scarred from hearing those words, which he said, You haven't aged much since then. Gran Torino said, Stop flirting with my students. Izuku said, Fine, I flirt with recovery girl instead. Gran Torino's vein popped out which Izuku laughed, Just kidding. Izuku looked around to say, Well I can answer some questions if you want. The blonde muscled teen raised his hand. Izuku pointed at him, Yes Yagi. Yagi asked, Do I become the symbol of peace? Izuku sighed, Yep and the number one hero. Yagi asked, Why don't you seem a happy about that? Izuku said, That will ruin the future, if I told you. The blonde hair teen with sunglasses raised his hand. Izuku pointed at him, Hizashi. Hizashi asked, I'm a great hero. Izuku smiled, You are a great hero, but I'm more of a fan of your radio show. Hizashi smiled, I got a radio show. Izuku nodded, which Hizashi teared up a bit. Then Izuku said, Aizawa is an excellent hero and he will often refer to me as a huge problem child. Aizawa shrugged and went to sleep which Izuku laughed. He never changes. He took questions and answered some of them the best he could or not answer them at all. Then he saw a green-haired teen boy walking out to say, Sorry I'm late. Izuku looked at him and asked, What's your name? The boy said, Hisashi Midoriya. Dabai came out and heard the Hisashi say his name which Izuku went from smiling to pissed off. Which Izuku got up and Dabai got in front of him to say, No Izuku, you can't end him. Izuku said, You know ending isn't my thing. I just want to take a stab or beat him up. Dabai said, let it go, you already got your revenge in the present, don't attack. Izuku calmed down, fine. Izuku looked away from him and Gran Torino asked, what do you have a problem with Nji, Yagi, and Hisashi? Izuku said, that's our business and ours alone, but for now, we are going to screw around for a little bit. Izuku ran to grab Nimiri's hand to roam around the school and Dabai walked with Nana to have further talks about the future is like. Izuku got ice cream with her and they went into some of the offices to prank on the staff. She knocked them out and he would use permanent marker to draw cat whiskers and other stuff on them. They went to the roof of the building to loo at the clouds which she asked, What is the future truly like? Izuku did a grim smile. It's fine but if you were a quirkless teen like me. It truly isn't. Nimuri looked at him, You're quirkless. Izuku continued smiling, Don't tell anybody, it will destroy the timeline okay. She nodded and Izuku continued, You see quirkless people get bullied, abused, and thrown around like garbage on a daily basis. I was lucky that my mom continued to love me, but she didn't believe I could become a hero and when my idol told me I couldn't be a hero, I was heartbroken. But I got stronger and helped made technology which were made by quirkless and mutant quirked people. The mutant quirked people are the only other people who understand our pain and struggle. My father left me and my mom when I was revealed to have no quirk. Nimuri looked at his sad eyes which Izuku said. But one day I had enough of watching my quirkless brothers and sister being treated horribly and for them to have the only option to be suicide. I became a villain to show the world that we are capable of defeating powerful heroes and we deserve respect, a happy life, and not to be judged. I believe everyone quirks of all kinds and quirkless should live together and see each other as equals, to respect each other and pursue a happy life. That is why I am a villain, because the world would never accept a true quirkless hero. I may be the villain, but I'm the only real hero in the world which only a few people can see. Nimuri kissed his cheek, you are a hero. Even if no one believe in you, I believe you are doing what you believe is right even if you are labeled as a villain. Izuku smiled. You always have a beautiful smile. Izuku pulled out a piece of paper. How about you meet me here 15 years in the future? Nimuri looked at it to say, I will. They looked at each other for a minute then they kissed then Izuku said, Dabai is probably waiting for me in the time machine. They got up which Nimuri said, I will be waiting for you. Izuku said, I'll be there. 
Izuku jumped off the building to activate the glider mode in his suit which Dabai yelled, Come on, I want to steal King Arthur's sword. Gran Torino and Nana stood next to the time machine which Izuku landed in front of them. Izuku turned to them to say, Don't worry Nana, Yagi almost ends all for one in the future, but he is alive which all for one is my stepdad. Izuku jumped in the car and took off before they could get him. Izuku laughed and Dabai said, I banged Nana again, but we used protection this time. Izuku laughed, I took Nimiri's first kiss. Dabai asked, What did your future self tell you about your five future wives? Izuku said, My goal is to go beyond. You might have to call me Ash Ketchum because I'm going to catch them all. Dabai said, I see UK you know. Izuku said, I see UK you ness. They then time traveled to get King Arthur's sword, which they saw a battle which Dabai asked, Where are we at? Izuku said, This is Mordred's rebellion against King Arthur. Dabai asked, Who is Mordred? Izuku said, King Arthur's traitorous nephew. Dabai nodded which they landed on the battlefield seeing two women in armor fighting each other with swords. Izuku went up to them to ask, where is King Arthur? The two women stopped and the woman in blue armor said, that would be me. Izuku and Dabai were in shock which Dabai said, give us a moment. They turned around which Izuku said, King Arthur is a woman. Dabai said, historians aren't going to believe this. Izuku said, feminisms are going to celebrate this shit. Dabai said, Type Moon is going to shit themselves. They turned around which Dabai looked at the woman in red armor to ask, Are you Mordred? Mordred said, I'm the only Mordred I know. Which Izuku said, Don't mind us, keep fighting. The two women continued fight for a while which Dabai and Izuku were watching. Dabai got bored so he made some flames to surround everyone because it was getting cold as well. Then the two women ended each other which Izuku and Dabai went up to King Arthur. Arthur said, Take my sword and I would like it to be returned to the rock where I pulled it out from. King Arthur died which Dabai said, I'm sorry, but this is too cool to put back in a rock. The two went back to the time machine which Izuku said, next stop, alien building pyramids. Dabai rolled his eyes at the comment and the flew off to reach 88 miles per hour to head to Egypt. Izuku and Dabai looked out the window to see UFOs picking up huge pieces of rock to make the pyramids which Izuku said, I think knew it. Dabai looked at the UFOs to say, why, just why. They landed which the ancient Egyptians and aliens looked at them which Izuku said, Hello to those who speak our language. We are from the future of 2XXX ad, or really far into the future. An alien walked up to them to ask, This species developed time travel, tell me what your names are. Izuku said, I'm Izuku Midoriya, but I'm most known in the future as the anarchist. Dabai said, Dabai, just Dabai. The alien said, I'm Mark and we have come to your planet to experiment on our tractor beams to see how much weight they can handle. Izuku in amazement, that's what you came here for. Mark said, yep, we came to test our tractor beams and to learn about Earth. Dabai said, well that explains, well we want some gold artifacts to being back to show our friends. Mark lead them to where they made the artifacts, which they took a few of them, and headed back to the time machine. Izuku said, I'm glad I was right that aliens built the pyramids. Dabai gave the pharaoh a couple of weed seeds and told him how to enjoy them, which they knew that the world won't be affected that much by weed growing in Egypt. They got in the car and drove back to the present which Izuku said, that was fun, maybe next time we will find Recovery Girl when Gran Torino isn't around and show a good time. Dabai laughed, you're too damn funny. Izuku laughed, your future self didn't lie, you would smash again on her. Dabai chuckled, I want to make trips just to smash her, like every trip has to have to been where I get to visit her. Izuku asked, how does it feel to be Tamura's grandpa? Dabai said, it's still weird, but it's funny as hell. Like when he raises his voice at me, Jin and Atsuhiro would say, hey, show your grandpa some respect. Izuku laughed his ass off while they were unloading the cargo, which Izuku said, Mark was a good alien. I wish to know which planet he was from so we can look at it through the telescope. Dabai said, I still can't believe that King Arthur and Mordred were women. Izuku said, man, it's a good thing we saw it and you got the sword still. Dabai pulled it out of the car and said, I am the king of Britannia. They laughed their asses off until Izuku looked at the time. Then he said, I got to go do something. Izuku left to go to a French restaurant. He opened the door and sat to wait on someone. He looked at the clock which he heard, sorry to keep you waiting. He looked up to see Nimiri and he smiled, you came. She said, of course, my time traveler. Izuku went to pick up Uri to let her have some fun outside Kai's base and Izuku had some time to make this an all-day thing. Izuku took her to the beach to build sand castles, which they built a big sand castle and he taught her to swim. Izuku was being a proud godfather that she learned so fast. Everyone else looked at Izuku like he was a proud father. Yuri's sand castle got washed away which Izuku said, Don't cry, that's the fun of sand castles. You can start from scratch and make it better than the last one. Yuri looked at him to ask, Really? Izuku smiled, Really? Izuku and Yuri got in the Tesla which they were having fun until they heard a thud on the roof which Izuku stepped on the brakes. Hawks flew off which Izuku yelled, You better not have scratched the paint off this car. 
Hawks got up to say. This time you will be arrested anarchist. Izuku looked at Iri. Iri can you close your eyes and cover your ears? Iri did what Izuku asked. Then Izuku stepped on the gas to try to run over Hawks. Hawks flew up to avoid the car. Izuku said, Okay Iri, you can open your eyes for now. Iri uncovered her ears and opened her eyes which Izuku saw the traffic was getting heavier and he pushed a button to make the car start flying. Izuku and Iri were now in the air flying and Izuku said, I will show you the world from the sky. Iri looked at the places and buildings that she has been and see but she has never seen them in while flying. Iri smiled as she looked at the people were getting smaller and Izuku smiled. It's beautiful, don't you think? Iri smiled. It is Uncle Izuku. Izuku said, We are flying in the clouds that we were told we couldn't. We were told things that we couldn't do. Yet we can do it and we can do whatever we want. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Iri asked, Even if I want to grow up to be like you. Izuku looked at her. You want to grow up to be like me? Iri smiled. Yes, you are my hero. I want to grow up to be just like you. Izuku smiled. Of course you can be whatever you want to be, you can be just like me when you grow up. Iri cheered and Izuku thought to himself, I can't imagine grown-up Iri doing the same shit like me. I hope she finds a boy that will either put up or join in on her havoc. Wait, how will Kai react to Iri being chaotic like me? Wait what about that trip to the future? Was that Iri being chaotic like me or was she just a normal high-ranking Yakuza member? Izuku landed the car near the cat cafe for Iri to play with the kittens. Izuku watched her as she played with them. Then he got himself some coffee. He relaxed a bit. Then a kitten got on him which Izuku looked at it and smiled. Izuku looked at the collar and said, Mr. Muffins, you want to come to my place? The calico blue eyes kitten meowed which Iri said, There you are, Mr. Muffins. Izuku asked, You want me to adopt this kitten so you can play with it in my office or my house? Iri's eyes sparkled. Yes, please. Izuku then adopted Mr. Muffins, which everyone knows Izuku spoils Iri but Izuku denies it like Nixon denies Watergate which have led to the conclusion by everyone that he will spoil his kids as well, which Izuku will tell them that he can spoil his kids as much as he wants to. As Iri with Mr. Muffins got in the car, Izuku was restrained by Aizawa and his ashi which Izuku looked at the two, can you just let me be a good and responsible godfather for one day? Aizawa smirked, like you said once I don't discriminate. Izuku chuckled, I guess I have said that once. The shot was heard which his ashi fell to the ground in pain covering his private parts which Izuku looked in his car to see Iri had his car gun that was loaded with rubber bullets. Izuku teared up, I'm so proud. Aizawa let go of Izuku to check his friend which wasted no time to jump in the car to drive off which Izuku asked, Can I have the gun back? Iri handed the gun which Izuku put it away and said, You did a great job shooting the nuts, we are going to get ice cream. Iri cheered which Izuku thought, you know, Iri being chaotic like me would be cute as hell. Izuku drove Iri to get some ice cream which Izuku was telling her to wait about two or three years until he will teach her about shooting a gun properly. Iri smiled, but what about the hand-to-hand -hand combat? Izuku chuckled, maybe in one year, but let's have some fun for now. What do you say? Iri cheered and they were driving along until Izuku had to stop at the stoplight. As he stopped, his glove compartment opened up revealing his weed and acid stash. Iri asked, what is that? Izuku said, I will teach you about that when you get older. When you become 12. Iri pouted and Izuku closed the glove compartment and thought, I need to get a lock on that. They continued their way which Izuku asked, are you having a fun day? Iri said, yep. Izuku said, before I take you home, don't mention that I allowed you to shoot a gun and that there is stuff in my car. Iri nodded and Izuku took Iri back, which Izuku flew into his new house's garage. Izuku said, I'm going to enjoy this. Izuku brought Mr. Muffins inside the house which Melissa and Kyoko loved him. Izuku then laid down on the couch to watch the news which the only thing on the news about him was that he escaped Aizawa and Hazashi. Which Izuku was more interested in the stocks because he paid a person on the inside to give him some information on the future forecast in the stock market in Japan. Izuku learned that something unexpected will happen to a certain stock he now owns. Izuku then watched as these new pieces of stock he owned skyrocketed by over 10,000%, which Izuku smiled as it happened. Izuku laughed a bit which Sensei came in to ask, You okay? Izuku said, Yeah dad, my information was right and my new stock I bought just skyrocketed by over 10,000%. I'm very pleased about it as you can see. Sensei chuckled, I'm going to teach Tamura about stocks tomorrow, you want to help? Izuku smiled, Yeah, I'll help my big brother about the stock market and how to cheat them my way and you can show him your way. He will develop his own way from the combination of the two. They two agreed to it which then Kai called Izuku to tell him he has an emergency to deal with and Izuku must watch her tomorrow. Izuku looked at Gon which Izuku said, I guess I going to teach three people about how I do stocks tomorrow. Next day, Izuku picked up Iri, he had gone with him. Then he waited on Tamura after he was done with Sensei's version of doing it. Izuku and Sensei had similar ways of doing it, the differences was where they got their information from. 
Sensei had an unknown source from which Tamura learned about and Izuku bribed people in the stock market and government officials for the information. Izuku saw Tamura and asked, You ready to see how I do this thing? Tamura nodded. Gon knew what Izuku was going to do but he was taught from words and never seen it in action. And Ari was interested in what Uncle Izuku did. Izuku went to an expensive cafe which Tamura asked, What are we doing, if I may ask? Izuku smiled. You see I get my information here. I'm doing something illegal and getting away with it in plain sight. A man came in to sit across Izuku to say, Good afternoon, Mr. Midoriya. Izuku asked, Having a good day. The man sat down to say, Yep. Tamura noticed that Izuku brought a suitcase that looked exactly like the man's suitcase which they enjoyed their coffees. Which Izuku grabbed the man's suitcase and the man grabbed Izuku's suitcase. The man left which Izuku said, This is only the first step. Gon and Uri were watching while enjoying the milkshakes they got. Another man came in with another suitcase just like the one they got from the first man. They talked and then made the trade and they left. Izuku said, You see Tamura, I allow the two men to trade with each other without being near each other and this suitcase from the last guy is the information they copied an hour ago. They will usually do this with my men every couple hours, and we allow them to do insider trading without getting caught in the act. The end result, I get information from almost every business predicting what will happen in 12 hours after they are handed to me. Tamura in shock, every business. Izuku chuckled, yep, every business in Japan. They got warped to his office which Izuku opened the suitcase and looked at it and said, I should invest in copper and silver in two days because there are new mines found in Africa and South America that are about to hit the market. Tamura asked, why not invest in gold? Izuku smiled, I don't invest in things I steal. I have a vault for my gold I steal, after they have been melted down and put back into the system but under my name. After a while Izuku brought Uri and gone to play at the park which Izuku noticed Koda was there too. Izuku decided to pull out a newspaper to hide myself behind, which the newspaper was from two days ago, which as he was reading until he dozed off for a little bit. Izuku's mind. Izuku stood in the darkness to say, Every time I doze off, I end up here, can't I do normal things for once? Mirio said, Nope. Izuku said, So let's see what I want to do this time. Nana asked, Why are you like this? Izuku said, Do you not see my memories? Sensei Chang said, We saw them, but some people here don't understand your emotions. The sixth user said, I understand your emotions and pain because I was quirkless just like you before I learned I had a quirk at age 40. Izuku said, You are that late of a bloomer. The sixth user said, It turned out my quirk was that I can sense danger before it happened. The doctors thought it was nonsense until they tested it. It turned out I had the quirk since age 7 when it first appeared. Izuku asked, So you were told you didn't have a quirk until age 40? The sixth user said, Yep, we're right. Izuku said, That's fed up. Izuku sat in a chair, So what is it this time? The first user asked, You seem to hold a certain memory to yourself and we want to see why. Izuku looked at him, What do I get in exchange? Sensei Chang said, Less headaches. Izuku smiled, Which memory? They pointed at a locked door which Izuku looked inside to see a memory of a conversion with his favorite fighter back in his second week of training for his first match in the underworld. Izuku opened the door wide which everyone watched the conversion. Young Izuku asked, Why do you smile? Even when you lose. The fighter said, You see kid, all my life I thought it was nothing but a tragedy. The fighter smiled and chuckled, but then I realized it was actually a comedy. The fighter laughed and young Izuku thought about his statement then realized he can relate to it. Young Izuku started laughing with him and the fighter asked, Hey kid, who is more wrong a villain or the society that created the villain? Young Izuku said, Society. The fighter asked, Now here is the real question. Who is more wrong the society that created the villain or the government that made discrimination and hatred with created the said society? Young Izuku said, It's the government. Of course. The fighter laughed. You see people don't think about why the villain becomes the villain. The immortal villain became a villain to overthrow the government because how they treated quirked people when they first appeared. People with villainous quirks were set on the path to become a villain as soon as the quirk was revealed. Mutation quirks in most people's eyes are not human, as for the quirkless. As soon as the quirks became normal, they took the new government to make the society look at the quirkless as useless and they should just end themselves. Young Izuku looked at the fighter and realized he was right and asked. What if someone finally had enough and decided that if no one stood up to fight the unfair system then they would? The fighter laughed. What would they fight for besides equality, justice, and what not? A new government, new laws, a new country. The thing about governments are that they discriminate no matter what. Someone is always suffering while everyone else benefits. Young Izuku asked. What about no government? The fighter looked at him. No government. Young Izuku smiled. Think about it. No rules for people forced to follow. They follow their own moral rules and they live together under common moral rules. But one person doesn't have to follow another person's rules. No one discriminates because they don't have to be told by anyone that they have to discriminate. 
Everyone will share suffering and benefits, but one day they will all benefit from each other and live together in harmony. The fighter laughed. That sounds like a great idea kid, but that person has to have power. Not a quirk but power as an influence, but also have strength and muscle to back up that influence sometimes. But a quirk doesn't make a person. To me it's the path that the person took that makes the person. The memory ended leaving the users with many thoughts, which Mirio asked, who was he? Azuzu smiled, I didn't know his real name, but he went by the madman. I was inspired by him as you saw, he showed me his view. I saw a familiar vision like his except he believed that the only way to truly change society was to involve a few dead people. But we both saw the idea of freedom to everyone and that it was the government's fault that they made this horrible society. That it must be teared down to the ground and the idea of it will be forgotten. Izuku chuckled a bit which terrified a couple of the previous users. Which Izuku smiled big and wide. Thank you for letting me remember that wonderful memory. Sensei Chang said. That is one hell of a smile. Izuku said. Thank you Sensei Chang. I'm going to cause some chaos like I did back before I calmed down. I got a few things I want to test out. Izuku woke up to smile and said, I got them good, but I want to cause a lot of trouble like I used to do. Izuku was at his on his way to find some trouble to get himself into until he saw a vortex open up. He saw five armored men with guns, which one of them asked, are you the anarchist? Izuku smiled, yes I am. They pointed their guns at him which Izuku threw a smoke bomb at them, which Izuku escaped to the alleys for an advantage. As they went in one by one, Izuku looked down on the last one coming and attacked him. Izuku landed on him to cut a hole in one of the hoses connected to his mask and put sleeping gas in that hose. The other men pointed their guns at him which Izuku jumped up to dodge. Izuku noticed that their gun were laser and plasma based which his outfit can't protect him from that. One of the men shot a net at him to capture him, which right when they were going to come up to shoot him. He heard, not today. He saw a woman and seven kids jump down from the surrounding building to attack the men who attacked him. Izuku pulled out his butterfly knife to get himself out and joined in on the fun. The group of nine started beating the four remaining men which when they paced out, Izuku looked at the eight. Who are you, if I may ask? The white hair, red-eyed with a horn, wearing a plague mask like overhauls with a coat like Izuku's and dress shirt and pants said, Uncle Izuku, we saved you. Izuku asked, Iri. Iri said, Yes Uncle Izuku, it's me from 15 years in the future. Izuku smiled, You have grown up a lot. I'm proud. Iri chuckled, Thanks Uncle Izuku. Izuku asked, who are the rest of you kids and who are these guys? Yuri said, let's tie them up first. You get the armor and weapons, and we talk about this in your office. Izuku chuckled, you are super smart too. Who taught that? Yuri said, you silly. Izuku teared up a little bit, I taught you well. The nine tied the five men up, they warped to Izuku's base. Izuku dropped the weapons off at the workshop, put the five men in the new warehouse Sibis, and got to Izuku's office. Izuku sat down, I have a feeling you seven are some of my future kids. The seven nodded. A girl wearing glazes had blue eyes. Green hair wearing a brown leather motorcycle jacket with a black t-shirt and black jeans said, I'm Emily, I'm quirkless, and I'm known as Red Hood. A boy with blonde hair with glazes, green eyes, a black leather overcoat, green dress shirt, and black dress pants said, I'm George, my quirk is Dragon's Breath, and I'm known as Dragon. A boy with earphone jacks on his earlobes wearing black jean with an AC, DC t-shirt, and black denim jacket said, I'm Supai. My quirk is Hacker Jack which it works like mom but I can connect to devices and hack into anything as well. And I'm known as Spyware. A girl with blonde and green hair with one green eye and one gold eye said, I'm Kokoro. My quirk is blood copy which allows me to look like the person whose blood I drink and copy their quirk and keep it. I'm known as Vampira. A girl with dark purple hair and jade colored eyes wearing an ass and an outfit like what Midnight would wear said, I'm Yuki. My quirk is gas creation which allows me to make any gas, control its movement, and be immune to them. I'm known as Miss Mist. A boy with pink hair with green eyes wearing a lab coat with a bunch of gadgets all over him said, I'm Kamen. My quirk is focus. It's like my mom's quirk zoom except I can see smaller things and farther than she see can. I'm known as the mad scientist. Finally the last one was a green girl with vines and flowers on her hair with a red leather trench coat with black dress shirt, high heel boots, and sunglasses on set. I'm Psycho. My quirk is plants which is like mom's quirk vines but I can grow and control all plants and make plant monsters. I'm known as Poison Ivy. Izuku chuckled. Well I have raised my children well, do I have more? Iri said. These are seven of your most powerful children out of the twenty children you have. We have come back in time to save you from government assassins sent back in time to end you. Izuku smiled, so, they have decided to end me because I caused that much trouble in the future. Iri said, you, Sensei, Dad and Tamura took control over the economy and the government in the future to where the last of the government made the time machine you and Uncle Dabai like to drive around in. They made in but it only works for them once, so we came to save you from their only chance of ending you. Izuku was a little surprised Iri called Kai Dad but Izuku asked, 
Why don't they end me in the future? Kokoro said, they tried to, but you used the vampire mask to save yourself. Izuku smiled, I guess I have an assassination to plan for. The kids looked at the vampire mask on Izuku's wall and the Book of Immortality which Kamen said, you still have the book. Izuku asked, do I not of it in the future? Emily said, it's somewhere but we can't find it and Kamen always wanted to read it. Izuku pulled out a copy from his desk, here you go. Kamen ran to the book which Izuku smiled, who wants to help cause some trouble with their old man. Everyone in the room cheered which Izuku said, first we need to invite some people to the party. The league's base. Tamura, Kirajiri, Dabai, Toga, Jin, Adashiro, and Aguchi sat in the bar in boredom until the door got kicked down by Izuku. Izuku smiled. Hey guys, you want to cause some trouble with Iri from the future and my future kids? Everyone looked at Izuku in shock. Then future Iri and Izuku's future kids came in. Kokoro looked at Toga and ran to her. Mom. Kokoro hugged Toga and Toga giggled. Mom. I'm married to Izuku. Everyone else was in shell shock which Tamura said. Explain. Izuku told everyone on the whole government sent assassins to time travel to end him and how they saved him. Dabai asked, you only have seven kids. Emily said, no, he has 20 kids and 15 wives. It just we are the seven strongest children. They were in shock which Izuku smirked, 15. Those are rookie numbers. I need to pump those numbers up. Kirajiri shout, IZUK you know. Izuku shout, IZUK you yes. Dabai said, I want to come and join the chaos. George said, yes, we have Uncle Dabai. Adashiro said, I'm joining. Aguchi said, count me in. Toga giggled, yes. Jin said, I'll go. Tamura smiled, I guess I'll come too. Hirajiri said, okay kids, have fun. They left at the base which they headed off to go cause trouble and kick ass. Emily put on her red helmet and got on her motorcycle Izuku let her borrow. Izuku brought the firebird for Dabai, George, Iri, Toga, and Kokoro. And Aguchi was in his van with Atsuhiro, Supai, Tamura, Kamen, Saiko, Jin, and Yuki. Camino Square. They arrived at the square which Uri checked the event would cause any problems to the timeline. She saw that they actually have to be there to kick some hero ass. Izuku looked at it to say, how convenient. Kamen pulled out a gun to shoot at a building which the build shrank to where a person could pick it up. Izuku went up to him to ask, you mind if I ask for blueprints for that? Kamen said, sorry dad, but I'm not allowed to. Izuku nodded, I understand. Supai plugged his earphone jack into a light pole and caused a blackout on the entire city, which Izuku laughed, impressive. Emily challenged Izuku into a shooting competition, which Izuku asked, why? Emily smiled, because you said that no one could beat you in a shooting competition at age 16. I want to see if that's true. Izuku smiled and shot one rubber bullet that took out down five police officers without looking. Emily in shock, I can't that. How? Izuku said, I'm the best in Japan, I can beat Snipe in a shooting competition. George was showing off his flames that come in different colors which each color represents different heat levels and Dabai joined him to set stuff on fire. Takoro explained her quirk to Toga and Tamura then showed off all her different quirks. Tamura was impressed and Toga was in awe, while Yuki made sleep gases and other gases to show to Adashiro and Jin which they were impressed. Saiko was making plant monsters to run around and causing damage which Izuku smiled. This is fun as hell, what do you all think? Iri laughed. Yes, it is Uncle Izuku but where are the heroes? Kamen looked at his device and saw that there are army men and heroes coming in. Izuku saw them and said, let them have it. The League, Iri. And Izuku's children charged at the force without hesitation. Saiko made big plant monsters that are similar to Nomus but she can control them to attack the army men. Emily and Izuku were having a shooting contest to see who can take down the most heroes. George and Dabai were roasting the incoming heroes and army men. Kamen pulled out weapon to take down helicopters and flying heroes. Kokoro used multiple quirks to destroy many heroes with ease, while Yuki knocking people out left and right. The rest of the league were kicking as which the heroes and army men realized they were being slaughtered by them and ordered a full retreat. All Might came in which Emily said, You brought an army and All Might, but we brought a Kokoro. Kokoro started using multiple quirks to make herself very powerful, which she smiled. If my dad can beat you without a quirk then I can beat you with ease. All Might came in to punch her, but she grabbed his arm and threw him while yelling, Y-E-T. She threw All Might about 50 miles away from their position, which Izuku said, I love you kids, give your old man a hug. They all came to hug Izuku which Izuku smiled, I'm hungry, who wants to eat at my place? They all cheered which Izuku called up Kirajiri to warp him to his place, which when they came inside Izuku's house they saw Sensei, Inko, Gon, Melissa, Kayoka, and Mei. George and Emily went over to Melissa to shout, Mom. Supai went up to his Kayoka to say, Hey Mom. Kamen went to Mei to say, Mother, it's good to see you. Melissa, Kayoka, Mei, and Ko, and Sensei were in shock which Melissa said, Izuku can you explain? Futuriri explained what happened which Sensei was interested in their quirks and found them interesting. 
He loved Kokoro because it's similar to his quirk except it doesn't take quirks. Inko was happy to see her future grandchildren. Sensei and Inko were trying to get used to being called Grandma and Grandpa. They got dinner made for everyone which they sat around and discussed the future where they are from. They told them about Izuku's wives, kids, and his immortality, which Tamura said, that is what that creepy mask in your office is. It turns you into a vampire if you wear it with blood on it. Izuku chuckled. It's for emergency use only and I guess I found an emergency big enough to use it. Sensei said, I heard some people want to destroy those masks for good, but I doubt you will let them destroy it. Izuku chuckled. Exactly. But here is my question to my kids. Do I get a robotic eye like when I went to the future one time? Yuri smiled. Nope, you came prepare for it. Izuku smiled. Great. Yuri and Izuku's future kids finished up dinner and opened a portal which Izuku smiled. I can't wait to see each and every one of you again. They waved at him as they walked into the portal and Izuku said, I'm going to get some rest then first thing in the morning is to turn the assassin from the future into Nomas. Sensei chuckled. Genius idea. Izuku. Izuku smiled. Thanks dad. Izuku was enjoying his morning until he got a phone call. He picked it up. Hello, this is the anarchist. Jiren on the other line. Help me. I'm getting kid. The phone cut off which Izuku looked at his phone to see where it came from which he headed out to see who attacked Jiren. Izuku warped to the location to see Jiren being dragged in a van and van taking off. Izuku chased after it. But he wasn't fast enough so he threw a tracking device on it. Izuku Hen called to get warped back to his base to get his new armor his men, Melissa, and Mei made. Izuku was glad to get Mei to work with Melissa to produce even better technology. The new armor was a new and improved version of the X2 which got its title X3. Izuku put the armor on the fly to where the van which was at a secure building with a lot of men. He then he notices one of the men. He saw the head of the detonator at Ko. Riki Ayatsubashi came to say a few words with Jiren as Jiren was escorted in the building. Izuku said, Mother Fur, I'm going to F him up. Izuku went up to the building to kick some ass. The men noticed him and one of them said, Turn around. Izuku wasted no time and shot all of the men with quirk erasing bullets then said, Dumbasses, should have just started shooting. He went up the stairs to enter the building which everyone started attacking with their quirks. Izuku sighed as none of their attacks affected him in any way, which Izuku used the minigun he had on the armor to shoot everyone up. The bullets were either quirk erasing or rubber which took everyone on the first floor down. Izuku then took the elevator which he went to the top floor. Top floor. Rikia was panicking that his guards outside his building and on the first floor were gunned down by one man. Jiren laughed. He is coming to get me out of here. Rikia in anger. Who? Jiren smiled. My business partner. The anarchist. Rikia in anger. You're telling me that he can cause this much damage by himself and he will go this far for you. The door opened to reveal Izuku in his armor. You bet your ass. Rikia was in fear which Izuku came over to knock him out then went over to Jiren to free him. Jiren said, you made yourself a powerful enemy here. He has 100,000 man army. Izuku grabbed Rikia to carry him on his shoulder. It's him and his army versus 5,000 men and women in the X2 power armor, 3,000 Nomas, 250 high ends, and one Izuku mother Fing Midori. He and his army are nothing compared to me. Jiren chuckled. Okay, let's get out of here. Izuku and Jiren stepped into a warp gate Kirajiri made for them to go torture their prisoner. Building Sibis. Rikia woke up to see Izuku and Jiren looking at all the torture tools which Izuku said, You see this hammer Jiren, I broke my father's wrists with this hammer. Izuku slapped the top of a generator to say, This bad boy is what you would use to jumpstart a military jet's battery. Jiren smiled, Interesting. What about that? Izuku looked to see that Jiren was interested in a certain device, which Izuku said, The finger snapper, that snaps a person's finger off slowly and painfully. Jiren grabbed it then looked at Rikia to say, I know which tools I'm going to use. Izuku left it, have fun. Izuku left his office to go to do something he does in private that no one knows about. Not even Dabai knows about it. Church. Izuku drove to a church to then walk into the confession box to do his weekly confession. The church's priest came into the other side of the box which Izuku said, Forgive me father for I have sinned a lot. It's been a week since my last confessions. The priest said, What are these sins you want to get off your chest? Izuku said, I have been lying to one of my future wives that I would stop smoking weed for a while to keep the baby safe from secondhand smoke but I've been smoking in private. I have tortured a few people. I saved my business partner but I erased the quirks of those preventing me from saving him. I have been doing acid lately. And the priest said, Mr. Midoriya slow down. I am trying to process all your sins. Every week you come with more sins which I'm pretty sure we can make a book about them. Izuku chuckled. I bet we could. Father Amida. Father Amida asked. Why do you keep coming here if you are just going to sin again? Izuku looked at the screen. I wasn't a religious person when I was younger because of many things. When I first read the Bible, I thought it was just nonsense but I read Joshua, Matthew, and John. Those are my favorites because I could relate with them a little. 
But I guess I keep coming back to find comfort that there might be someone is watching over me. Father Amida said, Yes, it is comforting to have the Lord watching each and every one of us. He watches me, you, someone who was just born in the someone's last breath. Izuku asked, Where was he when my father left me, when everyone went against me, and other things? Father Amida chuckled, It's all a part of his plan. Think about it if you weren't bullied, your father didn't abandon you, and you had a quirk. Would you take the path you took and made a difference in the world? Izuku said, Nope. Father Amida said, You see he was watching you develop and grow into what you are today. Now he didn't like what happened to you, but he knew it was for you to become what you are today. He will forgive you of all sin and he will watch over you to help provide guidance. Izuku nodded. This is an interesting talk Father Amida. Izuku got out the box to go screw around town and try to get in trouble with the authorities. Which Izuku drove up to see that Hawks was flying around like a jackass which Izuku pulled out his pistol to shot Hawks a shoal with a rubber bullet. Which Izuku yelled, yes, right up mainstream. Hawks landed on the ground which Izuku parked next to him to say, Dumbas. Izuku then drove off laughing which he continued his way to screw around. He stopped at a coffee shop. He got out of the car and walked into the shop. But he saw a portal open up in the alley which he saw a green hair girl and a black hair girl flew out of it. The green hair girl said, it worked Danny. The black haired girl with stitches, purple and pale white skin. Danny said, where the hell are we, Izumi? Izumi said, we should be in another dimension. Quick let's find our co. Izumi and Danny looked at Izuku which he smiled. So, you are a female version of me. Izumi smiled, and you're my male version. Izuku called Kirijiri to warp Dabai to his location. When Dabai came, he was speechless. Dabai looked at Izuku. What the F, Izuku? Izuku smiled. You know what this means. Izuku and Izumi giggled at the same time. Izumi smiled. I will bring the machine to bring my friends to meet your friends. Izuku quickly said, come to my base of operations. Izuku's office. Sensei. Kai. And the rest of the league appeared at Izuku's office which Izuku and Dabai came out to say, Hey guys, you are probably wondering why I brought you all here. Well we are being visited by ourselves from another dimension. Be prepared for them and don't freak out. Everyone was confused but then they saw themselves but in the opposite genders. Toga looked at her male version, Togo and they played around with knives. The two senseis looked at each other and left to get a drink because this was too damn weird. Tamura and Tamaru looked at each other like they were scarred for life, while Jin and Jan were admiring each other. Kai and Kim looked at each other in interest but were disturbed at the same time. They went for a drink with the two senseis. Izuku asked, Hey Izumi. Izumi said, Yes. Izuku asked, If we banged, is it incest or masturbation? Everyone looked at the two then had a debate on the subject, which they headed to Izuku's meeting room to present their argument. Dabai got up to say, You two are made of the same DNA but are from different dimensions. You are the exact same except by gender so I conclude that it may be both. Everyone finally agreed to it which Izumi said. We will never truly know unless we try it. Kurajiri shouted, Izumi no. Izuku said, she's right. Kurajiri shouted, Izuk you know. Izumi and Izuku shouted, yes. Danny said, don't do it. You already have your boyfriends back at our dimension. You can't be going dimension to dimension to bang whoever you want. Izumi smirked, what's wrong with that? Izuku smiled, yeah, what is wrong with that? Dabai said, listen to yourselves, this is wrong in every way. Izuku said, but I always wanted to F myself. Izumi said, same. Everyone face palmed, except Toga and Togo because they wanted to see it. Which Dabai said, how about we destroy some stuff to distract you from the subject? Izumi and Izuku said, Rolls Royce. They looked at each other then they ran to Izuku's Rolls Royce. Tamura asked, how did we get here? Tamaru said, I have no idea at this point. Izumi does the craziest things I have ever witnessed. The two went to the bar to get a drink, which almost everyone followed. Dabai and Danny went to smoke some weed together to clear their minds from this. Izuku and Izumi were in the car which Izumi pulled out her guns from her leather jacket which Izuku asked, Do you have pictures of female All Might, female Mirio, female Sir F-Face, and female Endeavor? Izumi giggled. You mean All Might, Mirio, Lady F-Face, and Flaming Cougar? Izumi gave Izuku the pics which he put them in his pocket and gave her the male pics. Izuku asked, How big is your harem? Izumi said, Five so far, but still growing. Izuku said, five girls for me and still growing. Izumi said, I'm glad I found my male version of myself. People call me a whore because I have multiple love interests. Izuku said, tell them to go F themselves and sent them dildos made of gold for them to shove up their asses. Izumi laughed, I'm borrowing the golden dildos ideas because it's too good. They stopped at the Sir Nidai agency which Izuku said, let's F some shit up. They walked around the parking lot to find his car which they too took the tires off, then the doors, then the hood, then the seats of the car. Izuku said, Okay let's call up Kirijiri to warp a few items here. Izumi giggled, Make sure it's enough to leave him speechless. Kirijiri warped dildos, some gasoline, matches, a package of pictures of Sir Nidai's as tattoo of All Might, and Izuku mixtape. 
They got everything set up then watched as Sir went to his car, which he looked at and was speechless. His tires and seats were on fire. The hood of his car had pictures of his as tattoo, the seats in his chair were made of dildos, and Izuku's mixtape was playing. The two laughed their asses off until Sir looked at the two. Izuku said, later fool. They ran back to the car to drive off and escape a few heroes. Izumi was shooting heroes while Izuku was drifting through traffic. Izuku then saw that traffic was getting heavier so he flipped it to flying mode. They flew around the city for a while. Izumi said, We have about two hours before me and my friends head back what should we do? Izuku said, I would like the blueprints for your machine and we should smash. Izumi said, I agree with both of the ideas. Izumi unzipped Izuku's pants to give him a blowjob to start it off. Two hours later, everyone met up to where they met which female sensei asked, Where are Izumi and Izuku? They shrugged then saw the two walking up which Izumi said, Let's head back. Izuku said, I will come to your world to visit and cause some havoc with you soon. The reverse genders went back which Tamura said. That was interesting but disturbing. Everyone agreed, except a few which Toga said, I liked my male version, he was a fun guy. Dabai said, Danny and I had a competition to see who could smoke the most weed before we get super stone. Izuku asked, who won? Dabai looked at him with his red eyes. Who won what? Izuku patted his back, I'll ask later. They left which Izuku went to his office. I have now officially fed myself, I never thought I can suck deck that well. Izuku looked at the device then he put it on himself then continued his conversion with Dabai, Dabai, it was worth it. Now when anybody tells me to go f myself, I can say, I already have, but I'll show you if wonder how. Dabai said, Izuku, with the actual f. Izuku said, Dabai, she sucked my deck like it was scripture, it was beautiful. Dabai said, stop, there are things I don't want to hear, and this is one of those things. Izuku laughed, anyways I going to her dimension to help her cause some destruction and I might bang her with a few women. Dabai said, if you bang Danny, we are no longer friends. Izuku looked at him, okay, I won't bang Danny, but I will bang Shoto's gender bend. Dabai sighed, okay have fun. Izuku turned on the device which warped him to his destination. Dabai sighed, I need some alcohol to forget that conversion. Izumi's dimension. Izuku landed at Izumi's office which Izuku looked around to say, looks the same as mine. Izumi came into her office to see Izuku. She smiled, you developed it pretty fast. Izuku smiled. Well if I didn't have the alien tech, it would have taken longer. Izumi chuckled. You want to cause some damage. Izuku quickly said, please. They got in Izumi's pink Tesla and they drove around the city to then find Eraserhead and Popstar which the two stopped in front of them. Izuku and Izumi came out which Eraserhead asked, Miss Anarchy? Who is this? Izumi smiled. This is the anarchist. He is a male version of me from another dimension. The two heroes looked at him and were terrified that Izumi had the tech to travel through dimensions. But what terrified them the most was she brought version of her where the only difference is gender. Izuku chuckled, God damn, Aizawa and Yamada as women are hot as hell. Eraserhead blushed, what the hell? I need therapy after this shit. Izuku smiled, how about I can be your therapist? Popstar said, Jesus Christ, he is flirt with you, Sarah. Izuku pointed at Popstar, don't worry you're next, I'm shareable. There is enough of me to go around ladies. Izumi laughed her as off from the comment which then All Might came in to ask, what is going on? Izuku shouted, God damn, All Might as a woman is thick. Eraserhead told All Might the situation and she was in shock which Izumi said, Wait until you see her in her weakened form. She isn't that thick as you say. Izuku said, I would still put the smash in her Detroit smash. The three heroes were beyond scarred by Izuku which Izuku and Izumi pulled out their smoke grenades to then drive away from the heroes. Izumi said, I got some dildos made gold. I'm going to drop them off at Lady Whorehouse's place. Izuku laughed, Lady Whorehouse. They went to her agency to drop off the package then headed back to Izumi's hideout. Izuku asked, do you and Danny do time traveling adventures? Izumi looked at him, you can time travel but not dimensional travel. Izuku looked at her, you can dimensional travel but not time travel. Izuku then handed her the time machine blueprints to make it even for giving him the dimensional travel machine. Izuku looked around her place looking at technologies they can trade. Izuku looked at chambers and asked, what are these for? Izumi said, oh those are my children, like I took my boyfriend's sperm and my eggs, then put them in those chambers to grow into babies. When they reach nine months, I will get them out and raise them like normal children. Izuku said, that's smart actually, you can have children without raising them in your body and you don't have to struggle doing your work while carrying a child. You also don't have to feel the pain of giving birth either. Izumi said, these chambers also gives them nutrients, vaccinates them, makes sure they don't get birth defects, and the chambers are bulletproof. Izuku admired the tech she has, but they shared their tech and they traded. Izuku saw Shoto's female version which Izumi called Shalka. Izuku went up to her, aren't you a beauty? So, you want to have some fun? Izumi got up to say, 
Have fun, I got to go pick up my godson Ren and go on his play day. Shaoka makes sure he doesn't get in too much trouble. Izumi got warped out which Izuku chuckled. Well it's just you and me, you want to screw around. Shaoka said, you can't cause too much trouble. Izuku pulled out his golden blunt and said, we can just chill in here. They light the blunt up in a while Shaoka asked. If corn oil is made from corn, vegetable oil is made from vegetables. What is baby oil made from? Izuku giggled. If Apple made a car, would it have windows? The two laughed their asses off. Izuku with wide eyes. If you think about it, a human came out of a human because a human came in a human. Shaoka shock. Holy shit. What is this? Izuku chuckled. God's lettuce. It is 50 times more potent than Ghost and Bruce Banner combined. Shaoka said. This is the stuff Izumi needs to get. Izuku leaned over to say, You know what I think we lie down and ask ourselves this. Shauka asked, What should we ask ourselves? Izuku asked, What were we talking about? Shauka said, I don't remember. Izuku asked, You want a bang? Shauka looked at him, F it, I want to see this 9-incher Izumi was talking about. Izuku took off his pants and whipped out his 9-incher, which Shauka in shock, Jesus that's huge. Izuku chuckled, I know. It can be a hassle sometimes, but the women love it like crazy. One hour later, Izuku woke up to say, God damn I tired, I guess I will get home before they send a rescue team to get me. Izuku got dressed which Shauka asked, Will you come back? Izuku chuckled, of course. Izuku warped back to his home dimension to find Dabai across from him. Izuku smiled, I had a shit ton of fun Dabai. Dabai asked, you look like it, who did you bang? Izuku smiled, Shauka, Aka, Shoto's gender bend. Dabai face palmed, why? Just why? Izuku said, because I wanted to, and I will celebrate with a beer later. Dabai said, one day, this will bite you in the as later. Izuku chuckled, you believe so? I mean you should go f yourself, like you should bang Danny. Dabai sighed, let's not talk about this topic again, it disturbs me the most at the moment. Izuku laughed, my next travel will be me going to find a hero version of myself and kick his. Dabai laughed, that would be funny to watch, but what about if the heroes get involved? Izuku smirked, I will kick their asses equally and they will learn a lesson on not to mess with me. Dabai laughed as Izuku set up the next dimensional travel to that said universe which Izuku got prepared for any attack. He looked at Dabai to ask, you sure you don't want to come? Dabai shrugged, nah, someone has to watch your place while you are gone. I'm not trusting Jin with that task. Izuku sighed, I tried to get Tamura or Atashiro to do it, but they are busy at the moment. Izuku got warped to go to his next dimension to F with and to fight someone. Classroom. Izuku and his fellow classmates were in claws during a lesson which Aizawa looking bored as usual but still teaching. Then a portal opened, and a teen landed in front of claws. The teen in a black leather trench coat with a green dress shirt and black dress pants looked at Izuku to say, Well I have found my hero version of myself, now it's time to kick your ass. Aizawa used his capture equipment but the teen grabbed it and pulled Aizawa towards him, which the teen ran up to him to punch him at incredible speeds to the chest to then punch him really hard in the face to knock him out. The teen looked up to say, Okay, Aizawa is down, now you, fight me. Iraraka got up to ask, Who are you and what do you mean when you call Deku Hiromi? Bakugo got up to attack the teen which the teen shot him in the deck to say, It's exactly what I mean, my name is Izuku Midoriya. The villain known as the anarchist who fights to show the world that quirkless people are not worthless, not waste of life, and can rival quirked people. Now I have come for one purpose and one purpose alone. Deku come and fight me. The other teachers came in and heard what the anarchist said which Nezu said, I will not allow one of my students to get hurt from you, Phil. The anarchist shot Nezu's foot to say, Shut up, you rodent. I want to fight and I'll leave when the fight is over. The anarchist turned to see Izuku about to punch him which the anarchist blocked the punch which Izuku was in shock that this villain version of him can withstand his powerful punch. The anarchist chuckled, This suit can withstand All Might's strongest punch in recorded history up to ten times. You think one punch that will break your arm will hurt me? Izuku said, I will not let you hurt anyone else, including Kaken. Bakugo shouted, What the hell you're doing nerd? The anarchist laughed, You are protecting the bully that made our lives hell, you are definitely worth getting your is handed to you. I will tell you what. The anarchist injected a stim pack into Izuku which Izuku jumped back to see his arm was fully healed. The anarchist said, Meet me at Jim Gamma, if you bring cops, I will come back with 300 gnomus and 25 high-end claws gnomus. If anyone interfere with our fight, the anarchist pulled out his quirk erasing gun. I will erase their quirk for good, and I will let you know Deku that I may be quirkless, but if you hold back then I will break every bone in your body. The anarchist left to go to Jim Gamma to wait for Izuku which Shoto said. He's has to be bluffing, there is no way he is quirkless. All Might looked at the anarchist, what happened to him to go down this path? Bakugo still in pain, why didn't that bastard give me that instant heal instead of Deku? Izuku said, I'll fight him. Everyone looked at him like he was crazy then All Might asked, why? 
Izuku said. I can see it in his eyes that he just wants a fight and he will leave like he said. He doesn't seem like the guy who would lie. Nezu in pain. You think you can beat him? Izuku said. I'll try, but I need to figure out how to get past that suit he is wearing. Fifteen minutes later, the anarchist looked at the sky then saw Izuku in his costume. The anarchist laughed his as off which Izuku glared at him, what's so funny? The anarchist said, you outfit is impractical, it reminds me too much of All Might, and you also look like a green rabbit, my goddaughter is going to love this. The anarchist took a picture of Izuku which Izuku asked, goddaughter. The anarchist smiled, the cutest girl on the planet, her name is Iri and I'm her godfather. Izuku was in shock but the anarchist said, okay the rules are to beat the shit out of your opponent until they can't continue and there will be no ending. Ida said, no ending. The anarchist said, I'm not the kind of man who ends, I like to beat up heroes, a shoals, rapists, and villains who piss me off, but I'm not a ender. So Deku, do you accept the rules of our fight? Izuku nodded which then they charged at each other to begin the fight of villain the anarchist versus the hero Deku. The anarchist and Deku met fist to fist which caused the ground to cave in. The anarchist activated the electric suit button to make himself a human taser. Deku felt the electricity flow in him so he jumped back which the anarchist chuckled, can't handle a few hundred volts. Deku said, I will not let you hurt anyone else again. The anarchist smiled, oh, well I have found a fighter. Well I am a man of my word, so no one will be hurt by our fight and after our fight, unless they piss me off. Deku got angry then attacked the anarchist which Deku said, one for all, one million percent. The anarchist in wide eyes, don't you fing dare. Deku's fist met with the anarchist's chest which blew away the part of the suit that protected his chest. The anarchist grabbed Deku and threw him on the ground to say, what the f is wrong with you? Deku glared, what do you mean? The anarchist said, why the f would you end yourself like he did? Deku looked at him to ask, like who? The anarchist whispered in his ear, the ninth user of one for all, Mirio Tagata. He died in our fight from using that move too many times. His body couldn't handle that much power. And you sure as hell can't survive if you keep doing that. The anarchist got up to ask, I ask you to never use that again, for your own safety. Everyone looked at him in shock which Deku asked, why do you care about me? The anarchist said, when Mirio died, I lost more than a rival. I lost a friend, a reason to truly enjoy fighting heroes, and a person who took our fight seriously. I have spiraled out of control a little bit from his death, but seeing you doing what he did, makes me angry that you are making the same mistake. Deku looked at him, so, what are you going to do? The anarchist smiled, I will postpone this fight until you control 50% of your power and I will help you reach it. Everyone looked at him in confusion. All Might asked, what makes you think you will be any help? Izuku walked over to a stone bench, he punched it and it broke in half. He turned around to say, keep in mind, I'm quirkless. I would like to see Deku do that without using his quirk. The claws and teachers were scared shitless from the raw strength that this Izuku possessed which the anarchist came over to put a stim pack into Deku's broken arm to fix it. The anarchist whispered in his ear, how much of one for all can you control? Deku whispered, 20%. The anarchist sighed, I can get you to 50% in one month. In that time frame I will not hurt anybody unless they piss me off. If Bakego over there calls me weak, nerd, or god forbid Deku, I will beat his as black and blue. That is just warning. But you have my word I wouldn't attack anybody for no reason. But I'm going to help you get stronger so we can have an actual fight where you don't have to break your bones for our fight. Do we have a deal? Deku looked at everyone which they were had no idea if they should accept it. Nezu asked, how do we know you wouldn't bring an army back to take over the school? The anarchist said, I don't need an army to take over the school, I can conquer this school single-handedly. But I won't take over the school, because I see no reason to. Present Mike asked, What did you gave Mr. Midoriya? The anarchist said, Stim pack. It's a medicine that my scientist made to instantly heal any wound. I will be using a lot of it for Deku's training. All Might asked, How will you be training young Midoriya? The anarchist smiled, Same way I trained. Blood, sweat, broken bones, ripped muscles, and tears. Also, I will teach him about fighting quirkless because his moves aren't horrible. But it's bad. Recovery girl out to ask, who is the one who broke Aizawa's ribs? The anarchist scratched his head. That would be me, Mrs. Shuzenji. He pulled out Anther Stim Pack to say, give him this, it will fix his ribs and give him back his energy. Suyu asked, why are you being nice suddenly, Kiro? The anarchist smiled, I may be a villain but I have standards. I'm not ending anybody, on purpose anytime soon. But I would also think this is going to be fun. Deku asked, fun? The anarchist smiled, that is the one thing I strive for and that is fun. I am not evil, just a free spirit. Now I need to get another shirt because it's a chilly here. Everyone noticed his eight-pack with scars and tattoos which when he took the rest of his shirt off to reveal more muscles and tattoos, the girls blushed like hell. Midnight was running on over to get the anarchist, but the teachers were holding her back which Izuku smiled, released Nimuri. I like it when she comes on over to attack me. 
The teachers looked at him which present Mike asked. What? Izuku smirked. She is one of my girlfriends in my dimension, so let her come and get me. The claws were in shock that this Izuku had multiple girlfriends which Midnight broke free and Izuku welcomed her with open arms. Which Aizawa came out to stop her which the anarchist sighed. Party pooper. The other teachers told Aizawa the situation which Aizawa said, If I were Midoriya, I would take up the offer. He is offering to improve you in exchange for a safe fight. He said he looks for entertainment and trouble. Give him the entertainment and then he will leave forever right. The anarchist smirked. Well yes, but actually no. I might visit you all again after the fight to screw you and maybe look for some stuff. The anarchist looked at his watch and said, You want the deal or not? I got something important to go to. Deku asked, What do you have to go to? The anarchist said, I got to go to the House of Counselors and House of Representatives with my stepdad, then go announce myself as the new owner of the Tokyo Electric Company. Everyone looked at him in shock which Deku asked, Stepdad. The anarchist sighed, Yeah, mom found love years after dad left us, but do you accept the deal or not? Deku looked at his head then him to say, I will take the deal. They shook hands which the Deku asked, Who is your stepdad? The anarchist looked at him in the eyes, Promise you and everyone here wouldn't freak out. Everyone nodded in fear by the incoming answer which the anarchist said, All for one. All Might coughed out a lot of blood. Deku fainted. Everyone was in shell shock which the anarchist took pictures to say, I'll be back by tomorrow around 7 in the morning and I will bring a few things. The anarchist warped back to his dimension, leaving the everyone in horror and shock. The anarchist's dimension. Izuku got back to say, I'm finally home, well time to go to government with dad, but I need to get changed first before I go. Izuku went to his office to get in his black business suit to then looked at his watch to say, I got time. Izuku wrote down his plan with Deku in his notebook to then hide it in his desk. He then saw Kirajiri's warp gate to which he then walks through it to finish the rest of his day. The next day, Izuku got the dimension traveling device on then looked at his stuff he was bringing with him. He went through the check, a few training dummies. Check, five gnomas. Check, two high ends. Check, a crate of stim packs. Check, and headache relief pills. Check, well to go back to that dimension and improve the shit out of this Deku. Izuku then set the device to warp the stuff around him as well and then he warped. Deku's dimension. Deku, his claws, Aizawa, and All Might stood at Jim Gamma at 6.59 in the morning wait to what the anarchist had in store for Deku. Then at 7, they saw a portal open and saw the anarchist with training dummies, five gnomas, two high ends, and a crate which he said, I'm back with the stuff. Aizawa and All Might were worried about the gnomas and high ends which one high end asked, Where are we Uncle Izuku? The anarchist said, We are in another dimension, Drax. We are helping this version of me get stronger so we can have a proper fight. Drax said, Oh. That's interesting Uncle Izuku. Everyone was I complete shocked by the chain of events that were unfolding in front of them. Momo asked, why does he call you Uncle Izuku? The anarchist smiled, you see I'm in charge of one of the Namu factories and since I'm not their father, I tell them to call me Uncle Izuku because I don't like being called master. All Might asked, why did you bring these gnomas with you? The anarchist said, I'm not carrying these dummies, the crate of stim packs we are going to use, and they will also be used for Deku's training. The anarchist punched one of the gnomas and looked at Deku with a sadistic smile. They all have shock absorption as well. I'm going to break that weak body of yours and rebuild it. Deku asked, what am I supposed to do first? The anarchist went up to one of the dummies to punch and kick it with incredible speed and power until the dummy broke into pieces. The anarchist looked back to say, remember I'm quirkless, you will train quirkless then train your quirk, then give you a fighting style to learn because you have no real style. Back Hugo yelled, What kind of bullshit is this? The anarchist sighed then took one of his headache reliefs to say, That will be your only warning Bakugo. Everyone was in shock by how bold this Izuku was compared to their Izuku which Bakugo's vein popped out and he yelled, What did you just called me? The anarchist said, Bakugo doesn't like his name. Well I could call you Little Dick, Kakan, or even better Bush. Ciro asked, Bush. The anarchist chuckled, Bush did 9-11. Bakugo got triggered by this Izuku which the anarchist chuckled. If he attacks me, I wouldn't hesitate to break his hands like I would do to Bakego in my dimension. Deku asked, Why are you like this? The anarchist pulled out a chair that Drax carried for him which he asked, You sure you want to know? Deku nodded which the anarchist began to tell his story to Deku. They shared the same story until the part where the anarchist snapped and fought back. They were in shock by the events he went through which he smiled. But honestly I would go through it again. Deku asked, Why? The anarchist smiled, if I didn't go down this path, I wouldn't have given quirkless people around the world to look forward to the future. I wouldn't have this technology, an army, be a godfather, made friends, erased Bakego's quirk, and gotten revenge on the people who destroyed my dreams and abused me. In the end it was worth it and I would do it again in a heartbeat. All Might asked, why did I, in your world, told you that you couldn't be a hero? 
The anarchist chuckled. He said he didn't want me to get hurt, because quirkless people were more likely to get heavily injured than quirked people, but he didn't know that I had already hurt myself to become stronger. Well no need to cry over spilled milk. Well come on Deku and show me what you got on those dummies. But don't use your quirk because I want to train your body first then your quirk. Deku nodded then went up to a dummy to attack it. But after the first punch he felt pain, which the anarchist said, I forgot to mention that the dummies are made of marble rock. They are pretty hard to break. Also remember to train smart and hard. Always have a plan on things like this. The claws left to do stuff. So all might watch the two which the anarchist sighed. This is going to be hard. While Deku was getting his knuckles broken and repaired repeatedly then he asked, How did you break these dummies? The anarchist smiled. Well I guess I have to spoil the surprise. Hit the same spot over and over again with all your strength but not quirk until it breaks. Deku then realized he was right and thought about the USJ which all might beat that Namo. He got back to the dummy which all might asked. Did you really have to start off with a training dummy made rock? The anarchist chuckled. Well when I started training at age 12 with wooden dummies, I got to stone dummies. Now I use shock absorption Nomus to train and he is doing fine. Deku broke a dummy but broke his knuckles which the anarchist said. Good job, you broke one dummy in 30 minutes and broke your knuckles like 15 times. Deku shouted, what the hell? The anarchist said, there we go, I guess I'm also help you grow a pair as well. Well let's get you fixed up and we have. The anarchist looked at the dummies to say, 10 more dummies until we move to using Nomus. Midnight came out and All Might asked, can I ask why you came? Midnight said, to help keep an eye on you three. The anarchist smirked, hey Nimiri, you want to sit on my lap or you want me to sit on your lap? All Might and Deku were in shock then Midnight smiled, sit on my lap little Shota. The anarchist got up for Midnight to sit down then he sat on Midnight's lap, which she giggled sadistically. It's been two weeks since the anarchist has been training Deku which he has been improving a lot. Deku has been controlling one for all easier than before and he can use more of it. Deku's shirts have gotten too small for him to wear which the anarchist has given him shirts, but they were the anarchist merchandise shirts. The teachers and students didn't feel comfortable seeing shirts of a villain version of Deku, which Midnight asked, Why do you really want to come to this dimension? The anarchist was sitting on her lap and he drank some vodka in a water bottle. Originally I came for the idea of a win-win fight, where in a way I kick my own as either way, since he is me and I am him. Izuku Midoriya kicked Izuku Midoriya's as will be a funny story to tell my future kids. The teachers looked at the anarchist with unsettled Tom faces which he shrugged it off. He looked around to see some girls looking at Deku which the anarchist thought, holy shit, he needs to get laid. I'm going to help him. Deku was currently fighting two Nomas at once which scares All Might because he barely won against one Namu with shock absorption. The anarchist got up to say, okay, take a break, Deku. I got a few words with you about something. The two went somewhere private Deku asked. What is this about? The anarchist asked. Are you going out with anyone? Deku in shock. What? The anarchist chuckled. Calm down. You aren't going out with anyone. Deku calmed down. No. The anarchist asked. Why? Deku embarrassed. I don't know. The anarchist grabbed his shoulders. I'm going to make you a ladies man and you are not going to regret it. Deku looked at him. What? The anarchist said. You heard me. Now we just need to build your confidence. You know that brown hair girl you are always with. Deku muttered. Er. You're a rakasan. The anarchist smirked, you are going on a date with her and I'm going to help you. Deku looked at him, why are you helping me? The anarchist said, I'm tired of you being dense as a black hole, so you are doing this. And also you will learn how to bold in any situation. Deku was always insecure for a long time but the anarchist was right. He needed to be bolder for any situation. Deku nodded which the anarchist smiled. Let's get you a woman. In the hallways of UA, Deku asked, are you sure it will work? The anarchist said, Yes it works. I'm a man of my word. Trust me. Deku went up to Yuraka to say. Hey Yuraka. Yuraka smiled. Hey Deku, how are you doing? Deku said, tired from the training my villain version of myself gave me, but I feel much stronger. The anarchist in hiding. Good, conversion is key. Now do the move. Deku got her to a wall and he wall slammed to ask, would you go out with me? Yuraka blushed then she stuttered. Why why yes, th that woo l d b g r e I would love you to, w h at timey. Deku told her the time which the anarchist chuckled, basic move, but effective. Midnight came up behind the anarchist to asked, What are you doing, little Shota? The anarchist smiled, I'm getting Deku to get a woman. She looked over to quietly say, Yes, I won the bet, thank you. The anarchist smirked, I won in on your other bets, put me down on Shadox Momo, Kirishim X Bikago, and Ajarox Toru. Also, you want to help me with getting him dressed for his date. Midnight's eyes shined which she said, let me collect my winnings, put down your bets, and then I will head on over. What will you be putting on the line? The anarchist said, let me see. The anarchist pulled out a gold bar which he smiled. How about this for Shadok's Momo? 
He pulled out a little bag of diamonds to say, for Kirishimax Bakego. He looked for anything that wasn't a weapon or something he truly needed until he pulled out a few blunts but not God's lettuce which he said, for Ajarak's Toru. Midnight collected them and took a picture of Deku and Yuraka to show proof, which she headed over to the teacher's lounge to get her winnings and put up the anarchist's bet. Deku came to him saying, she said yes. The anarchist patted his back, I know, I saw, now we need to get you dressed for your date. Deku's dorm room. The anarchist looked in his room and was in disgust. Can I borrow your bathroom real quick? Deku smiled, sure. The anarchist went to his restroom to throw up in the toilet from the amount of all might in his room. He cleaned himself up to come out to say, Okay, let's look in your closet for some clothes. They looked in his closet which the anarchist was beyond disappointed by it so he said, Okay, we are going to my dimension to get you some proper clothes and shoes. Deku asked, What's wrong with my shoes? The anarchist said, Nothing is wrong with them. They are just for anything but fancy events and dates. The anarchist then warped both of them to his dimension to pick up some clothes for him to use. The anarchist's dimension. They got warped to the anarchist's dimension more specifically in his workshop for people working for him. The anarchist said, Okay guys, you didn't see him come here. You will get a pay raise after I deal with him. The grunts nodded and the two headed over to his office which the anarchist put Deku in a box to roll to his office. When they got to his office the anarchist got Deku out of the box to say, Okay let's look for clothes and shoes. Deku looked at his closet full of villain outfits, clothes, weapons, and other stuff. The anarchist said, Don't touch anything, it's for your own good. Deku asked, How rich are you? The anarchist said, rich enough to support 20 to 50 children in the future and do whatever I want. Deku in shock, what? The anarchist threw some clothes and shoes for Deku to have which they heard a knock which Deku got in the box. The anarchist closed the box and said, come in. It was Kai and Iri which he said, sorry for disturbing you Izuku, but I have something come up and I need you to watch Iri. The anarchist smiled, no problem, I just going to visit other dimensions which she should be safe to come with. Iri jumped in the air with her little plague mask he made for her, which everyone found it cute. Kai said, thanks, Iri be good. Iri nodded which Kai left and the anarchist picked her up to ask, you want to see a version of me who is a hero? Iri in confusion, but you are my hero. The anarchist smiled so pure. They got to the workshop to warp back to Deku's dimension which he was going to have a fun time dressing himself up properly. Deku's dimension. The anarchist got Deku out of the box and the first thing Iri asked, why is there another Uncle Izuku in the box? The anarchist smiled. I'm helping this version of me dress up properly and having fun helping him a little bit. Deku was scarred by see this Iri wearing a Yakuza plague mask like overhauls with a black dress and the whole conversion the anarchist and overhaul had back in his office. Midnight came in to help out which she saw Iri to ask. Why are you here Iri and why are you wearing that mask? Iri in confusion. What do you mean? Aunt Nimuri. The anarchist said, Kai is busy with something so I'm watching her while doing this. She is my goddaughter and I'm also a Yakuza member. Midnight looked at Uri to say, I can't resist at this cuteness. Deku was a little concerned with the anarchist and Midnight being together a lot, which the anarchist pulled out some clothes and shoes to say, okay put these on. Deku looked at the clothes then went to the restroom to get changed. He came out in a black suit with green dress shirt, red tie, black dress pants, and black oxfords which Midnight said, I like it, but the tie needs work. The anarchist sighed, I know dad left us man, but you can at least learn how to do it from someone else. Deku asked, how did you learn? The anarchist smiled, Toya Satsuno, how else? Deku remembered that Toya Satsuno was one of the eight expendables of Shai Hasekai which after he got his tie on properly. He asked, okay, what should I do? The anarchist laughed, be yourself, relax, and have a fun time. The anarchist put a condom in Deku's pocket to say, Always be prepared for anything. I mean anything. Deku nodded which when he left. The anarchist smirked, You want to follow them? Midnight chuckled, Yes, I do. Izuku picked up Iri to carry her around to show off this new dimension, which was going to be fun. They were following them until the anarchist saw Mirio. There Iri, Aizawa, All Might, and Nezu. They looked at other version of Iri's terror and the anarchist looked at Mirio in terror which the anarchist said, We are going to pretend we didn't see each other. Mirio asked, is that your Iri? The anarchist said, yep, I'm watching her because Kai is a little busy at the moment. Mirio got pissed by the mention of Kai which the anarchist said, we got to go, remember that we didn't see each other. The anarchist, Iri, and Midnight ran off to follow Deku and his date which they were going to help out from the sidelines. Deku and Yuraka came across Bakugo which he asked, what are you doing Deku? Deku said, I'm not dealing with your bullshit Kakin. I want to spend some time having fun without hearing your voice for tonight okay. Midnight was in shock that Deku stood up for himself, which the anarchist smiled, at a boy, put him in his place. Bakego and Yuraka were in shock which Deku said, 
Now will you excuse us? Deku and Uraraka left Bakugo which Bakugo saw the three following the two which he glared. You. You made Deku change. What did you do? The anarchist smirked. I gave him a pair. You got a problem with that. Bakugo said. Why are you changing Deku? He was fine the way he was. The anarchist sighed. You never understood but no need to argue with a monkey. Which the three left Bakugo to follow Deku. Bakugo looked at the anarchist with hatred. Then he changed Deku. Bakugo wanted to end him and make him pay for changing Deku to stand up for himself. Bakugo said, I'm going to end you, you bastard. Okay sadly the chapter is over. And if you enjoyed the video just leave a like. And subscribe with post notification. So when the next chapter is ready, you will be notified. Okay see you in the next video. Bye.